So today is now, I just want to make sure that our recordings are on. Just give me one second. Good to go. So today is the 9th of November, 2010. It's now on my watch, 2.44 a.m. Um, you're in a room right now that's... Uh, Video being video and audio recorded. This is a digital audio recorder, and the reason I have that there is um, it's more of a fail safe that if something was to happen to the video system and recording, that I have another, it may not be a video, but I have a re digital audio recording of what we're, we're going speak to speak about. Um, we're again, we're at five district. I want to go through a form with you. It may seem kind of, you know, why you're doing this, but um, this is a, it's, it's like you're. You're swearing to tell the truth about what you're going to talk to me about. And it's also going to explain to you the, um, the penalties for not telling the truth. I don't expect you uh, to help me, but for a homicide investigation, anyone who's very close to the investigation, we do this with. Okay, So this isn't suspecting that you're not going to tell the truth. This is more of a feature that you understand the importance of telling the complete truth. Okay. As much as I can remember. That's all I asked for. But th so this form, please don't take it personal. Okay. But it's something we go through with everyone. Okay. If you have any questions about the form, so I'm going to read this form to you. Then someone's going to come in here with either a Bible or a firm, whatever your choice is, that whatever you tell will be the truth. Okay. And then from that point, I'm going to go on and we're going to ask questions. Okay. So. First off, I want you to uh, identify identify yourself. Speak loudly. There are uh, there are mics in here. I just now with the, this is a new room for me. I don't know where they are, but I need to hear a nice clear voice. So if you can identify yourself for me. My name is Jennifer Pan. Can you spell your last name, Jennifer? P A N Pan. Pan. Okay. Do you understand that everything um, that is being said in this room is being videotaped, audio recorded, and digitally audio recorded? Yes. I would like, um, I ask you to introduce yourself, which you already have, and that you consent to this uh, tape uh, being made. Uh, my name is Randy Slade. I introduce myself to you at the hospital. My badge number is 531, and I'm a member of the York Regional Police Homicide Unit. Uh, monitoring this statement right, right here in the next room, okay, is uh, Trevor Byard. His badge number is 1446. As I indicated when this tape started, that it, today is Tuesday, the 9th day of November 2010, and the time when I started was 2.44 in the morning. We're presently at 5 District in the town of Markham in the regional municipality of York. Um, is, there anything, uh, is there anything I need to know in order to understand your statement? And that means, is, is there, do, you, do you suffer from any physical or mental condition, use of alcohol, drugs, or anything of any concerns that would influence your ability to give me a statement? No. Um, we are investigating a murder, okay? And you're aware of, the, of who it is. It's um, the murder of your mom. And uh, can you can you tell me what your mom's name is? My mother's name is Bic Ha Pan. Bic Ha Pan. As a part of our investigation into the offense, I would like to interview on videotape and under oath or solemn affirmation or solemn doc, uh, declaration. It is my obligation to advise you of certain information before we commence this statement. You may be a witness in the court concerning the events you are about to describe in your statement. If at any time you change your statement or claim not to remember the events, the content of this video statement you now give may be used as evidence in court. Do you understand? Yes, I do. I'm going to get you some Kleenex in a second, okay? okay. You, you have nothing to apologize to me for, Jennifer. I... I... Uh, I, I, it's going to be tough, but you know the importance of this statement, okay? But don't, you have nothing to apologize to me about. I'm here to help you, okay? Um, it is also my obligation to advise you that fabricating evidence, this stuff is the penalties for lying, as I explained to you earlier. Fabricating evidence with the intent to mislead is an offense under Section 137 of the Criminal Code. 
If you give a false statement under oath, you may be charged with fabricating evidence. If convicted of fabricating evidence, you may be sentenced up to 14 years in jail. It is also an offense under Section 139 of the Criminal Code to obstruct by willfully attempting to obstruct, pervert, or defeat the course of justice. You may be charged if you obstruct justice. Uh, obstruct justice. If convicted of obstructing justice, you could be sentenced up to 10 years in jail. It is also an offense under Section 140 of the Criminal Code to commit public mischief by causing a police officer to start or continue an investigation by making a false statement that accuses some other person of committing an offense. And you may be charged if you commit public mischief. If convicted of public mischief, you could be sentenced up to five years. If you are charged with one or more of these offenses, this statement may be used in court against you. Do you understand the criminal sanctions of what I have explained to you? Yes. Do you understand the criminal consequences of making a false statement? Yes. Do you understand that it is your choice whether or not to give a statement? Yes. Do you understand the importance of telling the truth? Yes, I do. With respect to this investigation? If you have spoken to any per police officer or person in authority in connection with the investigation, I want it clearly understood that I do not want it to influence you in making, under uh, uh, making a statement. Do you understand? Yes. Do you have any questions? So basically, um, just start anew right now. So what... What I've just explained to you is you're here voluntarily to help us, that you don't have to talk to us if you don't want to, but the importance of talking to us, and if you're talking to us, the importance of telling the truth. And if you don't tell the truth, there's criminal consequences for not telling the truth. That's all that, all that stuff had to deal with. Okay. okay? You can't point the finger at someone else. You can't tell us to go off in a different direction. You just got to tell us the truth. Well, I know. Exactly, exactly. And do you have any questions with respect to what I've just told you? It's just like sitting sometimes like parts come back that I didn't remember when I spoke No one to is, it. and that's the process. This is going to be a long process. This is an initial statement from you. We may, you know, as you remember other things, you may be asked, you may want to come in and tell us things, okay? No one is going to tell you how to give, us a, per give a perfect statement. You just do what the best you can. Given the, given what you're dealing with, okay. Any other questions? Are you prepared to give a statement under oath or solemn affirmation, affirmation or declaration? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get. There's a commissioner of oaths who's gonna come in and deal with this right now with you. Just it's just a filling out of this last portion, right here, and I'm gonna get you some Kleenex too while while she's talking to you. Okay. Spell your first and last name for me. J E N N I F E R. Mm -hmm. Pan P A N. Hello, my name is Andrew Lespiro. I'm a commissioner of oaths with York Regional Police. I'm here so you can give a truthful statement, either by solemn affirmation or swearing on the Bible. Which okay. do you prefer? Swearing on the Bible. Okay, just put your hand on the Bible. Do you, Jennifer Pan, swear that the evidence you shall give on this investigation shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do.
close that door for me? So we're through the forms. Um, that just that's the, the administrative process about this. Now I want you to sort of take yourself back to earlier on today, uh, yesterday, meaning uh, the eighth of November, and uh, tell me about your day. Okay, start at any point in time, where wherever you feel comfortable, and then, then we're going to move we're going to move forward. Okay. Um, yesterday, probably around 9 o'clock in the morning, 9, 9.30, um, my mother, <coughs> she woke me up and she told me that she was going to go to visit my grandfather, who was ill, and that she was going to go over and pick up my aunt to go. Um, once we stepped out of the house, there were um, a few police officers blocking, barricading the driveway. And so she called me down, and when I came down, the officers just said that there was like a gas leak in the area, and uh, they were just as precaution evacuating. And before we could walk over to a safer place, they said that um, the evacuation had been moved to somewhere else, that it was safe to go back home. <coughs> With that, my mom decided for me to stay home, uh, and because I have some piano history stuff that I'm working on, so I was. <clears throat> doing that on the computer, played a little piano. I forget what time my mom comes, came home, probably around like 3, 3.30. Um, my father came home later than usual. He said that he had forgot to lock a toolbox and he had to turn back, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, he just was home later than usual. Okay. Um, and once he came home, he um, phoned up my uncle and asked him to go to buy a USB pen, I think, just to go shopping with him because my, f my uncle doesn't drive. Uh, they left, so my mom had prepared dinner because she was heading to go dancing that night, the line dancing. She does it every Monday. And so her and I sat down for dinner first. And then um, well after my father came home, he did that. And then a friend of mine came over. We do TV night every every so often. So um, my dad, I guess, went up on the computer, as he always does, and I was downstairs with my friend watching movies, and my mom was out uh, dancing. Um, my friend left around 9, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then <coughs> my, I upstairs in my room, called it a night with the TV on, um, talking on the phone with a friend of mine. And then... Uh, Shortly after my mom came home, I believe that was around 9.30 or so, she was rummaging downstairs. I didn't think anything of it. And then suddenly I just heard my mom calling for my dad to come down. And that's when I lowered the volume on my TV. And I could hear the voices weren't any voices I was very familiar with. And so I was scared and I couldn't move, I just sat in my room for a while, and then I thought I heard them all let, like leave the top floor, and I peered out of my bedroom door, and a guy was there, and he came at me, and had string in his hands, and tied my arms back, and said, I have a gun behind your back, do what I say, if you do what I say, then no one will get hurt, where is the money, show me where your money is. I um, I have still a few, a bit of money put aside from when I was waitressing cash. So I showed him where it was, and he took it and put put it in his pocket, I think. And then that's where they they pushed me to my parents' room and asked me where the money was there, and I didn't really know. So they kind of like one was right beside me, blocking my way to the door while the other ones turned over the bed to find some more cash in my mom's bedside table. In which then they dragged me down the stairs and made me kneel at the bottom, telling me to 
face down on the floor while the other guy had a gun behind my head and asked my mom where her purse was. My mom kept trying to get up and they kept telling her to sit down and so I didn't want her to get hurt so I told her mom to sit down. They were trying to find her wallet but she, her English thing good so she kept saying first. They kept pushing her down onto the chair. Okay. Take your time. Take your time. All this is very important, so take your time. They kept all the lights off on the main floor. The only time there was light was when they opened the fridge door to see if they could find where my mom's purse was. I didn't... At that point, I saw three figures of men. One with a hoodie. Like, the one I could see the most clearly, he had a hoodie on. And I believe he had a bandana of some sort covering from, like, his lower, uh, under his eyes, down. And then, for some reason, I think w one of the, the gentlemen asked my father if he had money in his wallet and where his wallet was. So they took me, because I was next to the stairwell, they took me up the stairs to sh show them where my father's wallet was. But I am i didn't know. They had turned the room upside down. I didn't know where his pants were at that time. And then, after they had gotten that, they had taken me and they tied me to the top of the banister. Just with one string, I could still move. But I was afraid to because the one guy just had that gun. Just Next thing I know, oh, I think I heard my parents going down the stairs. And my mom was asking them for me to come with them. They wouldn't let me come with them. After he said, the last thing I heard them say was, You lied. You lied to us. You lied to us. And then I heard two pops. My mom screamed. I yelled out for her. And a couple more pops. Take your time. Take your time. And I think I heard my mom say or moan or something and then they did one more before they left and then one of the guys said, we have to go now, it's been too long. And then they ran out the door. And I think once they were out the door, I heard my dad go up the stairs, and at that point, I had my phone in my po in my on me behind me that I had hidden there that they didn't know about. So when I when I when they when I thought that they had heard them all leave, and my dad ran up the stairs, I whipped up the phone and I called 911. But I, I still hadn't heard anything from my mom, and all I could hear was my dad running on the street, just moaning and making sounds. And that's pretty much uh, what I've... So what together. happens, continue on from from now to the point that the police arrive? I was just on the phone with the secretary or the operator. I begged her not to leave me alone. And that my dad was outside. I, I was yelling to him, but he wouldn't come in. I don't know if he didn't hear me, he didn't come in. I think he went to the look rail. And I didn't get to see my dad at all until before I left the hospital just now. How did you get free? The cop came and he snipped the two the two strings off for me. I was I was asking them for so long and <clears throat> they said they couldn't untie me until they knew how to properly untie the string. Okay. So we've gone through we've gone through a, a very tough portion and now we're certainly going to go back clinically, you know, try and rem I want you to put yourself now as a, as a figure looking down 
at what you see, okay? Um, so you go back, you're up in your room at 9.30, correct? 9, 9.30. You're, you're on the phone. Who are you on the phone with? With a friend of mine, an old co-worker. An old co-worker. Are you on the phone with that person when you hear these voices that you don't recognize? Yes. And um, do you remain on the phone with this person, or when does that conversation end? It ended when I heard my mother asking my father to come down the stairs. And normally, they um, they they don't get a, they don't communicate very well sometimes. So what I did was I told my friend, "I'll call you back." And I hung up, stuck the phone in the back pocket, and started to go out the door. And that's when I noticed that there were men running around. Okay, so let's back up again. When you hear your mom come, do you hear your mom in the house? She was in the house. I had gone down the stairs. Did you hear, so before this, this is when, when did you hear your mom for the first time in the house? When she came home. And what time was that? 9.15. Is there a time period, so, and where is your father at that time? He had, he's just finishing on the computer, I think, and he was heading to bed. So did you physically see your mom? Yes. And at that time there was no one strange in the house? No, I went, she was on the downstairs sofa. She was watching TV when I last saw her. Okay. Where is the, so between that time that you see her and you leave her on the sofa, until you hear the noises, the strange, the, the, the voices as you describe them. How long is that? Maybe a half hour. A half an hour? Um, where is it y your mom was before here? She goes dancing every Monday at St. I'd like to say St. Paul, but I'm not 100% sure. And where is St. Paul's? Because uh, I don't know if she's moved locations from the last time she does lessons. Yeah. Um, the last one I remember, she said that there was one on Birchmount and Finch. Yeah, Birchmount and Finch on the southwest corner. A Birchmount and Finch? Yeah. I know the area, okay. She used to dance there at but I'm not 100% sure whether she moved to a different with somebody else. She what? does dance, she does goes dancing with a few f relatives as well. Okay. Was she, would she have been there with a few relatives tonight? Is that the normal thing? On the one night I forgot to ask. Normally, um, the normal is that she goes with one or two friends, one from across the street and one relative just on the other side of uh, the 407. What are their names? Um, I call, I only know their names by what I call them. Okay. Um, I call one but Mui, and then um, the other one is my cousin, and her name is Vong. And the one who lives on your street, what number, the neighbor who lives on that she usually goes with? Uh, across the street about two houses down. I don't know the exact number, unfortunately. Okay, we'll find that out. Um, and that, so she's been going there for how many, how long? She's been dancing for a long while. A long time? A long, maybe more than a year. Okay. Um, what does your mom do? F what, what does she do for a living? She used to work for Magna. Okay. But what do the job cut back? Um, due to the job cutback, she was unemployed but could not find employment. Okay. And uh, so she's been at home looking for a job, and recently I think her pension's done. How long is how long has she been out of work with Manga? I'd say at least a year and a half. Okay. And um, what about your father? What does he do for a living? He also works for the car company, uh, Cole. They just changed their names. Um, something Colben, Cobell, and Unstell. What does he do? I. He does. He wears many hats. 
from like assembly line worker, but I think his title is tool and die operator. Okay. So, 9.15, you see your mom down on the downstairs couch, and you see your dad. He's at the uh, computer. And where is the computer located? Upstairs, right, bes his, right beside his room. Right it's in a separate room beside his room. Okay. And you are going to bed. You're going up to your room to, to watch TV and, and mm -hmm. tune, turn down for the night. Yep. Um, and then approximately, again, how long later that you hear these voices? My mom had to be home for maybe 20 minutes. don't really have that window. I think around like maybe 9.40. 9.40? Okay. Estimates is fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm not expecting to hold you down to times because we can probably get that from who you were speaking to, right? Because how long after you end the conversation with the person does this, do you hear the voices? They're already in the house. So you end the conversation because you hear the voices. You'll call the person back. I, yeah, because I heard my dad and then I heard some strange voices is when I was like, I'll call you back. And who was it that you were speaking to? A co-worker of mine. And what's what's that name? What's Ed. Ed. Edward. Edward, you know Edward's last name? Pacific Edward. Okay. So what is it that you hear that causes your father to go downstairs? My mother calling for him. And what is he is she speaking in English or is she speaking in another language? She was speaking in English, which is which is why it also caught my attention. What language does she normally speak? Uh, at home we speak a mix of like Vietnamese is most fluent, but we do throw some Chinese words here and there. Okay. Or but, English words here and but there. But the vast majority of it is ve Vietnamese? Vietnamese. What is the first, when you hear these, this, can you hear them talking downstairs, the unknown voices? It's all a mumble. It's a mumble? Because I had the TV on, it was just all a mumble. When's the first time that you actually can hear one of them talking? When... He was upstairs, and I thought he had left the upstairs, because I was frozen in my room for a while, yep. trying to listen in, but I couldn't hear over my TV, and I didn't want to startle, startle them by turning it off or like diminishing the volume, so I was kind of pressed up against my door for a while trying to hear it, and I thought that all the people upstairs had gone down, so I opened up my door quietly and tried to peer out, and he saw me. And that's when he came. Can you, did you have lights on in your room at that time? My lights were off. I only had the reflection off my TV, which is lower to the door. What do you see of this guy? And the I'm calling him a guy because you said you th you thought they were I all males. I think they were all three males. Okay, so tell me about this guy. Uh, he was medium build. Okay. I didn't, I don't remember any of his clothing, unfortunately. The only thing I can remember was him was he had dreadlocks. He had dreadlocks. So are you, uh, it, can you describe his race to me? He was black. Did it was his head covered? Was his face covered? Do you remember anything about that? Just that his dreadlocks were like kind of like flopping all over the place. I couldn't really d see his face, and they kept the lights dark as much as as much as possible. How long? How long were the dreadlocks? Was it? Were they? You know, like when you say they're dreadlocks and they were flopping all over his face. It's hard. To, I, I, don't want to remember a hundred percent. I think some of them were like around his face were a little shorter, mm -hmm. and then in the back there were there were longer ones. Okay. Now his complexion. Um, there's various degrees of 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 dark, dark to medium dark to to actually light. Uh, I'd say he was, He, I wouldn't say he was the darkest person I've seen, but he was on the darker side. Any facial hair? I'd like to say maybe... Say only what you can think. Sure. Just... Just say what you th what you think. I don't want you to say what you're. But you I don't know. want to say something wrong. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you, if you don't know, then I it's okay know. to say. It's okay I'm to not say. Sure. That. Okay. So, can you give an age approximation for this guy? When, I, when the other officer asked me, I was leaning along the ages of twenty-eight to thirty-three. 
So an, uh, an, an, someone who's established in life. I would assume so. Like not established meaning guess. world, meaning that he's been around, the, been around. So uh, a 20-year-old talks completely different than a 30-year-old, as you know. He seemed to be the one in charge. He seemed to be running the show? He's the one that had me. Like, he pretty much did not let me go. He was in charge of me. And all the money I showed him, he pocketed. Okay. Did he have a gun? Yes. Did you see the gun? I only saw the top part of the gun. What did it look like? Um, kind of, it was black. Yeah. And it kind of, not triangular, but it was slightly wider at the end than it was closer. Do you know the difference between what a pistol and a revolver is? Yes. Okay. Do you know if it was a pistol or a revol revolver? That particular one that he was holding, I believe, should have been a pistol. A pistol. Okay. Because the difference is the, the round part, right? So you tell me what's a pistol and what's a revolver. Which one has yeah. the round part? I would think that the revolver has the, the ones that the bullets go around. Okay. And it didn't look like that. It looked like more like a handgun. So it looked more like a pistol. Yes. What you're saying, yeah. not a revolver. No. The okay. other gentleman, though. We'll go, we'll go to the other gentleman. We'll go this in stages so that we're not doing... We'll, we'll call this guy number one okay. because you're saying that he seemed to be running the show. Is, is he, running, he was in control. From my perspective, yes. He was in control of you. Yes. Is this the gentleman... Is this the guy who tied you up? Yes. Okay. I want you to... My, he, t he was the one that tied my wrist together. He wasn't the one that tied me to the banister. Okay. So where did he get the shoelaces? or whatever the laces were, or whatever it was that tied you up? I'm not sure. It might have been from my mother's room, or the study room, or... Because my mom has a sewing table next to her bed. bed. So when you open the door, where is this guy? He was just stepping out of my brother's... Well, what formula would be my brother's room. So he's already on the upstairs. Yeah. Do you know where the other guys involved in this are? I know one stayed with my parents downstairs. Okay. Um, the other one, I'm not, at that point in time, I was more focused on him, like he was seeing me and he was coming after me. So you're so saying there's three for sure? Yes. That's all, you saw a total of three at one time, you saw three people yes. together? Yes, when I went downstairs, I okay. saw three shadows. Okay, so um, this number one guy, and we're calling him number one because he was he was the one who tied you up, and he's the first one that you actually are confronted by. Um, and he comes out of your brother's room, mm -hmm. or what was formerly your brother's room, and he comes into you comes into your room, mm -hmm. and what happens in there? He tells me to sit down, and, and, he's, he, and, he, he, and he shows me his gun. So it's not pointing at you, but you see not it. Yet. And where is it? It's like in a holster almost. Okay. And then he showed it to me. And he's like, don't move. And then someone else brought him the shoelace. Okay, can you describe the other person who brings the shoelace? I would, he was the second person and the only other person that I encountered with. Okay. Um, I only saw the third guy, but he didn't encounter with me at all. Okay. But uh, he had a hood, he had a hoodie and uh, like a bandana over his face. Yeah. He's, his complexion, and it was really dark, but I could tell that he was darker than the first guy. So he's a male black as well. But thinner build. But thinner build. So we got a medium build, thin build. And what about the height? Where you know, like where are we in height scales? How tall are you? Five seven. So where are they in comparison to you? I'd say one was pretty much right around my height level. And which guy is that? The uh, the medium build. The first guy. First guy you encounter who mm -hmm. shows you the gun. Yeah. And tie, eventually ties your wrist together. He's he's about your height. So he's somewhere in the area of... Five. Six, six to five, to eight? Seven. Five, six to seven. Seven, I'd say. Okay. And the other guy, I'd say around five, eight. Maybe smidget higher, lower than eight. So he's taller than you, but not much. Not much. Okay. Now, the first guy, who spoke to you, what kind of, did he have any accent? None Is it that clear? I could make out. 
Was it clear English? English. Unbroken. Unbroken. No accent. From the terms he used, I didn't get to pick up an accent. No. He used so short phrases. He sounded can he sounded Canadian. I would say yes. He was born here. He was born here. Okay. So number two guy you see with the bandana, and he's got a darker complexion, and he's yeah. he's thinner. Yes. And he's about five eight. With a hoodie. With a hoodie. Is it black hoodie or what color is it? It, again, it was all really dark. Yeah. So I'm assuming he was wearing black. What about the bandana? Can you see a color on the bandana? It was very dark as well. Okay. Anything distinguishing about his eyes? I didn't look straight into his eyes. No. Oh. Any other portions of clothing that you recognize? No, unfortunately. Okay. How about this guy's um, language? What did? How was he? Did he speak he to you? He didn't speak at all. Nothing. He just nodded. He nodded. Who seemed to be giving the directions? Number one. He, the guy, first guy you encountered, seemed to be telling everyone what to do. From what you t you can tell. Okay. So now they're both upstairs with you. Where are your parents? They're in the living room. They're in the living room. And now what happens? They take me downstairs. Are they? Have they tied you now? They, yeah. The number one has tied me. Okay. And now they're taking me down the stairs. Describe first how he's tied you. He told he grabbed my arm and he pulled it to the back and said, Give me your other arm as well. Okay. And then I was trying to make a wide X so that I could later loosen if I needed it to, but he had pulled really, really tight. And okay. I guess he felt my flinch and that's when he quickly tied the second knot, I think. I don't exactly know. All I know is like I flinched and then it got tighter. So you were tied. You were bound behind you. Behind me, yes. Okay. Um, and then you're taken downstairs. Tell me what happens down there. Um, they sit me right at the bottom of the stairs, like um, slightly out, not exactly directly at the bottom of the stairwell, but just slightly over a little. And um, the third guy, who I didn't encounter, but he was there. He was like, "Where's your money? Cooperate with us." And, you, and then my mom's like, you know, yelling and don't hurt us. And, you know, my money's in my wallet. Just please leave my paperwork. This person, this third guy who you're now describing, do you see him ever? Only as a shadow? Because he was, there's a, a wall, a okay. partial wall. And he was like right in that vision over my father, but partially in that vision. It, it, describe his voice to you, to me. It had a slight, just a very, very slight accent. Do you recognize the accent? I can't definitively say which accent it was. So let's it was more like a Guyanese or Jamaican accent. Okay. So it's an island accent. It's not what you'd call, it's not an Asian accent. No. It's not like a, a, a Western European German or, or anything like this. This is something you recognize as being... South Caribbean. Asian or Caribbean? Caribbean, yeah. Caribbean. Okay. Um, when the guy upstairs, number one guy, who, who you're, we described as our number one guy with the dreadlocks, or with the, yeah, the dreadlocks, right? When he shows you the gun, do you see anything on his hands? Gloves. He's wearing gloves? What number about, one was wearing gloves. What about anyone else? The other guy, the second guy? I don't remember. I'm... He must have been, but I can't 100% say. All I saw was that number one had gloves in his hands. Do you recognize or can you describe the type of gloves he had in his hands? Leather gloves. Leather gloves? Okay, or so they're like, not they're not like surgical gloves? They're not surgical gloves. They weren't like or skating gloves or like wool gloves. I'm pretty sure they were leather gloves. Leather gloves. Okay. So now you're downstairs, you're sitting in the stairs? They, they told me to sit at the bottom of the stairs. Are like you on, on the floor, floor or on the, on, the floor. on the floor? Your parents are in the living room? Yes. How many people are with you and how many people are with your parents? One with me, the guy in the corner with my parents, and the third guy kind of... Going me, between? Going between, the, where's the purse, sit down, where's the purse, sit down. He's the guy who you describe as the thinner build, medium, and he was upstairs with you. Okay, um, 
where do you go? What happens from this point? Now you're down on the stairs, and there's a guy going between. There's two, obviously, your parents in the living room. You're on the They're floor. I'm looking for my mother's wallet. But she can't rem She's... Take a deep breath. Best way to do this, the best way for you to to on this on these parts in here, is to pull yourself out and be like you're a, a, you're an observer in this. Okay, it's not going to help you through or heal you through, but it's going to help you try and remember components and it neutralizes what your mom said. You just are now hearing. You're echoing what your mom is saying to these people. Okay. After a bit, she had realized that she didn't carry a purse. She had just gone home from dancing, so her wallet would be in the bag, and that's where the money would be. And while that guy's searching for her and telling her to sit back down, the, the one behind the wall was asking my father if he had money in his wallet. And my dad said yes. And they asked how much, I, I think I heard my dad say $60. And they, then the one that was with me was signaled, and he said, come here, go show us where it is. He had a lower, lower tone. Who's that? Who? Number one. Number one? A lower voice? Yeah. Okay, and this is, um, and you say the reason 28 to 30-ish, 30 33 is, is, um, is why. Why do you hear that as being the age of this person that you're dealing with, that he's... It's just the way he... Like his muscular tone, I don't know how exactly to say this, but he wasn't, he wasn't like built, like muscular, like a young man. What about the but second guy you hear when you? The, what do you? How would? How would? How old do you think he would be in? I, I didn't hear his voice. I didn't get to see much of his face. Okay, so you don't know. But if I had to guess, I'd say younger than that number one. But okay, so. They take you, you're, you're now there, and they're wanting they're, to go to this wallet. Yes, so they're now telling me, like, dragging me by my, my sweater, get up, get up, show us where it is. Okay. And one kept me at the door while one was inside, looking. When you looked inside that bedroom, had it been, you said it was tossed, had it already been tossed? So... They were in, so the, the room had been tossed prior to you opening the door to see? See, yes. Okay. Because um, that's when I figured out what was happening, and I kind of froze. So I heard them moving stuff around. And how long I, do you think that they were in, that you heard between the time? I guess it's tough in the, in the freeze time, but how long do you, do you hear it and then moving around before you're confronted by one of them? Less than five. Less than five minutes? Okay. I then it just all time time is t time's all over the place. I understand that. It's your estimation. It's about five minutes, maybe. Um, okay, so you're now upstairs, and he's in. Who's inside the room looking for this wallet? In in your dad's. In, your I'm guessing number two because by the time I was found, number two wasn't on the first floor. He had gone back down. Oh, no, no, no. I mean when you're back up, oh, sorry. Back. When you're now back upstairs and they're looking for your dad's wallet. Mm -hmm. Who's with you and who's turning the room? Number with? one has me. Okay. And number two is the one looking and flipping. And where is it here? Is it over there? And number one keeps saying, time, we're running out of time. Faster, it's taking too long. Okay. How long is he in that room for? Maybe just a few minutes, a few moments. Okay. Not that long. Do they find what they're looking for? I don't remember. Okay. What happens next? He decides to tie me down to the banister. Okay. That he didn't want to take me downstairs anymore. So you're now tied to the banister? Yep, he calls for Cuzzy. So he's like, get Cuzzy to give me that string I just gave him. And who is he talking to? Number two. So he says to number two, tell Cuzzy to get me that string. Do you hear any other names during this whole time? Cuzzy. Just Cuzzy. Cuzzy. Okay. So now what happens? 
They tied my arm to the banister. Did number two go downstairs? Yes. He followed the directions? Yes. And he comes back upstairs with the string? Yes. And you get tied to the banister? Yes. Okay. Continue. And the next thing I can hear are them telling my parents to move to the basement. Okay. And I'm asking them, why, where are you going? And my mom's yelling to me, I want my daughter. Why can't my daughter come too? I want my daughter. Who goes down to the basement? Do you Can you see that from where you're sitting? My back is towards the wall. Do you hear anyone else in the main level? Where Where your parents were? Like, you can hear. If people are trucking down the stairs, you hear your parents going down the stairs. Do you hear, like, five sets of footsteps going down there, or can't you hear that? It was just such a distress. I, I don't exactly know how many people went down. Okay. Did you ever see a gun on anyone else? On... Because number two and number three as we'll call them. Number three is the unknown guy unknown who you guy. just hear, who we, who we hear is Cuzzy, mm -hmm. and you hear him with a slight island uh, yes. Caribbean accent. Okay. Yes. Um, one of those two, like, they they dress very similar, like, very thin build. You saw number three? You can so describe? Like just briefly, like, through the, the reflection from the lamppost okay. on the street. Yeah. Through my, uh, through the, um, the sheer... Curtains? Curtains, yeah. I just saw briefly he was quite thin-billed. Another thin-billed guy? Yeah. Similar to number two? Yes. And and what about the gun? Did you see another gun? I saw the tip of his gun because he had pointed it out at my father. And okay. that one was was a revolver. Like, it had the the rotating... You saw the cylinder? Yeah. The rotating cylinder portion of the gun? Yeah. You saw that? Yeah. Okay. And what color was the gun? I was quite a bit away. Okay. And how did you see the sil how did you see this? Did you see it as a silhouette or did you actually physically see the gun? I was on the floor kneeling when he was asking my father for his wallet. Yes. He had pointed it out and I w like I was told to keep my head down, but I kinda looked up looked up like peripheral here and then I saw that. So what portion of the gun are you seeing? If you're seeing, are you seeing him holding the with the handle and the revolver? Because the cylinder portion sticks right. Yeah, like right close by here. Can you see him wearing gloves, or can you see him? Honestly, the lights were all out on that side of the house. Okay, but in your estimation, it's a revolver because of what you. I I saw like I saw like what it looked like. The okay, you see nothing else about his clothing or anything else. Unfortunately, that I wish I could have. Been. Oh. That's all. We just have to make sure that uh, that we understand. So you're now you when um, when you're tied to the banister, right? And your parents are now going down to the basement. Do you hear or see anyone else upstairs while that's happening? Or no down, one came or back upstairs for me. No one came back upstairs for you. Okay. Can all you I'm can you hear the voices down? Other than your parents, can you hear their voices down there? I all I could hear was this is taking too long. Who's to saying life. that? Whose voice is that? You hear all three voices. You can distinguish them. Who's do you hear saying this is taking too long? I'm because it was said to you upstairs, right? Who said that to you upstairs? Who was saying that upstairs this is taking one. number one? Is that the same voice that you hear saying it downstairs? Yes. The only only two of them voiced, number three and number one, voiced up. Voices voiced up. Yeah. Who do you hear yelling, you lie to us, or to number that extent? Number three. Number three. To my, I'm assuming it's to my father, because he was the one asking for the wallet. Now, your mum's, your mum with her wallet, would your mum, do you know if your mum had gone to the bank after, after her dance class, or after... She had finished? We, she just uh, went to the bank a few days ago. Okay. Is there What type of car does your mom drive? And first off, did your mom drive tonight? What type of car does your mom drive? A Lexus. A Lexus. Yes, 300. And she drove tonight? Yes. Okay. So now you hear this commotion downstairs. You said you heard two pops. And you heard who scream? Your mom. 
And what was she screaming? Do you remember? I make it out. It yeah. was kind of like a cry, cry yell. So it was just. Okay. It, are are they still talking? Do you hear them talking? I was focused on my mom. No, I understand. I'm only going to ask questions that I can try and tweak your memory for, okay? So you hear the two pop noise. You hear your mom screaming or crying or screaming or yelling. And then you hear some more. Do you know how many more you heard? There was a set. I don't. I don't want to say this wrong. Say it what you think and what you what you believe. So you're not I, whatever you say isn't going to be wrong. Something for sure is I don't know if it was one, and then what I'm going to tell you, and then one. Yeah. Or if it was two, and then what they said I'm going to tell you, and then another one. Basically, they had made the first round or pop pop, and they has. They had said, okay, that's enough. Let's go. Who said that? Whose voice is that? Number one. Okay. And then I heard one more after that. And they were like, that's enough. Let's go. Okay. And again, that's number one. Yes. Do you hear Three's voice at all? Not at that point. After he had pretty much said, you... After he said that you lied to us, you lied to us, you just had to cooperate. And then they shot him, and that's the last time I heard of three. Okay. So, how many shots, not putting it in sequence, how many shots do you think you hear in total? Five. Five? Then what happens? And then talk about just them all first. You're scrambling. Okay. You're scrambling. Can you see the front door from where you are? No. Okay. Did you ever hear how they got into the house? Doorbell ring. No. Kick door. Nothing like that. I don't remember how they got in. I don't even know how they got in. Okay. Um. You. Uh, you hear scrambling noises. Do what you are you talking about right now? Right at this point in time. So we're back to the time they're leaving. Okay? Or they're, you hear the scrambling noise, and I'm only assuming they leave because they're not there when we get there. Um, do you know which way they go out? You can't I'm, hear that. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was the front door, yeah. but I'm not 100%. I didn't get to see anything. Like... My arms were behind my back, and I was against the banister. Yep. And the banister is twisted, so I can't see the front door. Now you hear your dad. Yep. Right? And what's going on? So what do you hear next? After you hear the scrambling, they're gone, because you're hearing no more. I gather that's how you assume they're gone, is because you don't hear it. Then you hear your dad. I, I reach for my phone at okay. that point. Okay. And you call 911? Okay. And then you, what happens after you're on... Uh, I just I I heard my dad go out, and I don't know if they damaged his throat or. How did you hear your dad? So what? I, this is the kind of importance because if you he did he go out the front door? How did you How did you know he went out the front door? Because I heard him open the door. Did you hear that door open when these guys were scrambling to leave? There was just so much thudding. I'm is your house got an alarm system? Do you know the alarm system when the front door goes off and there's that chirping? We, don't, we don't have that chirping. No? No. Is your house alarmed at night when you guys go to bed? Before the last person goes up to bed, they will alarm it. But prior to that, it doesn't get alarmed? Okay. So, you hear your, you, from your, when your father exits, you hear the door open. Because you hear your dog, and then you And then I can hear, like, the outside noises. Okay. Like the wind coming in and I just hear my dad, I think he's... You think that he's sustained some kind of injury because he's not, you can't understand what he's saying. Okay. What about, do you, do you can you hear your mom? Okay. 
Where does your dad go? Do you know where? You never see your dad again until when we're at the hospital. I think that's what you said, right? I saw him when he was on the gurney, but the officers walked me around, so I really didn't. Okay, so now you're upstairs and you're on the phone with the 911 operator. Okay. Do you remain on the phone until the police arrived? And the officer is the one who cuts, gets you free? He, he first had to secure the place. Yes. It took me a while to get somebody upstairs. Okay. And... I just kept screaming. Okay. And, um... I guess they went into my bedroom and I have a pair of scissors that I cut my hair with. Yes. And they said that they cut it for me, but... It was still a while longer until after they cut the string so that I could be free. Do you understand that they... Uh, no. Of the importance to clear the, the, what they were doing? It wasn't to no. leave you in any kind of trauma or anything no. like that? I, I understand. It's just... Did... From it's a very tough question considering all the things that you've gone through tonight, Jennifer. Is any of the tying up, any of the binding, any of the things were you sexually assaulted in any way? It wasn't that. This was strictly they were after money. It, from what I saw, they were after money. They wanted it now. How much money did you turn over to them? From my personal, I had about two. 2500 2500 and where was Roughly. that and where was that in my nightstand underneath the TV okay and that was from work that you had done yeah what do you do for a living now what are you doing right now I heard you were saying about piano are you in school I I recently lost all my students in piano I had a few yes. for a while but uh, they've gone on to university that's why as of September I didn't have any more students so you were a piano instructor? Yes, out of my home. Okay. Just for family, friends, here and there. Um, also, my family needed me home for a while. And I was doing some uh, piano classes with a very good teacher of mine. Okay. And I'm going back to school in January. To? To study biotechnology engineering. Okay. Um, your parents... Are they known to keep large quantities of cash in their house? Do they have a large quantity of cash in their in their bank? I wouldn't say that it was large enough to raise flags. It's enough to pay bills. Okay. My mom's very diligent on making sure just just enough. Just enough. So she wouldn't carry around a lot of cash is what you're saying the only we we did just come back from vacation so we did have uh, not a large sum but a sum that we could we didn't spend over the sea over in the states and when when did you go away on vacation it was the weekend my cousin got married on 10 10 10 okay and where did that you go we went over to uh, buffalo that's where you the wedding was in buffalo well, just within Buffalo. Yeah. Within the area of Buffalo. And when you say that, that you came back with a quantity of cash, how much money are we talking about? At least 1100 in Did U.S. funds. That My mom was going to go to the bank and put it in immediately, but um, family circumstances that we've been dealing with when we got back. So what are those family circumstances that you were dealing with when you came back? Well, my mom's sister was in town for the wedding. And then uh, my mom, the weekend after that wedding, we took her to Montreal for like one last visit before she went home to the UK to her son. Okay. And then, honestly, I think probably like a day or two after that, um, my grandfather fell really ill and he went to the hospital. And my mom and I were the two main people because my uncle doesn't drive. So we were the ones driving in and out all the time. So is this your mom's father? Okay. Um, so that $1,100, did it get taken tonight? I believe so. And where would, that, where would that have been? In my mom's bedside table. And you said you saw them. Did they go into that bedside table? Um, and then was that the second time that you, when they were upstairs and they were looking for your father's wallet? While they're looking for my father's wallet, they flipped the flip the bed off and they're like oh you didn't you missed that drawer 
like number one told number two you missed the drawer. So he number one was the one that leaned over and pulled it open. Okay, you guys are inside the bedroom. I was just at the doorway of the bedroom. Okay, so the, and where in relation to this bedroom and where is this this very tight, very tight space. Okay, so he he could stay with you and still reach around and grab this and open this drawer, and that's where they well, found. Well, he kind of pulled me with one hand closer. Yeah. As he leaned over, but it was close enough that you could maneuver. Okay, and um, so they grabbed that that American money. Yes. You see it go. I saw him fold it and put it in his pocket. Okay, and did that seem to agitate them? Did you see any change in behavior after after that? They're like, there has to be more. Who's saying that? Number one. They're saying there has to be more. Do they look any anywhere else? Are they looking anywhere else? Not besides my mother's wallet still and my dad's wallet. I don't even know if they got it. But uh, those two things that they wanted to see. Whatever happened down in the basement, I think I tried to hear as much as I could, but it was too many people, and we have really creaky floors, so it's... When you're, when they're in that room, in, inside the bedroom, and now, um, is it lit any better? No. So it's still all in darkness? So you still can't see if number two has got gloves on or not? No, they, they had, like, something blind me, like they, number one... Once when we first got in the room, the light was on, and he's like, "Hold on!" And he grabbed—I don't remember what he grabbed—jacket or sleeve or something—and he kind of like shell shielded me with it. And that's when he took my glasses and he like tossed them. So he took your glasses off. Okay. How did you get your glasses back? I asked the officer. Okay. And how bad are your eyes with your glasses off? Degree-wise, I'm about. High four, I think 475 and 525. Okay, so you have, uh, with your glasses off, it's difficult for you to see things, right? I can see shapes, but no definition. But prior to all of this, you had your glasses on. Yes. So when you describe the gun and you describe the dreadlocks and you describe number two, what about when you saw the revolver? Did you have your glasses on at that point in time? Yes. So all of these observations are made with your glasses. It's not until you're tied upstairs, you're, you know, they're, they're... Right before they tied me to the banister. Like when we went up the stairs the second time. Okay, and who ties you to the banister? Uh, I'm not sure if number two helped number one, but it was behind me. I'm not sure who did the tying. But number two goes downstairs to get the string yes. to tie, tie you up. And brings it up. And brings it up from this cuz and you're sure it's cuz like cousin cuz I'm it, assuming so, no I'm not saying that that's what it is but it's on that line of cuz yes go tell cuz okay and again that's number one who's saying this Have, is there any reason to suspect or anything that's happened in the recent weeks leading up that would have you guys be a target of some type of incident like this? We live a straightforward, kind of almost routine life. Where is your brother right now? He's in, well, he's right now, he's mm. here. But does he live with you guys? He, in the summertime, he goes back in September, normally end of August, goes back to school. Okay. He moves out there. What school is he at? McMaster's. And? Um, what year is he in? Third year, I believe. Third year of what type of program? Engineering. Engineering. Um, so, there's nothing... There's no... It's because it, it's important, you know. Like, it, there are places where there's illegal ga gambling going on, where people think there's large quantities of money. What, in your opinion, would cause people to target your house to think that there was a large quantity of money? I'm not sure. Now, you say your mom drives a Lexus. It could be because of the aesthetics, yes. What about your dad? He drives a Mercedes, and he loves that baby. Is that right? So your mom drives a Lexus, your dad drives a Mercedes. Um, the area you live in, you know, what's the square footage of your house? Do you have any idea? 2,100. 2,100. 
Um, and the only thing that happened tonight, that happens every Monday night, is your mom goes to dance. And you think it's at St. Paul's? And that would have been in the Birch Mountain Finch area? Yes. Southwest corner. Yes. She goes there at what time? She leaves the house at 7, picks up her friend on, like, right off of Kennedy. Yes. And I believe she starts at 7.30 to about 9. And then she'll, she's usually, usually home around 9.30. Usually home around 9.30. And so nothing was any different tonight other than the fact that she may have been home a little bit earlier than that. Is that right? I think you said 9.15. No, my father after work. That was the only difference. Your father being late uh, because coming, it, home coming home after work. And what time did he arrive home? Sorry, we still haven't updated all our clocks yeah. on the daylight savings, but I think around 4.30 or so. Normally he'll be home by 10 to 4. Okay, so 4.30, he's, and does he leave? Does he go out for the rest of the night, or is he in? Well, he came home, yeah. and then... Oh, he, he went with his... My uncle. Yeah, yes. he went with my uncle. I don't know where they went. Um, all I know is that he came back with a heat vent. I don't know. He bought something for the heat. Okay. He said his, he doesn't like how the draft comes up. He likes it to be focused. Oh, on so it's like a heat deflector. Yeah. Okay. For the, the for the, the for the floor, the, uh, floor heat. seating, the heating elements on the floor. Okay. Yeah. The, the registers, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, and what time does he get back? I had finished eating. Uh, he probably got back around six, six fifteen. Six or six fifteen. Does he go out again? No. Is he on the computer for the for? Uh, for what is, what After does he dinner, do? he ate dinner first. What does he do on the computer? He reads uh, Vietnamese news okay. and Vietnamese uh, soaps, I guess. And your mother, you believe, comes home at 9.30, like normal? Around that time, more or less, there's nothing unusual about her time of coming home. And it's 10 to 15 minutes later that you hear the noises? You hear the different voices? I'd say. Okay. Maybe a little later. It could be a closer to. It could have been forty-five. Like Is there any way of finding out for sure where your mum, where you, where this place was that they did dancing tonight? Um, I believe my cousin might have gone with her. Okay. Might be very important for us to find out exactly where she was, where this was tonight. Okay. Okay. Um. You just sit tight for a minute, okay, and think think about anything else that you can that might help us in this. You, we've gone through a lot of the details, and um, um, I just want to talk. I just want to talk to the, the the officer who's monitoring it, and I also want to talk to the lead investigator just to see if there's anything else I need to ask you about. You've explained the scissors which were found upstairs in the area. They were used that you would cut your hair, but an officer came and brought them to you to cut you free. Okay, is that correct? Did you ever go down into the basement? No. Well, and where did you go I once? I went to the basement earlier in the night when I was with my friend watching movies. No, no, no. I mean... Uh, during uh, that? During the time. And who was over watching movies with you? What's her name? Oh, his name. Adrian. His, Adrian. And Adrian's last name? Tinkovitz. Tinkovitz. Uh, Tinkovitz. And where does Adrian live? He lives on Birch Mount. No. Sorry, Brimley. Brimley and Finch. Brimley and Finch. Okay. And how long have you known Adrian for? Uh, more than 10, 15 years. So this like is a school. kind of a regular occurrence for you guys? Yeah. We meet up once a week, if not once a month, depending on how busy our lives are. Yeah. And we sit and we watch our usual shows. Okay. So that, that was uh, that's what happened tonight. Mm -hmm. And what time did Adrian leave at? Nine. At nine? Ten to nine, nine o'clock. Okay. And Edward is who you were on the phone with? Yes. Okay, until you got off the phone because of the noises. Did you tell Edward what was going on? No, I just... I basically just told him, i got to go, I'll call you later. Okay. Do you know what show you were watching when this was going on? What you had on the TV? <laughs> Sorry, multitasking. I was watching Gossip Girl, and then I was watching uh, Kate Plus 8. Kate Plus 8. It's just the time, what we're doing is the time to stamp things, right? Not only the phone and, and whatever else. Now, as part of um, the investigation, we have your cell phone right now. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to ask you if you would consent to um, to your phone records to help okay. us on the investigation, and that will again that's part of the 
time stamping of things, you know, of who you were on the phone with, who you were talking to, and when this happened. I just don't, like, I talk to people on the phone, but I don't really want them to know what's happening with my... The unfortunate, the unfortunate thing is that probably Edward and Adrian are people who were probably going to be interviewed because they were in the house and in the, and they were on the phone with you. So as much, and I'm telling you that you know, the media is going to be um, around this case. And, and um, that's, that, you know, like we have no control over what they say and what they do. My only advice to you is don't read the papers and turn the TVs off, right? Um, they may not. They may come and go and very quietly disappear because something else pops onto their radar. But, you know, home invasion type robbery where someone is murdered can become very big news and people wear this stuff, you know, they, they hang on it. So, for the next little next five to seven days, I would say that tell your friends and you, your well your family, it's it's of no value for you to be listening to the news or reading about this stuff, okay? Because it's just going to upset you even more than what you, than what you feel right now. So just bear with me for a minute, okay? I'm going to go and it may be a little bit longer than a minute. I'm just going to go and talk to the officer who's monitoring it to see if there's any clarifica clarification questions and, and also the guy who's investigating it if there's something else when I brief him if there's something else I should be asking you about okay and we're close to being we're very close to being done okay.
Okay, sorry. Have a seat. We got uh, just a couple more questions. We're going to give your phone back to you. Okay? And then, uh, your brother is just being interviewed next door. Oh, yeah, they've interviewed too. Yeah, well, just because uh, you never know, right? Any other fringe stuff that comes up, it's uh, just more of an administration. But obviously, the relevant people to be interviewed, in my opinion, right now, are who your mom was with right after like when she went to this line dancing or this dancing so we can clarify where it was and you know like I'm 90 percent sure that it's there okay it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that could she have drawn them here from where she was because of the type of car she's driving and where she's driving to it's it's very positive it's something that we obviously have to explore so how am I going to find out who she was with tonight hmm. I don't have her number at home. Um, Is there a way on your phone? My uncle. Can you use your phone to find that to find out who sh the people she was with tonight? I could ask phone on my uncles and ask them for that girl's number. Okay. It's one um, of his nieces. We're gonna need. I'm gonna ask you to do that. Okay, if you can do that for us. Um, who Who are you with? What phone service are you with? Rogers. With Rogers. Okay. We're going to prepare a consent for you for the phone records, and then um, I'm going to uh, uh, give your phone back. I'm going to ask you to call what, this uncle okay. uh, so that we can find out where, where she went, who she was with, and where she went tonight. Mm -hmm. Because we need to obviously find out, confirm where it was, and confirm who she was where and if there was any problems. Okay. okay? Um, the, the cars, how many cars, yes? Oh, thank you. Thanks. You want to check to make sure that's your phone? Yeah. Are you the, are you the owner of that phone? Are you the, uh, on, on the plan, is it under your name? Okay. I just asked them to put uh, two initials on because I just, um, like, caller ID when I call in, it's not my name. It's, it's not your name, but it's still your phone and you use this, yeah, right? Yeah, I pay it. And okay, what's your cellular phone number? Uh, 647 Because these things come in in um, in batches, I'm just going to extend the time period just because it, I, I give it a from the first to the ninth because they have they may even give us more time. It's just the way that the, the, the information comes off of their reading, okay? But I'll explain that to you. I'm sorry, your mom's first name? B-I-C-H, separate word. B-I-C-H, H. H, separate word. H-A. H-A. Pan? So, uh, my 
my question is, how far deep into this will I look for my phone? Just like comment, like regular phone calls to people, just stuff like that? Really, it's just the time stamping of, of the, you know, we, we're putting nine days down because it may come back to you that, um, oh, I spoke to him, and it may be able for us to be able to identify people that we may need to go back and interview. The, the interest of us is obviously tonight between 9 and 10, right? Um, but we're just asking for this. We're not asking for months and months and months. It's nine days that we're asking for. And generally it's because we may come back to you and say, okay, we want to interview um, this person. And you go, oh, I don't know where they live. But I spoke to them. Or we've got the phone records, is this the same person? And we'll have their address, at least what is registered to their phone. Okay. So it's the only reason we're asking for a nine-day period. Okay. No, investigatively, it's 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 not of no real significant value other than today, okay. right? It's only because sometimes I phone, you know, like teachers and stuff like no, that. No, we're not going to go back and interview all those people. That's not our intention, right? Um, so I need you to fill out this portion for me. So owner, subscriber, it's the same person as this. So it's you and you, your address, the telephone number, and, um, and today's date, and then your signature. And what it is, is before we go into it, it's all this is all being recorded again. So it's just that you consent to giving us the records for a cell phone number 647-965-2118. Um, and you consent to allow the York Regional Police to access the phone records. The said cellular phone company authorized Rogers. For the following, billing records, incoming and outcoming numbers dialed, registered owner information including credit and payment history. This is really how we link phones to people, how we confirm that it's your phone. And the tower site location if requested for the above mentioned times and dates. And towers now become. Uh, I just drop that. Towers become relevant in this case because of where you are when the phone call comes in on the on today's date. Right? Is that it firms your story to saying that I was in my room when I made that when the calls came in, and um, that will show up on the tower site information. That's the relevance of the tower site information. It also may turn out that maybe during this time period, you were targeted, and you were in an area. And this it enables us to go back and try and look for cameras and other things through the towers. I'm not saying it's going to happen in your case, but it's why we ask for tower sites, right? Okay. Tower sites always show when you're on the phone, they show you where, you're, where you are when you're on the phone making calls. Um, and that the above-mentioned records are to be released for the York to the York Regional Police for the purposes of an investigation of murder of your mum and for the time period as stated, November 1st to November 9th. This is the part of the consent. I am voluntarily giving consent, and I know that I, you don't have to. You don't have to do this. This is, your, this is you volunteering to do this. You may withdraw your consent at any time. I understand that these records may be used as evidence against, against me and may become any part of a criminal proceeding. Now, if you were lying on this, you know, as a part of this whole process that I explained, you're telling us fictitious information, and it comes back, now the records can also be used against you. If you're telling the truth, Really, point three it means nothing, okay? Um, but we have to let you know by law that we could use these against you if you're lying to us. And in consideration for Rogers uh, disc uh, Wireless, disclosing the records of the identified person above, I hereby release and discharge Rogers and its employees from any uh, liability whatsoever in regard to this closure. So this is what the phone companies have asked us to say that because we're giving you this thing, you can't use, you can't, the people who we got it from can't come and sue us. So it's a, it's a preamble, legal preamble. Um, and by doing this, by, okay, the owner subscriber, you're printing your name, you sign here, you print your name, your address, uh, your subscriber number and the date, and I sign where the witness is to say that I witness this. And then um, I'm going to ask you after this to try and contact that cousin to get us the name of the people who were with your mom tonight.
need the full address? Yeah, mark them. Yeah, you mark them, Ontario, just the state. Today is now the 9th of November. And I'm going to sign to witness it. So will you, will we be in, will I be informed of who of my, if anybody, if they contacted on that? Um, the chances are if you're going to be, so you, you can almost guarantee that Adrian and Edward are going to be, we're going to need to speak to them, right? Because Adrian was in your house. Remember, um, if they're doing forensic testing in your house to try and get DNA and anything else in there, they're also going to need stuff to eliminate people, right? So Adrian was in your house. Um, so we need to try and, if you, when, when we shut this down, I'm going to, because it doesn't need to be disclosed on video about their personal information, I need to get... Adrian's contact information. I need to get Edward's contact information. I don't know if we're going to contact them t tonight or this morning, but sometime today they're going to be spoken to. Okay. Um, our priority is who is with your mum. That's our priority right now. Okay. Um, but I, I, I just tweak me back. How many cars do your, do your does your family own? The Mercedes and the Lexus. And where do your parents park these cars? My dad always parks it on the right. And my mom always parks on the left. Inside the garage? And when they, where do they enter the house when, they're, when they park in the garage? Is there an entrance through the garage? Okay, so that's the normal course as they park. Unless we, we plan on going out somewhere, we leave the car in the driveway instead of having to go through the garage. When you left today, left tonight after this incident had happened, did you see the cars in the garage? I did not, but I believe that one of the officers went and checked and said that the cars were still in the garage. The garage doors were closed? Yes. Okay. Um, is there any video equipment, video cameras, or any video system on you in your house? To record? No. no. Okay. Is there anything else that you can think of that might help us right now in this investigation? Okay, so I'm going to, okay, so you know what you told us has been under oath. Yes. Um, I'm just making sure, did, did you swear in a Bible? Yes. It was under oath. Um, is there anything you want to change? No. Is there anything else I should know to fully understand your statement? Mm -hmm. Except for from, this is one of those things that people say, well, no, I'm, uh, I'm schizophrenic, I just didn't tell you, or I suffer from mental illness or delusions, or uh, I'm actually an alcoholic, and uh, I, none of these things uh, affect none you. None of those that you said. You're competent, and this was completely voluntary, and you've told us everything you need to the best of your ability. Best as I can. Okay. So what I'm going to get, I'm going to, it is now 4.30 in the morning, I'm going to shut everything off. And then we're going to have you try and find those that, that information for us, okay? So the recordings now are turned off. I'm going to make sure that, um, that next door the recording's off. Can I use the of course you can use a washroom.
Okay, Jennifer, I'm going to explain this sworn video statement form. Um, and as I've, we're now being recorded, this is not new to you. We've done this once before. Okay. I want to take, before we get this, try and take that first interview that we had, which was, you know, hours after what, what had transpired, put it aside. It's almost like we've never spoken before. Okay. So we're starting afresh. We're starting from new. That way you're not going to say, I think I already told him that. Don't worry about what you've already told me. So this is a statement of Jennifer Pan, and the incident number is uh, for the murder investigation is uh, 310188 of 2010. Jennifer, do you, ever, do you understand that everything that's being said in this room is being videotaped? Yes. Okay, my name is uh, Randy Slade, and I'm a detective with the York Regional Police. My badge number is 531. There's no one else present in the room other than you and I, and monitoring this statement next to us is Deborah Gladding. Uh, today is Thursday, November the 11th, 2010. The time on my watch is 9.43 in the morning. We are presently videotaping at Five District in the town of Markham in the regional municipality of York. Um, is there anything, we're back to this question again about is there anything else uh, I need to know in order to better understand your statement and that is do you suffer from any mental illness? Have you been drinking? Did you take any drugs? No drugs, no drinking. So there's nothing that's going to influence your statement? Just a little nervous. Don't be nervous. Okay? I, I know that's tough to say, but don't be nervous. The truth is always the best way to relieve anxiety. Okay? We are investigating an alleg allegation of uh, murder of your mom, Bichha Pan. As a part of our investigation of this fest, if offense, I would like to interview on videotape and under oath, solemn affirmation or solemn declaration. It is my obligation to advise you of certain information before we commence this statement. Just want it redundant. Remember me telling you about that. So just to reiterate, uh, we're in the middle, or starting the uh, middle portion of the video KGB. I've just turned on my digital audio recorder just, just in case for fail-safe measures. Um, it's now 9.45. We began the video statement portion at 9.43. And I'm just at the portion of the video statement form. Um, Jennifer, can you spell your name for me? J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R. And last name? P -A -N. Okay, so it's my obligation to advise you of certain information before we commence this statement. You may be a witness in court concerning the events you're about to describe in your statement. If at any time you change your statement or claim not to remember the events, the contents of this video statement you give now may be used as evidence in court. Do you understand? Yes. And for the audio recording, just to date it, it's the 11th of November, and I already said 945. Um, these are the criminal code sanctions. Remember I told you the explaining of the, of the facts of uh, that there's certain penalties for not telling the truth or misleading the police. It's also my obligation to advise you that fabricating evidence with the intent to mislead is an offense under Section 137 of the criminal code. And if you give a false statement under oath, you may be charged with fabricating evidence. If convicted of fabricating evidence, you could be sentenced up to 14 years in jail. It is also an offense under Section 139 of the Criminal Code to obstruct by willfully attempting to obstruct, pervert, or defeat the course of justice. And you may be charged if you obstruct justice. If convicted of obstructing justice, you could be sentenced up to 10 years in jail. It is also an offense under Section 140 of the Criminal Code to commit public mischief by causing a police officer to start or continue an investigation by making a false statement that accuses some other person of committing an offense. And you may be charged if you commit public mischief if convicted of public mischief, you could be sentenced up to five years in jail. If you are charged with one or more of the above uh, offenses, this statement may be used as evidence against you. Do you understand the criminal sanctions I've explained to you? Yes. Do you understand the criminal consequences of making a false statement? Yes. 
Do you understand that it's your choice to give, whether or not you want to give a statement? Yes. Do you understand the importance of telling truth in regards to this investigation? If you've spoken to a police officer or any person in authority in connection with this investigation, I want it to clearly understood. I don't want it to influence you in making a statement. Do you understand that? Yes. Do you have any questions? No. Are you prepared to give a video statement under oath or solemn, sorry, solemn affirmation or declaration at this time? Yes. Okay, I'm just going to bring the commissioner in, and then we can get on with it. Hello. I'm Sonia Ficini. I'm a commissioner, and I'm just going to swear you in for your statement, okay? Will you be swearing on the Bible, or will you... Okay. Just place your right hand there, please. And your first name is Jennifer? Yes. Last name of Pan? Yes. Okay. Do you, Jennifer Pan, swear or declare that the evidence that you give in this investigation shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, as I said, what, what education level do you have? Just a high school. High school? Have you gone to any other curriculum, like after school, a higher level of education? Have you been working towards anything? Uh, I'm going back to school, and I have been working on a piano education. Okay, there's no other education that you've sought, like you haven't gone to university at this point in time? Okay, so... Um, I want, I want you to f forget or put aside the first statement that we had talked about, okay? This is going to be where I'm going to ask you to start from the day, okay, on the 8th, leading up until when, you, when the police become involved in an incident that takes place in your house. I want you to tell me about your day, what you do, your interaction with your parents, Okay, so we're at what we are is we're dealing with the incident. We're not dealing with your history right now. We're dealing with the incident again to see if anything else comes. Forgetting what you've already told me and bring yourself through that day and through the event. And we'll see if what we're, we're going to see if we've learned or if you've remembered anything else. And there's some questions with respect to that uh, statement that I'm going to ask you about. Okay, so, but I'm going to let you start again, and, and let's, let's move forward from any time in that day where you want to start. If it's the time you woke up or if it's the time that your first interaction, it's your choice. Okay, I'm just, I'm very nervous, and I why are you, let's, why are you Why are you nervous? Tell me about why you're nervous. Because I don't want to say the wrong thing. All, so because that you, day was a lot. You're right. And I've been scattered and so bits and pieces are here and some pieces aren't here and I'm just so I want you to sit back in your chair okay just sit back in your chair take a deep breath okay close your eyes just follow my line just sit back in the chair for a second sit back relax it's the best you can close your eyes and just breathe for a minute okay We're not in any type of danger. We're nowhere. We're in a very safe place. Okay? And we're going to work through this. And don't worry about what you forget or what you mix up or whatever you're doing. Is You start and pl push the play button for that day. And if you stick to everything that you remember happening that day, it will come out in sequence. Okay, and I'm going to show you a technique after we go through this that will sh that will show it to you. Okay, so let's just start. You've taken a deep breath. You've relaxed. You're in a good position right there. Let's start from the beginning of the day. 
when you wake up and let's start moving forward from there. What I can remember is when I woke up, I had some breakfast and I went upstairs to do some piano history and I was on the computer. What time is that around? I'm not a hundred percent sure. Time is it like is it you know time is important meaning is it is it in the beginning of the is it morning is the light out or is it in the afternoon like probably when? maybe before noon before noon sometime before noon yes okay before noon um, I play some Facebook games so I was doing that and then I stopped and then I was doing some studying for my piano. Like I said, I was working towards a piano degree in teaching. So I was uh, reading some history notes and going over some practice examination papers. Who's in the house at that time? My father has left for work and my mother's home. Okay. Where's your mom? Do you know where she is? I don't remember at this point. Okay. I for, I'm getting the last few days all mixed up together. Uh, I believe she had left with my aunt to go and visit my grandfather that morning okay. or early afternoon. Um, he is residing, oh, sorry, he reside, resided at a Manchung nursing home and he had just gotten back from the hospital uh, Saturday. Okay. So she went in, I don't remember if she took my aunt, but she went in to uh, see if she could uh, see how the nurse the nurse got any updates on him and see if she could feed him. Um, when she had left, she had called me and she asked me to come out because there were some police officers on the street. And I went out and uh, I asked, the police officers came up and they said that there was a gas leak on our street and to exit our uh, exit our house. So I said, uh, if it would be possible, could I go in and grab a jacket? Because I was still in just regular clothes. So I went in, and when I came out, my mother said that they wouldn't let her take out the car either. So we were gonna, we decided to, we were gonna walk across the street to a relative's house there. And before we could get to our relative's house, uh, the officers got a message or a memo from an, from their fellow officers saying that our side was secure and that it might be from another area. So from there, I went back into the house. Do you remember what time that was? Again, it was before noon. Before noon, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was before noon. So before noon, and now your mom's come back from... No, not yet. Not she's, she's on it. She was... Leaving to, to go out, yes. okay. So she left to go pick up my aunt and go in to my grandfather's and I went back up to on the computer to do a little studying taking a break and playing some games um, do you remember speaking to anyone during the day on your on your phone or on the on Facebook um, Later on in the day, yes, I spoke to a longtime friend, Andrew, who I went to elementary school with. Um, but just the usual, he he just asked if we could uh, hang out anytime soon, but I explained to him that I wasn't able to leave the house and I couldn't meet up with him. So I asked him how his life was, how his girlfriend, how his job was going. Um, I believe that was later on in the day, though. That wasn't in the afternoon. We'll go in later in the in when we, when we talk about your past about why you couldn't leave the house. Okay, so uh, that isn't that hasn't gone unnoticed, but we're not going to talk about that right now. We're talking about that day. Okay. So continue on. Um, I think my mom came home at about three or so. I'm not sure where she went with my aunt. She uh, came home and unpacked and started preparing dinner. Um, my father came home, my father came home about 4.20, 4.30, it was later than he usually does, he normally comes home about 10 to 4. 
Um, when my mother asked him <clears throat> where he had been, he had said he had forgotten to lock his toolbox at work or something about along the lines of he had to go back to work because he had forgotten to uh, close something or lock something up. Where does your dad work? Um, <clears throat> Kobe and Stell. Um, it's Middlefield and south of Finch. Okay. Continue. So um, he comes. he's home now late at 4.20, 4.30. And he phoned and asked my Uncle Nam if he wanted to go to go buy some like heat covers and a USB pen. So he immediately left not shortly after that, maybe 4.30, a little bit after that. And on Monday nights, my mother goes dancing. So she had finished dinner, and me and her ate dinner first. What time did you guys have dinner around? 5, 5.30. Mm -hmm. And then she had, then my father came home and he had dinner. And what time did your dad get home? say sometime between 6 and 6.30 because my mother was able to clean up before going out to dance. When your dad comes home, do you remember seeing what type of bags he was carrying when he came in? I, I wasn't downstairs when he came through the door. I had gone upstairs already. Okay. So you don't know where he went shopping at? Um, all I know is that when I came down to greet him after he'd come home, he had shown me this uh, heating cover that he had bought for the house didn't have a label on it didn't you didn't he see took it? it out of the bag or I don't, he did he just showed me the the cover itself he didn't like did I'm, you see the usb stick i believe the usb stick was for my uncle if they bought it or not i don't know i'm not sure okay so it's now six to six thirty because your dad's now home and eating mm -hmm. and your mom said you say your mom cleans up yeah and then she leaves at seven and my father goes up to his computer like he normally does yes and he's on the computer watch like news I'm not sure what he's doing I'm in my room well I believe at this point I had called my friend hang on let's make sure I gotta make sure that the the tape recorders didn't just click off okay because we had a bit of a power flicker so just give me a second okay so we're still we're still Okay, so we're at uh, we're at seven o'clock, right? And your mom's getting ready to go. So continue on. So she leaves, and I, my friend Adrian, had asked if we would do our movie night like we normally do. He comes over with uh, TV shows, uh, some of our favorites to watch um, together. So he had come over. I'm sorry, I. This the timeline's a little off. Uh, yeah. He had come over around. I think I told him I messaged him around six o'clock. He came over about six twenty, six thirty. What did, and when you say message him, was it Facebook or was Text it your phone? Text messaging. Text message. Yeah. And what was the phone? Which phone is it that you use? Which phone number? Uh, my Rogers. Phone. Your Rogers phone, yeah. and six four seven. Uh, nine six five two one one eight. Okay, so that's the message, and th is that the first communication you had with him that day? I think I had messaged him at 3 o'clock. You know, he had messaged me around in the afternoon sometime asking me if it was TV was on tonight. Okay. And then I had messaged him, I'm done, you can come over whenever. I think that was the, just the message I... So what time does he arrive again? He arrived around s between 6 and 6.30. So your mom and dad are both home? My parents are home, and he came in. He greets them as usual. They they ask him how everything was going. And then my mom had left for uh, dancing, and we were downstairs watching. Um, uh, that day we watched Gossip Girl and How I Met Your Mother. Um, is this Are these live TV shows or are these recordings? Uh, he, he brings them on a USB pen. Okay. When your mom leaves, what is she wearing? I didn't pay attention. Do you remember what she was wearing when you were having dinner? She was wearing her pajamas when we were having dinner. What do they look like? Um, they're like green with like Winnie the Pooh. Okay. Um, so when you say when she leaves to go out, 
Would she have changed? Yes, because I was, like I said, my friend came around like 6.30, so we were already downstairs watching movies by when she went up to change quickly and go to her dance class at 7. Okay, and what car does she take when she leaves? She takes the Lexus. Is that the only car she drives? Uh, pretty much. My father drives the, his Mercedes, and my mother drives the Lexus. Do, you, uh, do they have, like, parents have different kinds of routines. Do they have a routine where they park the car in the garage, out of the garage? Or Normally which side? inside, but uh, if we plan to go out again, um, we park our car outside, but only the Lexus. So my mother, when she came home from, like I said, going out with my aunt, she had parked the car outside. Okay. So when my friend came, he parked it beside her. Okay. Um, closer to the door. And where do they usually, in the garage, is there, do they just take out either side? No, or do no, they no. Uh, the Lexus is normally on the, when facing the house. When it's looking at the house? Uh, left side. Left side is the Lexus. And the Mercedes is on the right, closer to the door. Okay. Door. No other cars in the house? No, or just it the two belong, cars. Just those two. Okay, so your mom's goes. Did you see her change her clothes? Unfortunately, I, I was watching... I was just watching my TV show. And where were you friend. watching? In the basement. In the basement. Yeah. So when you say that she's wearing her, her pajamas and she goes upstairs and change, is that something you know or you're speculating? No, for sure she has to change into regular clothes to go and okay. to go dancing. Okay. That's something that I didn't see it, but I know for sure that that's what she does. Okay. So your mom goes, and where's your dad at this point? He is... Uh, well, like I said, around 6.30, he was just finishing up dinner. And after he finished dinner, he went up, he goes upstairs and goes on the computer. So let's talk about the layout of the house before we move on any further here. You're in the basement. Yes. Okay. Um, and it's just the two of you, you and Adrian. Yes. The, the main level, the ground level. What's okay. on the ground level? Um, what we call our living dining room with my piano. Yes. And then behind that is my family room. Okay. And then the side of the family room is our, our kitchen. So it, are they in separate locations, living room, dining room, or is it living is it dining it's room, dining room? It's by more than a half. Like a, There's a wall, but there is a way to walk from living room. Dining room, living room are combined, sorry. Okay. Uh, but to go to the family room, there's like a wall. But there is like a, uh, not a doorway, but like a, a An archway? Op op opening. Yes. To go okay. through to the family And the kitchen room. is where? Um, in the front back side the back of the house the back of the house yes okay you go up the stairs what's what's on the stairs where what's upstairs how many bedrooms are up uh, there four bedrooms but one we use as a study and where's the study located uh, that's the front of the house beside my parents uh, my parents bedroom okay and where's your bedroom located um, the back uh, the back of the house and is there another bedroom back there, too? Uh, there's one more bedroom back there, and that's used for my brother or my cousin, depending on who comes home. Okay. And your cousin, who's? Uh, his name is Curtis, and he goes to school in Waterloo. Okay. Um, during co -op the last co-op season, he co opted in Toronto, so he stayed with us for four months. Curtis's last name? Leon. Leon? Leon. Okay. We'll get to Curtis after. So now we're back. Your 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 um, your dad is upstairs. Did you see him go to the computer room? Like I said, I you're was speculating. Walking. Yes. That's what his normal routine is. That's his normal routine. You're in the basement. Yes. Did you hear me? Your mom leave? Or your yes. 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 Okay. And how do your parents leave when they're taking their cars? Now this time you say the car was out in the driveway. Did mm -hmm. you hear how? The, did uh, when you say you heard your mom leave? How? What? What? Where did she go out? Because uh, where how the house is laid out, the stairwell is in the middle of the house, so she would have to walk. She would have to walk across the stairs to go to the front door, so I I heard her pass through, okay, and leave through the front door. If you park your cars in your garage, how do you get, do they, do your parents come, close the door and come out and into the house or do they? No, come? if they park in the garage, they come through, there's an entrance from the garage to the house, inside the garage. How many ways are there to get into your house other than breaking a window? Like how many? Uh, how do many doorways, doorways, three. So there's Well, there's, the, there's a door from the garage. Yes. Um, the front doorway and the, the backyard. In the backyard. Okay. So, um, 
it's now 7 o'clock or beyond. Your mom's gone. Your dad's, you believe, upstairs in the computer room in the office, and you're downstairs with Adrian mm-hmm. watching either the How I Met Your Mother or Gossip, Gossip Girl. Girls. Well, a few episodes. Do you talk to anyone or text message anyone throughout uh, the time that you're with Adrian? No. Does Adrian talk or text message anyone throughout the no, time? his phone wasn't. I believe his phone was aside. Okay. Um, and then what happens? Uh, nine o'clock comes, and he says, after that fi- final episode we watch, he's like, it's time for me to go home. So I see him out, and I went upstairs and got ready for bed. Okay. And did you see your dad or hear your dad when you went upstairs? When I went upstairs, he was in his computer room like he normally is and on the computer at that point in time. Okay. And your mom's not home? No, she her dancing doesn't finish till about 9, so she doesn't get home till closer to 9.30. Okay. So you're in your bedroom, and what are you doing? I'm At this point, I was on the phone with my friend Andrew. Okay. And just talking to him and then event after and watching TV. And then that was, I don't remember how long the conversation was, but then I ended up calling my friend Edward. So Andrew. Andrew is? An old high school friend. Okay. And is he the one that was uh, you had talked to? This is the person you said you were talking to, you are trying, who was asking about? meeting up with you yes so you were actually talking on the phone with him now yes did you you were talking on Facebook with him earlier no I was uh, text messaging him. text messaging him were you talking to anyone on Facebook at the same time because I know I know you guys can multitask no I believe my Facebook I keep my there's a chat window and I keep that as offline unless I intend to speak to one of my friends regarding one of the games I play so when you're talking to Andrew you're not talking to anyone else no. When you're talking to Edward, you're not talking to anyone else? I don't have a computer in my room. Okay. So that's, that answers the question, is that there's no computer in the room. No. How many computers are in the house? Uh, there's one computer. I'm not sure about towers because my brother recently took one to school with him. But I know there's one fully working computer, and my mother has a laptop. Do you use either? Um like I said, I was on the main computer earlier. Yes. And the laptop I use occasionally, but not too often. Did you use it that day? I don't. I don't remember to be honest, but I don't believe I did. And what services do you use when you're using the the laptop or or the other? What what you say you're on Facebook? Is there yes. any other chat lines or any other? Sometimes I have uh, an MSN open, but rarely I don't like to be on MSN too much. Okay. Um. So uh, now we're at nine o'clock, and you're into the conversation. You've had finished your conversation with Andrew, and now mm-hmm. you're speaking to Edward. What time is it? Do you think? Nine fifteen, nine thirty. When you're talking to Edward, is your mom? Have you heard your mom come in yet? I heard my mom come in, so I asked him to hold. Okay. Uh, he had hung up. So when I went down, I was like, "Hi, mom," and then I saw her. She had changed into her pajamas, and she was downstairs watching TV. Again, so let's out. stop it right there. Just hold it in check. Is that when she came in? Did you see her? I didn't see her come in. Okay, no, when you heard her come in, mm-hmm. you, and you say she changed into her pajamas. She went up the stairs. You heard her come up the stairs? I heard my mom come up the stairs and okay. go into her bedroom. Okay. And then when I went down, like, she went back down the stairs, and that's when I went out, and I went down the stairs, and that's when I noticed she was in her pajamas and just watching TV. Okay. Did you see your dad? He had gone to back to his bedroom to call it a night. He, his door was closed, but uh, he wasn't on the computer. You could see in the computer room that he wasn't there. He was not there. there. So this is after your mom after your mom arrives home, you've heard her come up the stairs, go into the go in the room, you're suspecting she's changed because by the time you follow her down the stairs, she's I in her room. I didn't pigeon. follow her, she went down yeah. and then I went after. Sure. You went down to talk to your mom. Just to make sure she was Okay. Mm-hmm. What like kind normal. of what kind of pajamas is she wearing at this time? Green Winnie the Pooh. She went changed back into her green Winnie the Pooh pajamas. Okay. When you come downstairs, are you noticing? Is there any problems? Any issues? Anything out of the norm when you go down? Because you said you went down to check on her and see how she was. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that's strange? Is there anything different? Not that I know. She was just on the couch like she normally is, watching television, winding down. Okay. 
And that's now, um, you're saying 9.15 to 9.30 she gets home. That's after that, obviously. Just a little bit after that, yeah. Okay, and then what happens? I go back up my stairs and I call Ed again. Okay. And uh, I had to use the washroom, so I did put him on mute for a quick second. And then I came back and I was just watching TV and talking with Ed. Okay. How long are you now upstairs on the phone with with Edward? I'm sorry, but that time frame, just I, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, your cell phone records are going to give us the exact times. Okay. Okay. So are, have you talked to anyone else? Is, is it you hang up with Edward, go down and see your mom, mm -hmm. come back upstairs, yes. call Edward, yes. use the washroom, mm -hmm. on the phone with Edward still? Yes. Have you talked to anyone else? No. Okay. Have you text message anyone else? No. How many? I don't believe I had did, no. Do you have more than one phone? I had one, but I keep that, I just keep the SIM card. Yes. Um... Again, we will go into the, in the history. Sure. But uh, my cell phone gets taken away from me sometimes. Okay. And so I had um, a friend of mine, Daniel. He bought, he got a SIM card for me to use sometimes. But I take the SIM card out when I finish it, and I normally keep it in my pocket so my parents wouldn't find it. Yes. But I don't remember the last time I, I used it. Okay, but you didn't use that SIM card that day. No, okay. I did not know. You did not. I don't remember the last time. Maybe it was a few days before that. It was the last time I remember using it was when my grandfather had, was in the hospital, and I had messaged him and he asked me how my grandfather was. And how long? When is that time frame that your grandfather went into the hospital? He was in the hospital for about ten days. Ten days. Okay. So that's the last time you remember using that SIM card associated yes. to uh, from what your friend had given you yes. was about 10 days earlier or even 12 days earlier because I believe you said your grandfather had come out of the hospital or was he still in the hospital? Yes. No, he was in the hospital for 10 days. Yes. On Saturday he had gone back to his nursing home and okay. this is Monday we're talking so about. So it's about 12 to 14 days earlier that this happened, that you used, you used the SIM card, you're guessing? With the, probably more, within a week, yeah. Within a week? Cause I messaged Give or take him seven days, is that what you were saying? Yeah, because uh, I would message him when my grandfather was in the hospital. Okay. Yeah. And where is that SIM card now? I'm not sure. I don't remember. I had it in my jacket pocket, but I don't remember where it is now. Okay. So, we're now back to, you're on the phone with Edward. Uh, and yes. again, the history stuff, you're right. We'll, I don't want it to get convoluted in here, but we need to, you know, we'll talk about that stuff after. So we're back on track here. It's now, you're back on the phone. You've come from the washroom, taken the mute button off, and you're now on the phone with Edward. Mm -hmm. Where's your mom? Have you heard your mom come up the stairs? Is she, she still downstairs? She's still downstairs. She's still downstairs. Okay. Continue on. Um, just, I had my TV on because I was watching TV. Yes. Uh, I don't remember what show I was watching. I was believe it was Amazing amazing Race. I'm, I'm not 100% sure at this moment. Uh, but I was watching TV and on the phone with Ed as well. Okay. And then I, the next thing I remember is my mother calling down for my father. What is she saying? She's calling him by his name and to come down. Okay, does, so give us verbatim what do you hear her saying. Is it in... The Vietnamese Chinese, or yes, is it in English? It's in Vietnamese. Okay, and what do you hear her say? In Vietnamese? She's like, Hanoi, Sum Day. And what does that translate to? Uh, that's my father's name, Han. Uh, come down here. Does she say anything else associated with that? With that? I can't hear clearly because, like, I was on the phone and the TV was on, sure. but that's what I heard. Is she yelling? Or is it um, at normal? It's a loud, it's a, she's not yelling, but it's a loud tone. Okay. And normally that tone means that I need to go down and see what's happening, usually. So that's when I told him, I told Edward, I was like, okay, I got to go. I'll call you later. And I hang up the phone with him. Have you heard anything else at this point in time? As I'm hanging up the phone with him, I hear footsteps going up the stairs. Okay. But they're not 
they're heavier footsteps than what is to be expected from my parents. Okay. And then I hear mumbling, and someone's in the master bedroom, and I hear the bed being tossed, and I just froze where I was. I have to say, I don't know how long they were in there, but I heard somebody go down the stairs. So at this point, I opened my door. I peered out, and there was a person in the my what would have been my brother's room. And where's your brother's room located? Uh, just a little bit down the like I could see my from my doorway to his doorway, just okay. a little bit down the hall. Okay. And he looks at me and he pulls out his gun. And he walks towards me and like sits me down on my bed. Because my bed is within a step from my door. And he's like, Where's the money? Do you have any money? Give me your money. So I had some money that I had saved up from serving. And I was also planning on buying a new cell phone because my contract was finishing with Rogers. And the phone I'm currently using has not good reception. So I had about $2,000 saved up. And so I opened my drawer and I pointed at it. And he picked it up and took the cash and put it in his pocket. At this point, he ties my hands behind my back. And he walks me out. Okay, so stop right there for a second. Okay, I want you, now that you've got him right there, I want you to describe him to me. What you can remember, every little detail. He's black, with dreadlocks. How long are the dreadlocks? They about show me on your on your on your own body where they where you would see about them. shoulder length okay but they were long enough that they were able to move uh, he's I would he's medium build and he is slight when I was standing I was almost eye level with him and you're how when tall? he came up to me, I'm about five seven. Okay. <sighs> clothing. All I can remember is dark clothing. Now you got the, you've got a gun pointed at you. Yes. Describe and then the he told. Okay. Uh, the gun was black. With. Um, almost not a triangle but it kind of tapered a little on the handle and I would describe it as like um, what I see on TV for like police officers kind of like I guess like a handgun sort of thing and the whole time he kept telling me to look down Because my bedroom was dark, but the hallway was lit. So he kept telling me to look down, look down. <sighs> At this point... Any accent? N n not from this particular person. Does he sound like he was born and raised in Canada? I'd say... I would say that he was born in Canada, but... Like there was no sign of an accent in his... And that's not what I mean culturally. I'm talking about the language. You know, like you can tell someone who's spent a long time as a young age from starting because there, there is no, it's it's normal, normal speech. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Can you see anything on his hands? Uh, he's wearing gloves. What type of gloves? Uh, black leather gloves. Okay. Now facial experience before you t he tells you to look down do you see anything is he got a wide nose is he got is his um, any pock marks any acne any facial hair no 
the only thing I can really make out is just the general shape of his face. Which because is? Because the only thing I could... The thing that caught my attention was... The, which was? The gun. Okay. What about his facial? What about what he looks like? Tell me about that you said about the size or the, the uh, shape of his face. It's not round, but it's... It's not a narrow face. I... Um, his, he didn't have, like, his cheeks were protruding, but they were, they're not like the normal people, uh, it, oh, well, it's almost like a roundish, squarish face, mm -hmm. uh, his, Cheeks, he had cheeks. It wasn't like as a, like um what they call um the defined um the the cheekbones. Yes. Like it was it was almost like round. A full full like there was some meat there, right? Like I wouldn't I wouldn't say fat. Like it wasn't like a yeah. protruding, but it was there was no like definition. Okay. And now this guy's age, and I know it's very difficult to define, but. Um, you know, people age differently, and they have different appearances. Where would you put this 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 guy? Uh, very late twenties to early thirties. So, be I would, if I had to put numbers, I'd say somewhere between twenty-eight to about thirty-three. If you saw a picture of this guy in a composite, like a, on a profile, do you think you could identify? I wouldn't be a hundred percent certain. Okay, so if on everyone looked like if everyone had dreadlocks and the face was very familiar, I d didn't get a very very clear look at his face because I'm sorry, but the the only thing I could really see was that he had pointed that at me. And okay. Now I think uh, another possibility is just based on you. If we sat you in front of a composite drawer, it sounds like you could give them some some raw information that might be able to help in that area, okay? So if you can't do that ID, that, that, that one's still available, okay? So now, he's, uh, you've given, he's taken your money. Where, and where exactly was your money located? Uh, I, my TV's on, uh, on a bedside table, and I keep it in a little book, almost, uh, uh, a day planner, but I don't use it for day planning. Okay. Um, it, it was a gift from friends. And what are you wearing right now? Um, I'm wearing what I was prepared to go to bed. I'm wearing my black pants and um, uh, an old figure skating uh, sweater that I had gotten. Describe the sweater to me. Like, what is it? Does it have pockets? Does it have a hood? Does it? Is it just a sweater? No, like it's just a like a slip-on sweater. No hood. No pockets. Okay. So when you get off the phone with Edward and you're saying, where does this phone go? I stick it uh, right here on the back side of my pants. Back side of your pants? Yes. So in the waistband? Yes. Okay. You open the door, you see this figure, he's coming, he's taking the money. And the bed the nightstand is on what side of your bed? If you're it's looking at the, at the if you're it's looking at the front of your bed this way, where is the nightstand? Night it's in front of my bed. Okay, it's so right it's right beside the the door. Yes. <sighs> the uh, the the nightstand, the TV, and my bed is long towards the TV to watch. Did you take anything else from your room? Not when I was there, no. Not when you were there? No. Okay. Did he toss your room? I don't... While you were there? No. Okay. So he takes you, you're, you're let out, out, to, out of the hallway now, and what happens? And Are the lights in the hallway still on? Yes, but he's telling me to look down. Okay. And at this point now, he's behind me. He had grabbed me at the shirt, and he had pulled me in front of him and uh, was pushing me towards the stairs. Okay. What does he say? He keeps yelling, hurry up, hurry up. Do what we're saying. 
and no one will get hurt. Okay. And then he takes me down the stairs. And the lights on the main floor were all turned off. We take... My stairs are a little curved, and we just went, he sat, he made me, pushed me down by my shoulders and told me to sit on the floor. Do you feel the gun? Is he using his hand? He's using his hand to lead me down the stairs and force me to sit down. Uh, only one hand. Okay. You see the gun again? At this point, I'm looking down and he's behind me, so okay. I don't see his gun. Um... But I can see there's two other shadows, and I can see from where I was standing, my father was sitting on the right, and my mother was sitting on the left. Sitting where? On a couch, on our couch. Sitting on the couch. Are they looking out towards you? No, their backs are towards me. Okay. And you're now on the ground level? Are you on the floor? Or on the I'm sitting, sitting on, the, on the floor. I'm sitting on the floor. All right, where are your hands? They had tied my hands, so let's as go, I said. Let's go back up to the stairs. Remember we said, take the other statement and whatever we've said before. No, I, I said it earlier. Okay, then we must, let's let's get back to that area. I think you might have touched on it. We went back into the description. So where does you, where do you get your hands tied and where does the string come from? I'm not sure where the string comes from, but he had the string. Okay. And he, after I gave him my money, that's when he tied my hands. And how did that happen? Where were you in the room, in the hallway? Where did he that happen? told me to sit down on the edge of my bed? Yes. And that's when I opened. He show, he show, told me show show me, and I pulled open my my drawer my dresser, and he saw the money and he picked it up my book and then he opened up the book and grabbed the cash, put it in his pocket. Okay. At this point, he still has the gun pointing towards me. And he, you're doing great. You're doing fabulous. Okay. So he's got the gun pointed at you. And how do the hands get behind your back? He told me to put my hands behind my back. Okay. Continue. I believe he had... I'm sorry, I'm just trying to be 100% certain. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's pieces that I'm... Then roll through them. We'll put the pieces together. Uh, uh, I... You've got the money out of the drawer. Open the drawer. He had He's put it in his pocket. I'm sitting on my bed. Yes. And he had told me to put my hands behind my back. Okay. But it was dark. So I believe he told me to stand up so he could tie my hands together. And I was trying to make it loose so I could I could do something. But he had pulled them so tight. And he made sure I squealed before he before he let go. Is your TV on? Okay. My TV's on the whole time. Okay. So you've squealed, they're tight, and they're behind your back. And that's when he grabs me and starts leading me down the stairs. Okay. Does he pat you down or search you or do anything? Thank goodness, no. Because if he had pat me down, he would have found my phone. Okay. So you, you're you now down at the bottom of the stairs. You've At this point in time, you've only seen one person, or have you seen the others? Before you get to the bottom of the stairs. Before I get to the bottom of the stairs, I had seen one person. Okay. So now you're at the bottom of the stairs. And he keeps telling these guys to hurry up, hurry up. It's taking too long. And he he told me to look down, but I was able to see out of my peripheral.
a man that I will call number three because I associated with him the least. He had a gun pointed at my father, asking him if he had money in his wallet and where the money was in the house. And he asked my father how much he had in his wallet. And my father answered him, $60. And he kept yelling, you better not be lying to me. Is there more? Where is the rest? And another person who was hiding behind the wall in the kitchen from where I stood, I couldn't see him at first. He had was asking my mother where her purse was. So hang on a second. Who is this? Is this another another guy? Is this number a number? You've gone from a number one to a number three. Yes, I I call this guy number two. Okay, so number three. Let's stick with number three. What what can you describe of him, if anything, including the gun? I can only see that there was a round, uh, kind of like a revolver. That's okay. Remember, if you have to stop and take some deep breaths, it, that really does help the process. His gun had what you call, a, I believe, a revolver. It like one of those things you see in old, old Western movies. <clears throat> and he had, I could just see uh, almost like a silhouette of it from the light. Uh, coming through the the curtains. So in proximity now, you're looking through the peripheral, okay? Uh, is it you're looking right or left from uh, where you are? Uh, right. You're looking right. So you're looking over here to the right, okay? And you can see your backs of your mom and dad who are sitting on the couch. Yes. Can you see what they're wearing? I can't see what my father's wearing. Can you see what your mom's wearing? At that point in time, I couldn't see what my mother's wearing. It was later on that I saw what she was wearing. Okay, so we'll go on to later on then. So there you can see them in the back. And where is the silhouette in relation to your mom and dad? Standing in front of my father. Okay. So is 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 a house... This the What what lights are on on the ground level? None. He, they cracked open the fridge a few times for light, but... The only light on the main floor was the one shining through the windows and doors. The this number three guy, you hear him speak. What is what do you what do you notice about or know about his his um, uh, the, the words he's speaking accent, if any? It's um. It's uh. He's not from. Well, he wasn't. The accent's not what I normally hear. It was almost Caribbean, like Jamaican or Guyanese, or like that kind of accent. Mm, yep. Um, have you got friends who, like, reason I ask you is, is the Jamaican accent or the Guyanese accent, have you got friends who have that accent mm -hmm. that you recognize it? Growing up, there was, uh, growing up, uh, one of my friends uh, was from Guy Guyana, and, uh, I remember vaguely, like, when his parents came for uh, school functions. It was sort of something like that. So it's tweaking you to some, a Car a, like a, a Western Caribbean island area. Is what, like is Jamaica what? or, or um, Guyana, something, something like that. Okay. So you hear him talk, and he, describe his silhouette to me, what you see of it. All I could see is that he's slim and tall. Um... Again, I was sitting on the floor, but... No race. He, it, it was dark, but I... You can't I, put a race to him. Not with. I don't want to put a race with voice. I want a race by color. I could not see... It was dark. I could not see his face. Okay. And now, number two. Okay, you say that doors, fridge doors, where does he come into play? Where do you first see him? I first see him when he's asking my mother where her purse is. And um, they kept telling us that if we just cooperated, everything would be okay. 
So the, the, she. The, I just just to interrupt you because we I want to stay on get back to three before we move on to two. Is is three when is is number three? How is his interaction with her father when he's telling him about demanding the money, and the only money and not lying to him? Is this like is he talking in a low monotone voice or is he yelling at him? How is the how's the interaction going? A stern voice. Stern, but not screaming. Not angry. Okay, so I interrupted you. Now back to number two, where he's asking your mum for her wallet, her purse, her purse, her purse. At first, and this is at the point where my mother stands up, and that's when I saw. That's when I saw her clothes again. Okay. At this point in the night, obviously. Uh, and what is she wearing? Uh, she's still wearing her Winnie the Pooh pajamas as she was when I had come down earlier. Okay. And uh, all I could see was that he had pushed her back onto the couch. And she Who kept pushed her? Number two. Okay. He was pushing her back onto the couch. And she, she kept saying, where's my purse? Where's my purse? And the guy kept telling her to sit down. And I didn't want my mom to get hurt. How many times does she get up and get pushed back down? I'd say she got up twice. And, she, and then they told it. The so first time she stepped back and sat down, but the second time she was pushed back onto the couch. This is only by number two? Yes, because number one was standing behind me. Is he saying anything during this process? He keeps uttering that we have to hurry up. It's taking too long. And that's at that point. That's he kept saying, "Hurry up! It's taking too long." Is there any other demands from either two or three or two. one about uh, uh, about wallet or purse? Is there any other? Two was the one talking to my father, t asking about his wallet. And number one, and he kept saying, where's the rest of the money? And where's the purse was coming from number one. Number one? Yeah. Behind you? Yes. I thought... But number, number two didn't speak. Okay, well, you just said number two is the one who's making demands of... No, the he's one. the one looking. Okay. He's the one looking. So number two, as we... We're stepping back to because I don't want to confuse this thing. I want okay. to slow it I'm down. Sorry. No, I'm no, 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 no. Don't be sorry. We're just going to slow it down. Okay, you're you're getting agitated and 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 um, you're anxious. So we're going to slow things down again because it's very important in this area, right? As you had said, that number two talks to your mom and says, "Where's your purse?" Okay, and I? pushes her down. So now you said that number two okay. didn't speak. So let's clarify that. Okay. What I meant was number one had asked her where her purse was, and she was mumbling. Where is my purse? And number two was the one that pushed her. So your number number one is talking to your mom from behind you. Yes. Okay. Where's your purse? Where's your purse? Yes. She gets up. And number two? Number two steps forward. And that's when my mom steps back and sits down. Has number two uttered a word at this point in time? I can't remember hearing him. Okay. So we're just correcting what you said earlier because you said earlier that it was number two who was asking where the purse is, what are the purse is, and now you've said now it's number one guy who would I'm initially... Sorry, it's just... No, no, no. It's all a purpose. Uh, the purpose here is clarifying what you're saying. So number I one is... I just don't want to... Number one is the one who's doing the talking about the purse. Number three is focused on your dad's wall. Okay. Number two pushes your mom back into place, into the scene. Now, at this point in time, can you see number two? Can you see his description? At this point in time, all I could see is a hoodie and slim build. A hoodie and slim build. Do you see a gun on him? I'm on the floor. I can't see what, like, what his hands were doing. When you that. say you're on the floor, how are you on the floor? How are you, what are you, how, what's your position? Are you lying on the floor? Are you sitting on the floor? I'm sitting on the floor, cross-legged, when with uh, number one behind me. Okay. 
So you've now um, you've now got your dad, uh, like who's told him about the wallet upstairs, was sixty dollars. You got your mom, who's they're asking about a purse from number one. Let's go from there. How is your mom dealing with this when she's getting up and getting pushed back down? Is she responding to them? Is she talking to them? She keeps saying, because they keep uttering, if you cooperate, no one will get hurt. And she keeps asking herself, where's my purse? Where's my purse? In English. And then I believe she remembers that she didn't take a purse out. She only had a wallet that day. After she came home, she had a wallet. She was trying to find it. And number two was looking around for it. Was she up helping to look for it? That The second time, that's when she st stood up to help, and that's when she got pushed back down. Okay. Are they bound? Do you see their hands or? My mother, when she got up, I, she was not bound. Okay. So do they direct number two to where this per, where the wallet is, or does he find it that you know? I don't know. Okay. So then what happens? And then number one tells me to stand up, and because I'm cross-legged on the floor, I with my hands behind my back, I couldn't get up very well. And so he kind of, he with one hand he kind of like, pulled me up, and he said, "Come here." He didn't say who or what. He just said, "Come here." And he brought me upstairs and he said, "You're gonna take me to the wallet. Show me where your father's wallet. Where does he keep his wallet?" And at this point, number two had come upstairs. And since he was upstairs... I'm just turning this off because it's going... Number two, sorry. So let's start there. Hang on a second again. Come with me. Come with me. He, they take me to my parents' room, and I can see the bed is turned over and everything's awry. And you're with... Um, number one is still behind me. Yes. And number two at that point is on his way up. Okay, so he's not up there yet. Okay. Do you hear any interaction going on between your parents and number three? Can you hear anything? I don't recall anything. Okay, so you get to the top of the stairs. And he takes me to my parents' room. Where are you standing? At first I was standing at the doorway, like in the middle of the doorway, and then he pushed me aside to my left a little so that number two can come in. Okay. You get a good look at number two now of what he's wearing? All I could tell was he had a vest, and his face was like a long oval face. He had a vest? No, hoodie. Okay. A dark hoodie. Okay. And was there anything on his face, or was there? could you see his face? Again, he kept telling me to keep my head down, and every time I tried to, he used his hand, and he, because he had me by my shoulder, he kind of just let go for a second, pushed my head down to make sure I wouldn't look up. Okay. Is the, where, you know, what the light, what are the lights you said in the hallway upstairs were on? on? Are they on still? Yes. Okay. When you're looking down, can you see what number one is wearing on his pants or his shoes? He was not directly behind me and I was, there was just so much in front of me that had happened and I don't recall. Okay. So... Where are you facing, if you're at the doorway, facing when you're forward. looking in, are the lights to your mom and dad's room on? Are you now facing into the room? And what do you see? You said you saw the bed turned up, so it turned. So the room has been rummaged through, is, is, is what you're, is that the state of your parents' room? No. Okay. It was, it, it like they had flipped the bed. Okay. And when you say you move to the left, are you still able to look inside the bedroom? Where do they have you look? Where are you looking now? Almost like I'm right beside the wall, and my parents have a, my mother has a, a sewing table there. 
Okay. So I'm just pretty much staring at, I'm like looking down at the table. And peripherals you can't see where, where? He's, no. And where is number one at this point? He's now? still behind me. Okay. So what's going on inside the room with number two now in there? He's looking for my parents, my father's jeans, and he's asking me where is it. But I don't know where it is because they had turned the room around. And okay. then number one pulled me backwards and told me to sit at the top of the banister and tied my hands back, uh, tied my arm to the banister. Okay, now, did, did you see them recover anything inside your mom and dad's room? I did not see anything, no. Are you sure? Because uh, we would, when we spoke the last time, there was some mention of some other money that went missing. There, uh, yes, the U.S. currency. So how did that get found? I believe when they were looking for my father's wallet, they had opened the drawer. And there was, uh, it was in an envelope. What drawer would that have been in? On my, on the, if you're in, at the door where we're all standing, on the left side, the bedside table. Whose side of the bed is it? That's my mother's side of the bed. Okay. And approximately how much money? I'm not sure how much she took out for our, our trip. But I can, o I can only estimate about a few hundred dollars. Few hundred, because at the time, the last time or you told me, you were pretty adamant 1, about about eleven hundred dollars. So I'm curious to know how you came up with that number. I believe is when we were at the border, we and we stopped at the duty free. My mother was deciding whether to use her U.S. currency or her uh, her U.S. currency or her Canadian currency. So it was at that time you remember hearing eleven hundred dollars, and that's what is that the inference you're saying is that because you're pretty solid, saying that it was eleven hundred dollars that went missing that was was taken, and that you saw it when we spoke, and who took it, who took possession of the money. I'm sorry. It's all right. Were you ever inside the room? Did they ever take you inside the room? Did you ever make it past the threshold of that door? Okay. So let's come back to now. You're being taken to the, the banister in the I'm upper sorry, room. I don't don't apologize, okay? I'm going to try and ask you questions to try and clarify points. Okay? If you don't remember, you don't remember. Okay, so don't, there's no apologizing. The only reason you would apologize to me is if you've lied to me. No. Okay, no, I so just, I just, then in this case, then don't apologize to me. It's okay. Okay, I'm going to ask you questions to clarify points. Okay. So you're at the, you've been taken back to the banister. Who is there? Number one took me back. Okay, where's number two? He was still in the bedroom. Okay. How do you get tied to this banister? He, number one, number two had come out of, come out of the room, and he had told number two, Go get Cuzzy for the string. Uh, no, it was go get Cuz. He has said that I need the string. Go get Cuz. And number two ran down the stairs, and he came back up shortly after. And then.
And I believe number two was the one that tied me up. Because number one was still holding the gun in front of me. So number one is now in front of you? He has been in front of me since he pulled me out of the bedroom. Okay. And he sat me down and he was in front of me, making sure I was down. So on this gun that you're looking at that's in front of you, is there, can you see what type of gun is it? Does it have a cylinder or a round thing like an old gun or does it look like more? It, like, uh, it just reminded me of the, like, television police, like the handguns. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's black. Can you see from there? Now you're in front of him and you're looking down. Can you see his shoes? Can you see anything else about him? I want you to think right now. Just try to... It's tough to put yourself back in that spot, but you've never been tied up, I suspect, or bound like that, and now you're sitting there staring down. Can you? Is there anything that you remember about his shoes or his pants? Any idea where this string came from? Does it, does it, well, you're, you're seeing it come around because it's now lit. Does it look like it's come from some, from clothing or from shoes that you might have in your house? Or you don't know? It just, it just looked like a black shoelace. I. Okay. Any, any interaction, any communication going on between you and number one and, and number two while this is being, while you're being bound? My mother's calling for me. Okay. And they keep saying that to shut up. Who's saying that to who? Number three is downstairs and she's telling her to shut up. She's telling her to shut up. What's your dad doing? I can't hear my father. Okay. <clears throat> You're now bound to this, to the, to the railing. Can you show me? Can you stand up and turn around and tell me? Just show on the camera how your hands are bound and how you are against the railing. You don't have to sit down. I just need to see how you were. Just tell me. The only reason that I'm trying to, uh, I need to do this is that I'm also going to ask you is that it. So take this back to from. Take it out of a traumatizing event, which it is, and put, put yourself into a more clinical position because I want to see how you could physically get your phone out of your waistband. We're obviously going to need to know that. It's very important. So traumatize away. Way, now put yourself into a just a state of I need to man mechanically show how I can get access to my phone, okay, because that's obviously very relevant. I, we know you made the phone call. But questions are going to obviously raise is that if my hands are bound and I'm against the railing, how do I talk to a 911 operator? Okay? So clinically, this is now a clinical demonstration. Just stand up. Focus in on how you did it. And I want you to stick that in your waistband as an example. Okay, so take your just take your sweat off because this will be a very smooth, very quick thing. It's a one-time demonstration. I'm not going to ask you to repeat it, but I need to go through it. Okay, so just take your sweater off. Stand up and turn around. Put this in the side that you believe it was in. Great. Turn around. So that only you're looking away from me. You're looking exactly like now. Here is where the banister is. Put your hands back behind your back, exactly how you remember they were. Okay. Now, and the, are you restrained from movement? How far can you move your hands from the banister? They tied my upper arm. Yes. Around the banister. Yes. But my hands were bound together. So your hands bound together, and this is the arm that's the, the strings wrapped around against the banister. Okay, so now how can you get to the phone? And how do you make the phone call? 911. Mm -hmm. And do you talk down like that? Yes, I'm yelling at the phone like this. And how can you hear? I turn the volume on max. Yes. So that's exactly the way that you're talking to her against the railing. Okay, that's good enough. Sit down. Put your sweater back on. Just put your sweater. Yeah, yeah. 
You want it? You want some more water? I'm okay. Okay. I really appreciate that. Obviously, it's very important to see it because we can't put you. It would be absolutely physically impossible to put you back into the same position. But we just needed to see how you get the phone out and and make the call. Okay, so sit back, take a couple of deep breaths again. When you're, when you're up against the railing and now you've been bound, and is number two and number one still there, or are they gone? Number one was there for a little bit. Number two ran down the stairs. What is number one? Is he saying anything to you? He's saying you obeyed and just shut up and don't move. And he continues yelling downstairs, hurry up. Hurry up, it's taking too long, hurry up. Now tell me something, okay, which is kind of important. There's a safe in the house, is there not? Safe is in a fairly visible place within within your parents' bedroom, is it not? It's inside their closet. Fairly visible, according, at least from the pictures. Was there ever mention of wanting the combination to that safe? Through any of the interaction of one, two, and three, did they know that there was a safe in place? I don't, I, I'm not aware if they knew. Okay. I didn't. So you never heard any of them demanding the safe, the the the, um, the combination to the safe. Was there anything else they were demanding in their yell yelling? It was was it was it what was the focus of what they were looking for? Cash. Cash. Okay. So number one's talking to you. You obeyed. And. We need to go, we need to go. And where does he go from that point in time? He's yelling down the stairs. Is there more? And number two, I can just hear him muffling something. I, I don't hear him cl clearly. Number two or number three? No, sorry, number three. Number okay. three. Number three. Okay. It's just... A mur, but I can't. I can't hear what he's saying. Okay. At this point, I start hearing my parents get up, and they're moving, and my mom's yelling, "Where's my daughter? I want my daughter. Where's my daughter?" And I'm yelling, "Mom, I'm here." Are they saying anything to your parents? I know she's yelling to you, okay, she's, she's yelling to you, are they saying anything? Like are they giving them directions as to where they're going? Can you remember? Probably can hear is my mom right now. Okay. So you hear them get up and you're moving, and they're moving to in what direction? Towards the basement. Okay. Are you still hearing one and two, or one and three? Are you hearing all three of them? Number one. And what's he saying? Hurry up. Is there more? Okay. At this point, he throws my glasses. 
Then he walks down the stairs. So he's still up there with you. When do you, and, and at this, so you've had your glasses on the whole time. When does he take them off? Right before he leaves. Right after, so you're, you're tied to the banister. You're just before he leaves to go down the stairs, your glasses are off. You have had your glasses on the whole time prior to that. Okay. So now you hear your parents up and they're moving towards the basement. Do you hear, what do you hear? Where's the rest of the money? Whose voice? The one with the Caribbean accent. Number three. Who we've called number three. Yes. Where's the rest of the money? Is that as, you're, as you hear your parents moving? I can hear them stepping down the stairs. Okay. And then, after number one joins them, after he took my glasses. You heard him go down the stairs as well? Number one then left me. Yes. And he went down the stairs. And I asked, my mom was still calling for me, and I wanted to go, and he says no. Okay, hang on a second. Hang on. So number, you hear number one say no to your response, to your demand of wanting to go. Do you hear the questions coming? Are your mom saying, where is she, where is she? Are she starting to make her, are they starting to go down to the basement? Are they on the stairs leading to the basement? Can you hear, I'm, I'm going to ask you to focus in, because it's very difficult, I'm going to ask you to focus in, are you hearing all of them going downstairs? Can you hear the, that many footsteps? That's five sets of steps. Because if your mom is moving down to the basement with these guys and number one is walking down to join them, he would be, he would be later. He would, he would be walking down. Does he go down to the basement? Or do you know? Can't tell? Here, Jennifer, take a Kleenex and, and just take a minute. Okay, so we're now down in the basement. They're down in the. You know your parents are down in the basement. You don't know who's down there with them. You can't tell how many people went down. You know that number one left and was heading in, down in that direction, but you don't know by footsteps who's down there. That's all right. Whose voices can you hear now down in the basement? I can just remember number three saying you lied. There's more. Where is it? You lied. You're lying. Okay, and then what do you hear? I hear a, I heard pop, and then my mom, I heard her squeal. So do you hear one pop, or do you hear two? That's what I can't remember. Then don't, it's, it's one or two? Okay, and then you hear your mom squeal. And then what do you hear? Another one or two pops. Do you hear any voices in between other than your mom squealing? Do you hear number three say anything? All I can remember was like calling for her. Okay. Don't apologize, okay? This is nothing to feel to apologize to me for. This is something that you're trying to remember. So you heard a pop, you heard your mom squeal, and then you heard another any idea how many more pops you heard? 
I just remember that I heard one or two, and then there was a slight break. And there was one more. I don't remember if it was two, and then break, and then one, or if it was one, and then break, and then one. Okay. So you're saying that you heard a total of how many pops? Guessing. Four or five. Four or five. Okay, so you hear, uh, after those pops, popping noises, what do you hear? After the last popping noise you've heard, what do you hear? That's it. It's too long, let's go. From number one. That's it? It's too long, let's go? Okay. I think I just hear a bunch of foots going. Mm -hmm. Does it sound like they're obviously coming? Does it sound coming up the stairs? Do you know where they leave? I, I believe they went out the front door. Okay. But I couldn't see anything. I just, okay. It's what I heard. It's what you're hearing. What else do you hear next? That I heard. Once the door closed, I heard my father. He ran up the stairs, and all I could hear was moaning. Yeah. Once I heard him starting to move, I that's when I pulled out the phone, and I was trying to call 911. Okay. Did you hear, after you hear, that's it, let's go, do you hear any more communication between the three guys? Okay. I, I was just calling for my mom. Okay, so you're dialing 911, you've called the police, you know, you're on the phone with the dispatcher, you're updating them as to what goes on. Yeah, my, I hear my dad calling out the door and he's like yelling on the street. Okay. And I'm calling for him, but this. Dispatch lady, I'm trying to. So when the officers arrive, how do you get untied? Do you remember? At first, they were all outside. I, I was screaming for them. Yeah. And finally, someone heard me. And they came up the stairs. First, they had to check all the rooms first, but I just wanted them to get me out. Yeah. I didn't want to be sitting there anymore. So they, how did they get you free? They grabbed a pair of scissors from my room. But the officer said to wait a few minutes because he didn't know how to, how to do it, the procedure. But I just wanted to get out. I think it was you, my dad. He cut me, he let me go, but he, he cut, he cut the, now you, uh, when you took out, you off your sweater to show me the demonstration, there's still some marks on your arm. Are those the marks from the string? No? Where are they from? From before. Okay. So history-wise, we'll go into that, okay? So, now, as an event, as to try and see, this is the, uh, the, little episode, the little technique that we use to try and see if there's something during the course of what you've told me that 
boom, I trigger something, uh, another memory. Okay, we're going to start right now. We're going to start at the point that you're being, you're, the officers arrive, okay, and we're going backwards. Not nearly as, I don't need you to go into the, we're not going to be stopping here and going through to, well, what about this and what about this? It's you may come across something. It's the re reverse chronology of what you just described, okay, leading us back to the time you're in upstairs talking to Edward. So I want you to start right now with your police officers arrive and they're cutting you free. And now let's start going backwards from that. Okay. Just don't want to see wrong things. Mm. Just don't. This is. Don't worry about saying wrong things because you'll be you'll be correcting them as you're moving moving backwards. Okay. It's a very well practiced technique to help in memories. So especially in traumatic events. So my dad was. He had been out the door. Yes. And he was moaning. And just before that, they had left. The, the, the people had left. One had said, it's been too long, let's go. Before that was a gunshot. Before that they were scolding my dad for lying, because there was more money and he wasn't telling them where it was. Before that, they were going down. You're doing great, okay? You're doing great. Just before that, they were going down the stairs. But I could just hear my parents' footsteps and my mom. So I don't know how many of them went down. But I know for sure number one was upstairs with me while they were starting to go down. And then number one, that's when, like, he was taking off my glasses and that's when he went down the stairs. Am I saying something? Before that, they tied me, before that number two was upstairs as well, and he was helping number one tie me, the banister. 
Before that, number one turned to number two and said, go get, I need, get me the string, go get cuz. That's when number two went down the stairs and came back up with the string. Before that, number one had taken me and told me to sit down at the top of the stairs. Number two was still in the bedroom. Before that, we were in my parents' room, and he was asking about the wallet. Where's my dad's wallet? Don't worry about it. Keep going. I don't remember how they got the money. Before that, I was downstairs. And they were looking for my mom's purse. Number three was asking about the wallet. Number two was looking for my mom's purse. My mom kept standing up and sitting down, and they pushed her. Number Before that, I was in my room. That's when he tied me up. But before that, I showed him the money. Before that, I had heard them toss my parents' room, and that's when I looked out. No, the guy went down the stairs, and then I looked out. That's when he came. And he pulled out his gun and told me to sit on my bed. Before that, I heard my mom tell my dad to come downstairs. And that's when I told Ed I'd call him back and put my phone, my phone in my back. Is that okay? Yes. When you said um, that you saw during this process, you, you heard the steps of the guy, someone going downstairs, did you hear your father going down the stairs? At ever? At that point in time? I heard him get out of his room. But then that's when I was telling Ed that I'd call him back. He was responding to your mom's command? Yes. Okay. In your kitchen, there is uh, rear sliding doors. 
Is there not? And you're in the back area to get out to the back of your house? Is it sliding glass doors? How is that normally, how do you, what is the normal position of, of the blinds or, or whatever when you, during the day? Do you keep them covered? Are they exposed? Can you easily have access to get out to the backyard or do you have to open them? Like how is the normal routine? It differs from it differs from time of day and time of year. Um, my mom my mother likes to plant, so in the daytime we have our blinds open. Um, they're all the way out, but they're open to let sunlight in. And at night we close them because of our backyard neighbors. Okay. The sliding glass door, is it locked all the time? Occasionally it's forgotten to be locked. But for the most part we do check it before we go to bed. Before everybody, the last person is supposed to check everything before turning in. But on some occasions, it's how do you know that it's been unlocked? When my mother goes out to water the plants the next morning, it's open. And she makes a comment about that? She comments to my father that he had forgotten when he went out to water his grass and the night before. What about your front door? How do you, what is that when you guys are home or when you guys are home in the house, do you lock your front door or do you keep it? or do you keep it all unlocked? Occasionally it's left unlocked because the way our family is, we have family that come over after dinner. So sometimes we leave the door unlocked, but it will always be locked before bed. The last person going into bed. The last person always locks it. Yes. And you said something about Sorry. activates the alarm as well. Um, we activate the alarm before we go. Well, we leave the house. So there's, it's not activated when you're in the house and you're going to bed. It's only when there's no one in the house. Yes. Um, when was the last time that you went out through the back, the back sliding glass doors that you remember? A while, I'd say. The only time I go back there is if I'm barbecuing. Um, the occasion my mom needs help carrying a if she needs help carrying something heavy. Okay. What about a stranger's knock on your door? Whoever's downstairs normally goes to answer the door. Will they look out or will they just open the door? No, uh, they tried to look through the sheerness of our curtain. Would you Have you ever heard your mom or dad, like if there's someone at the door who they don't recognize to go away and they won't open the door? Or will they always open the door to find out who, even if they don't recognize someone? Well, they try to go as quietly as possible. And if they don't, like a telemarketer or something, they just walk away. Okay. So, I think we've. If there's something else that I can that I'll, that pops into my head while or, or when I go out to talk to them later, if there's something else that they want to ask me, I'll come back to it. What I want to do now is I want to go into your past, okay, and start talking about things that have been going on with you. In, in in relation to your life, okay. You know, not I'm not going back to childhood. That's not my interest. Is uh, obviously in the last few years is what's going on. Do you have a boyfriend? I uh, had a boyfriend, but no, I don't have. One. What what's your what's your, what was your boyfriend's name? Daniel. Daniel what? Wong. Tell me about your relationship with you and Daniel. 
it was a really tough one. Um, we went to high school together. He helped me through a really difficult time in high school um, when I have asthma, but it it wasn't a concern. Uh, it was only a concern when I was younger. Um, but when I went over to Europe, um, a lot of sick people were smoking cigarettes, and it acted up over there, and he took care of me over there. When did you go to Europe? 2003. Okay, and how long were you there for? Under two weeks, I think. Okay. So this is 2003 when you and Danny were started dating? No, uh, later on in 2003. We were just friends at that point. Okay. What grade were you in at that point? Eleven. Eleven. So how does your relationship with Danny can, uh, develop? Where, where does it go and how long does it last? It lasted about six years. Um, it began in the summer of 2003, before my grade 12 year. Uh, we were just really good friends and I guess it just happened. Like we just started going out. Well, saying that we were going out, but um, I didn't really get to see him much. Let's talk about that. Why didn't you get the chance to see him much? I wasn't allowed to have a boyfriend. And that was when you were 18? I was 17. 17 turning in your 18th year? Maybe mm, grade I 11 just, or going to grade, grade, no, going grade. grade 12. Okay. And uh, so who was against you having a boyfriend? My father. Your father? How was your mother in this? She took a back seat to his opinion. Um, she would tell me that I got to find someone who was devoted to me. But at that time, she just, my father was the one that enforced the rules. And what were the issues your father had with a boyfriend? Was it Danny in particular or, Dan or was it just no, a boy? Just any boy at okay. that point. So what happens? How, how are you saying that you're not allowed to see this? What, what uh, I know, I know that there's certain ways that you can still get around your father not allowing you to see it. When In grade 12, uh, we went to school together. He transferred out, um, but he'd come over. Uh, to our original high school, and he'd come see me. Okay. And once in a while, I'd go and skip class and go see him. So you were seeing, you were dating him essentially without your parents' knowledge and consent? Yes. What would they have done to you if they found out? And did they find out? Not in high school, no. Okay. So you finish high school, and then what do you do when you finish high school? I was, I wanted to do kinesiology, but my my father was very adamant on doing something in the medical field that was a little bit more, um, in his opinion, more like a more successful. I guess you can say um, he knew I didn't have the stomach for being a doctor, um, so he wanted me to become a pharmacist. Okay. Did you go to school for pharmacy? Did you get any university for pharmacy? So if you are you finish your grade 12, you go to OI, your OIC year? Like grade 12 is you finish your OIC year. I don't have OIC. I didn't have OIC. I finished okay. my grade 12. And then where, where do you, what do you do for the next few years? While your dad's wanting you to get into the medical field, what do you do? I was trying to get into piano. What school? I I was still taking classes at a conservat like a a school, but it's still recognized in the community as a teacher's license through the Royal Conservatory. Yes. Okay. So, how is this interaction? How is this going with your dad? How is the how is your home life with the you're not now not living up to his expectations? He you didn't know I lied to him. What did you lie to him? What did you tell him? That I was going to school. For. Uh, for just pre-med, uh, not pre-med, sorry, science. For science. Bachelor of Science. You would have had bills for school. How is how is that coming up? How are these bills being paid for for university that you weren't going to? I was working at Eastside Mario's, and I took care of myself. So like he financially, my father was never 
he never took hand in bills. So he didn't know anything about pills. Did your mom know that you weren't going to university? No. So both your parents thought you had gone to university? Yes. Okay. And um, how long did that, how long, did they still to this point in time think that you had gone to university for, for pharmacy, for sciences? Yes. And how did you feel about that? How did you feel about having to lie to your parents? I felt guilty, but every time I tried to bring it up, there was just so much, so much expectation. Did you have any resentment towards them for this? I chose what I chose, um, but in the end, I chose my family. Okay, so now you're not allowed to see boys. How do you continue really your relationship while you're supposed to be at university working at Eastside Mario's? Are you working during the day at Eastside Mario's? Um, sometimes, but not all the time. So how do how do you maintain this relationship with uh, with Daniel? Um, I bus down to see him, or my parents would drive me down to Toronto, and they thought I was getting going to school, but I'd go see him and I'd come back. What school did they think you're going to? Ryerson. Okay. Um, was Daniel aware of what was going on in your with the issues in your life with your parents? Not at first, but eventually he found out. Okay. And um, what would your parents do f find out? Did they ever find out that you were dating Danny, Daniel? Eventually. Well, how long into the relationship was that? I'd say five years. Five years. So that brings you up to 2008 or 2009? 2008. 2007, 2008. And how do they find out? My mother saw him dropping me off at a loca at Pacific Mall where they come to pick me up. And how did that go over? Not well. Explain to me what not well means. My mother she said at first she was like not supportive but she said you need to tell me and she basically gave me the um the sex talk which basically was one moment could ruin your entire life um but once my father found out without even knowing him he automatically put judgment what kind of judgment did your father pass on him? He blamed my lying and even racial um, profiling on him. And what does that mean? I don't know about the racial profile. Um, he is half Filipino, half Chinese. Yes. And my father associated him with Filipino and said that, you know, he wasn't a good match for me. He wasn't going anywhere in life, and um, that he wouldn't be able to support a family. So tell me about about Daniel. Uh, we've interviewed Daniel, okay? So tell me about Daniel.
He was, I believe, uh, selling. Selling? Selling some marijuana, I believe. Okay. You weren't aware that he was up to this type of business? No. Is that what you're Is that what you're saying to me? Yes. So um, when he is, when your parents find out, uh, what happens to you at home? They pretty much uh, make sure that I wouldn't contact him again. And how do they do that? They take away my cell phone and restrict internet access. Like, they have to be in the room or not at all. Do you have a curfew? If I go out with a friend that they know, I have to be home before 9. Before 9 o'clock? Yes. And is that even up until Monday? Did you have a curfew up until Monday? Uh, technically, but I don't. I haven't gone out for a while. And why is it that you haven't gone out for a while? Because they gave me an ultimatum to either choose Daniel or to choose them about a year and a half ago, or two about a year and a half ago, and I chose to stay home with my family. But even though he had moved on, I uh, we still wanted to be friends. Um, we went through a lot. I was there for him and he was there for me when we needed each other. So I, whenever I could, I would sneak a phone call here, a sneak a phone call there. Um, I'd ask a friend of mine to pick me up and to take me to see him and then take me back. Who is that friend? Uh, Gary. L Gary? Gary Gibson. Gibson. Uh, I met Gary through Daniel, and uh, he he picked me up and took me to see Daniel, and he made sure I got home afterwards. So tell me about uh, how come your parents allow you to speak to Edward or to Adrian, in fact, allow Adrian into the house? Adrian has been a friend of mine since the uh, beginning of high school. Um, he... My parents agree with his, how do I explain this? He went to school for engineering. Um, he has a job, and his mother was, is a piano teacher as well, like myself. So in their eyes, uh, he had like a well-rounded a well life. And because he didn't, he took me out once, like once, in a while but not really but because he he has a car of his own so he comes over therefore they were able to interact with him and accepted him okay what about Edward um, Edward was an old co-worker of mine um, Edward only met my mom once at a gym at when well, we went to the gym um, I introduced him to my mom but uh, he he only stops by when my parents are not home for about like an hour or so just mm. to catch up. But I haven't gone out to actually, like, we talk on the phone, but that's pretty much... I tried to meet him at the gym, but that's... All. So for the last year and a half since you chose, the ultimatum was given to you, as you, in your words, it's either Daniel and or your family. Yes. And you say that you chose your family and you stayed home. What have you been, when, when you say I stayed home, what is your routine? Tell me for the last year and a half, what, what have you been doing? I have been continuing my piano studies and my parents um, enrolled me back into school, into and college. Into college. At first I didn't have enough marks to get into the program I wanted, so I had to do one year of, uh, like, refresher course of a calculus high school credit. And they never said to you, you can get in and graduate with a, a science degree, but you can't take that and now get in. They never question you about college now that you can't, you don't have the marks to get into college. How did you get around that? I lied to them and said that calculus wasn't a big thing when I first applied uh, when science, but now calculus is more of a mandatory course. What, um, and when was this happening that you were going back to school? Uh, recent, uh, I went back last summer. 
What's which college? And I went to high school. Yes. From the school program. Um, it was at Bray. I believe it's Bray Buff. Bray Buff. Um, on Steeles and Bayview. And you graduated with that? You're, you've you've finished. No, I, fi- I completed the credit uh, at upgrading my mark. And have you? Did you apply to college? Yes. And you were accepted. I'm accepted for January. Yes. At which college? Uh, Centennial College. Okay. In what program? Uh, bio, bio, technology, biotechnology engineering. Okay. So, the last year and a half, you've been doing your piano studies. Yes. What is your routine, like daily routine for the last year and a half? When you say that I chose my family, I chose to stay home. Well, at first, I continued phone contact with Daniel, but uh, that only lasted about um, one time. I, Like I told you, Gary came to pick me up to go see Daniel, and I got caught. And um, that's when they took away my cell phone, and they said that they'd drive me places. And so pretty much I wake up, I do my piano studies, um, I may go see my teacher for lessons. Um, at first they took me, but then uh, once my teacher was like, yeah, she's with me, um, I was able to go and see him at his house um, once a week. Uh, sometimes it was once every other week if he was busy. And then I had um, another studies at a place called Euro Music for the actual pedagogy course, which is the actual teaching course. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I went to those two classes once a week as well, Um, and pretty much it was home, help out with housework, and practice my piano, and just wait for the college application, uh, uh, college acceptance. And did you go out? Were you allowed to go out at night? I don't go out, no. The only time I went out was, uh, last time I went out was for my For my one month, uh, my um, my birthday, and I was able uh, a week ago to go see my friend on Hall- on the night of Halloween. My mom went out um, to a dance uh, dance thing. Sorry, it was Saturday night, not Halloween night. It was Halloween weekend. Saturday night, um, my friend Topaz and I had made plans, but my grandfather we wanted to go skating because I love to skate, and since they know Topaz and they like they confirmed that she was in fact going with me to skating and they have a number to call her to make sure I was there um, and that I'd call when I got to her house mm-hmm. um, I got there and because I had let my friends know that my grandfather was ill and that I wasn't a hundred percent sure she did she has a child so she couldn't make plans to get uh, her child a babysitter so we just stayed at her house with her husband for about, um, it was definitely an hour, and then... This other phone that Danny, that Daniel gets to you, yes. how long do you, are you able to keep that from your parents' attention? Yes. And how long are you in, how long do you have that phone? I've been three months. You've had it for three months? The last three months? Three, three months. And when do you switch from just using the phone to just pulling the SIM card and using it? The just SIM? using SIM, pulling the SIM card, texting him, and then taking it back, putting it back in my jacket pocket. Okay, so this SIM card that you say was in your jacket pocket, which jacket is it that you're talking about? Um, I have a black jacket with a furry hood yes. that I use in the fall. And the last time you knew about it, it was inside that jacket. Jacket. Yes. And you believe you would believe there's no reason why it wouldn't still be there. Yes. Okay. And where would that jacket be located? Either hanging in my room or hanging uh, behind uh, by the garage, the door. Mud room the area. What we call the mud room area, the garage door. Is it a laundry room where there's where you come in from the garage? Yeah. Okay. And not a laundry room, but uh, it's like a little nook. Little nook. There's no the laundry is downstairs. We, we took the laundry downstairs. Okay. Um, Danny, Danny, and and um, 
his activities, his, his drug-related activities, did you ever engage or assist him in this, in this practice? No. I told him I did not want anything to do with it. Um, it's a tough question, right? Is that are you involved in any type of illegal activity that would draw the attention of these type of people to come to your house looking for something? I have never. What about your parents? Not to my knowledge. Well, not to your knowledge. Like, are your parents, is there any source of money coming into your house that is unaccounted for? No. Would it be something that your parents would engage in uh, gambling or not illegal much. or illegal drug activity? No. Well, not. I help my mother with all the bills and everything, and nothing. She never does it have like anything. How new was that basement? Like the setup of the basement. Graduated in two thousand four. We moved in in two thousand four. I believe we moved in for about a year, so I'd say either 2005 or 2006. They moved it. You guys we moved renovated. in it. They no, renovated. we renovated. Renovated. Yes. And um, and at that time, the basement was completed. Yes. Were your parents working at both at that time? When we first moved in in 2004, my father was an employee. Uh, he had got laid off from Magna. Yep. My mother had transferred up to a place in Newmarket. Um, then my father found the job at uh, where he's, he was currently working at uh, Kobe and Stell. And then I forgot the year. My mother got laid off, I believe in 2008 or so. And she's been looking for a job and been at home. Now, um, after talking to Daniel, and when's the last time you, you, you text message or communicated with him? It was when my grandfather was ill. Have you, have you been experiencing anything what you would call in the last little while of any type of threats? Or threatening behavior. Yes. Tell me about that. Um, his, I don't. Well, he says it's just a friend, but everyone says it's his girlfriend. Um, she has messaged me, telling me to back off, to leave Daniel alone. And he's messaged me, and he's like, "Is that you calling?" But I wasn't calling, or I'd be on the phone with him, and he's like, "Your other, yeah, my Rogers line," because. I uh, called him on the the phone that he gave me. Yes. And he'd say that my Rogers line was calling him. And when I looked into it, it was like on the on my bills. Those phone calls were made, but I know I didn't make them. So I, w I couldn't explain it. And I did get uh, a letter in the mail saying that uh, you're a dead person walking. Now, why didn't you tell me about that last when I spoke to you the other day? I, everything had just happened. I wasn't. It was it just simply a letter? Yes, it was uh, cut out. Where is that letter? It's garbage. It's in the garbage. Yes. I didn't think too much of it at that time. And what did you equate it to? Just jealousy. You still are equating it to the, f the friend or the girlfriend? Well, I don't want to, like, I don't know 100%, so I don't want to point fingers. Why, so if you're not 100% and you don't want to point fingers, why do you believe it's her? Because she has personally messaged me on Facebook telling me that I'm stupid and to back off and to leave Daniel alone. Okay. And sometimes when I text him, um, she texts me using his phone, telling me that he's with his girlfriend, Christine, and to leave him alone. The, um, is there something that happened to you that you never disclosed to the police before? Um, 
That is something I lied to him about. Okay. Tell me about that. Um, I told him I was raped, but I was just very depressed and... Sorry, this is very embarrassing. Um, don't, don't, you haven't reported it to the police, right? This is a, this is an interaction between you and an ex-boyfriend, okay? So you're, you're not in any trouble for this, and it's okay. important that we clear it up because he's telling us stuff, yes. and then we're, we're coming back to you, so. Yes, but this is something I lied to him about. Okay. Um, and why did, and you say you were depressed, and, and when did this happen? When did this, when did you tell him about this? Maybe a year ago. A year ago. And what was it that you told him? That um, someone came to the door, and when I went to open the door, uh, they pushed me down and raped me. Did they? Did you give descriptions? Did you provide descriptions to them about it? To him about it? I might have. I, I don't remember exactly what I said. Okay. Um, but you're telling I, me to my face that this never happened. This never happened. Okay, so it's not, this isn't something that we need to be looking at as something that's tied to this. No, this is, that was my lie to him. Okay. For attention, is Now, did he, what did he, what was his reaction to that? Report it. But it wasn't real, so I didn't report it. Okay. Now, um... Would, did, Dan, did you ever? Would did you ever have a, a figure if Danny, if Daniel stopped being a drug dealer or engaged, in, or is he still dealing with that? Again, this is not criminal. It's more in lines of, you know, what would link someone to think that they're coming to your house for a large quantity for money, which is I, an obvious question. I don't. I've asked him what he's up to, and he just says running, like doing runs. But I don't ask him into detail. So when he says he's doing runs, you're equating that to he's running, still running drugs. Running errands, running drugs, seeing people, I... You just didn't ask him? I just kind of went blind ear because I'm not with him. Okay. Did you ever receive, um, again, coming from, we're going to ask it, did you ever receive any other type of threatening text messages that, you know more than just words of what a person says, uh, you know, don't see him or don't... Did you ever re receive anything that was... Threatening? You know, yeah. I did get um, some, but I couldn't... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It said that we have people that can erase this message. Um, but it was just words. It was just, just stay away. What were the words? Just stay away. Stay away. Chris, Chrissy and Danny go one, one life, one destiny or something like that. So it was more in line with Danny and this, more in line with the just relationship. Just pretty much just leave, like, for me to stay away. There was never any threat to you, threat to you uh, from any other anonymous. Re it always seems to you to have the air of Danny's girlfriend or friend that's sending these threats. Just... He says that it's not her, but from the, all the messages are pretty much just to leave him alone so he can be happy. Okay. But there's no, uh, there's no phone number that these things are coming back from? No. Being sent from? No. Um, did you like, ever... I know it's absurd, but I couldn't explain it. No, I, well, I don't... I, I, uh, with the technology today, uh, a anything is possible. I'm, I'm not. A, I'm not. I'd never be able to s to look you in the face and say that's not possible because uh, th th what kids can do with computers and do with technology, I, I, I you know, a anything in my opinion is now possible. But it was just words. It was never more than that. Anything to the effect of seeing bang, bang, bang. Mm. To me. Yes. No. Are you aware of someone else getting a message like that? Daniel said that he got messages saying, fun, 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 bang, bang, bang. And what did he ever equate that to? Did he tell you? He just said these messages basically kept telling him to make sure I stayed away from him and to make uh, that girl happy. Okay. And that they knew what he was up to. They even said that they knew, like, what are like I'd text him something and for some reason they knew that I texted him and that they knew that I called him stuff like that
Do you have, um, have you ever received other than that letter? That other thing I also made up, the bullet in the mail. That made, I made that up. And how long ago was that? Just a few months ago. Okay. And was that an attention grabber for him again? Yes. You still have feelings for Daniel, don't you? Yes. Okay. So you're having trouble with that. You're having trouble getting over the fact that the relationship is over. Uh, because I've, of the I've, terms of how it happened. I've accepted that, that it's over, but I still want to take care of him. Yeah. But unfortunately, I made a decision and I need I had to stick by it. Your relationship with Daniel was broken up because of your parents' ultimatum, not because you didn't care for him anymore. Yes. That's, that's an obvious p what you can say, right? Because yes. you still have feelings and you're still trying to trigger him with the bullet. You know, even just that... that are these te text messages you're receiving, are they fictitious? Are you making that up? No. A hundred percent? Yes. Okay. Now, the letter you received, is it fictitious or did you make it up? Or, or sorry, is it fictitious or is it real? It's real. It's real. And but how, sorry? No, it just happened like before most of this stuff happened, so I just brushed it aside. Okay, so it happened before what most of what stuff happened? Most of, like, before I knew about her and before I knew, like, before she messaged me ever. Okay. Now, how often did you use this other phone? You said you said it was back when your father, that's the last time you used it. But how many times would you, you know, like, from the last Maybe year? Maybe, like, half? once a day. Once a day? Or usually, um, yeah, once a day. Who was paying for that? Daniel. Daniel was paying for that. Um, so the the uh, incident, those two incidents that you made up, the bullet and the and the yes. uh, the being raped, those yes. never happened. No. Is there anything else you can think of in this? Were you dating anyone else? Did you see anyone else during these during during no. this year and a half no. layoff? No. Uh, dating, no. 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 I just I saw Adrian because he came he came over. But I wasn't seeing him like romantically or anything. Um, I saw just my uh, tight knit group of friends, which are uh, my girlfriend's Topaz. Topaz. Yes. Topaz's last name. Chu. Topaz Chu. Uh, her husband Chihei Tong. And where? Okay, we won't say where they live because it's being videoed. But I need to get an idea. If we haven't spoken to him, we'd like to speak to them. Okay. Who else? Um. Adrian Chung, he lives in, uh, he lives away, but sometimes he comes into town and he'll come to my house and ask my parents to take me out just for a coffee to catch up about half hour and then he takes me back home. Okay, that's that's three. Who else is tight? Adrian. Um, Adrian, who uh, we Adrian talked about Tim, earlier. Tim Tinkovitz. Tinkovitz, you've spoken to, yes. we've spoken to already. Edward. Uh, Pacific, Pacific Door. And, and yeah. so he's in that loop of tight net friends? Uh, no, he's. Uh, separate. Okay. Who else is in this other tight knit group of friends? Um, well, we're it tight, but I don't speak to them often. Um, Cecilia Pang and uh, Jerome. We fall in and out like periodically, like maybe a couple months where we talk almost every week, and then sometimes we go a month or two without talking. Jerome Liu. Okay. Um. So that's Adrian, Adrian Topaz, Chihei. Cecilia, myself, and um, there's one more, uh, Carson. Uh, I forgot his last name. Uh, he's more like a fur. He, him and myself aren't that close, but he does hang around all of us. If we go to, um, for example, when my friend had a baby, we were all there together. Now, what about, again, a Apologize for the name, okay. Gary Gibson Gibbons or uh, Gibson. 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 Yes. Um, uh, where is he in this? I haven't talked, spoken to him in a long time. I'd say about a year. But prior to that, uh, we spoke quite a bit. Um, yeah. But he was your link to Danny, right? To uh, get to yes. Danny to drop you off. Well, he he spoke to he'd call Daniel if I like if he didn't answer my calls and um, we, we hung out on our own as well. What do you know about Daniel's girlfriend, Christine? Um, the only thing I know is that she's living with her father. 
Um, when we were in high school, uh, she lost her mother. Um, I believe she has a child, and I don't know where the father is in that. Okay. Um, Daniel's told me that, this is just what Daniel's told me, that uh, she's going through a custody battle, and uh, that every time I ask him, like, are you, what are you doing? He's like, making runs with Christine. So. Making runs with Christine? Yes. And I'm sorry, when you say uh, what runs, would you know, for me listening to making a run, are you making, would you draw the inference that that's back to the drug business? I would, but I kind of, I didn't go more into that. Don't go more into it. What do you, what do you take that as, as just hearing it at face value? That he was going to meet somebody for drugs or... And Christine's along for the ride? I was told, like in his words, that he was the one taking her to go see people that she knew. That she knew? Yes. Okay. And that everything was at her house or something like that. Okay. I want you to sit tight. Do you want me to get you some water? Yes, please. Okay. I want you to sit tight. I'm just going to go talk to uh, to Deborah. She's Deborah Gladding. She's been monitoring. I'm also going to talk to the primary investigator. Okay. Um, we're going to get you some water. And, and we're sort of moving through this. This is great. Okay. I appreciate the fact that you're honest with me to tell me that these things were made up. Okay. It's, it's very important. I can't lie, right? And... You can't because it, it, it well if you're if you were raped and you received bullets, those are some pretty significant threats, right? I understand. Okay. Um, there was also one other thing. Yeah. Um, we were getting private phone calls. Um, at my house as well. I did never told my brother because he was at school. Yeah. Um, when we picked up, they'd always hang up. And one time, my father had picked up. And like I said, Mondays, my mother would go dancing. Yes. And when this one time I picked up the phone, my father was already on the phone, and there was this woman on the other line, and I don't know who it was. And in, they were speaking Chinese, which is a little bit off for me because my father's Chinese isn't, isn't his first language. Okay. And uh, my father doesn't even know I, I was on the line. Um, but this woman was saying, you have to come over right away. Right away, you have to come now. And my father kept saying, I can't come over. No. And she's like, I don't care, you have to come now. Um, like I said, he still does, to this day doesn't know that I heard that conversation. And um, he, when he went uh, down the stairs to see me, because I was in the main, on the main floor, he was upstairs when he answered the phone. He was like, I'm going to go, and uh, my cousin Michelle, um, she said, I'm going to go to Michelle's house to, I believe their tap was running, or he had to, he's a handyman yeah. with the housework, so uh, they asked him to fix it, but I believe, I don't remember where they were, but they were out, and I remember because I was, uh, I believe this is during the summer. Of this so, past year, 2010? Yes, like yeah. summer of 2010, and... Uh, me and Michelle, we went to we go to the gym together. So uh, she had mentioned that day that she had. I I'm sorry, I, I don't remember what, but she had an errand to run with her mother, and I was like, I think it was a doctor's appointment or something. And I told my dad that I believe they're out, they're not home, and he's like, I'm gonna go. So he left, and when he left, um, I had called my my aunt had. I believe my aunt had called me back or I had called her. Somehow we connected with each other. And they said that he, uh, they were not home yet, but they're on their way. They would be there in about a half hour. By the, my father never came home. And my father says he was driving around their block, waiting for them. But when I confronted him, I said, uh, I thought they were, uh, they said that they weren't home. And he's like, I was driving around the block. But when I had, I'd, didn't know how to process this and so I confided in Michelle when we were at the gym and she said that when she came home she did drive because uh, they have um, her garages in the back of her house mm -hmm. so there's like a streetway that's just garages and when my father goes over he likes to use the back door and knocks on the door in the back door because it's convenient because everyone's in the back of the house usually with the kitchen 
Um, so she said that she ran, like she drove in two circles before, and she drove around to check before uh, she went in. But my father was never there. Does Did and Michelle speak Chinese? Yes. Um. Yes. Yes, she does. This is your aunt? This is your cousin, is Michelle? Yes, my cousin Michelle. Yes. And your aunt's name is? Uh, Huida. Huida Le. And uh, so, did was your father ever at that house? Eventually, he, she said that he did come over, and he helped them out and came back home. But when you listened on the phone line, did you recognize the female as being Michelle? Or, or it was mom? not. It was not her and her mother. I know that, but it was a voice I've never heard before, a lady's voice that I've never heard before. And um, like I said, these phone calls were happening periodically, but every time we answered, they they'd hang up on us. Meaning you or your mom? Yes, because my mother and I had voiced it, and my my. We, we voiced it. And uh, a few days later, I was home by myself, and I got a private call. And I didn't hear them click, like hang up clicking. So I yelled in Chinese, do not call this number ever again. And they called probably once after that and never returned. Like, the private call stopped. And so when did this stop? When did this happen? And when is, you said the summer like, is when that By happened. the end of the summer. The summer, so August, September? Like... Late August, early September. And is this the to the house line? Yes. And what's the house line phone number? Nine zero five four seven seven three eight six seven. Okay. Okay. Sit tight. Is there any other any other incidents that jog your memory? Any other boyfriends in between this time period? No. Okay, sit tight. Let me get you some water. Let me ask some questions, okay? If you want to stand up and walk around, I understand. It's not. We're not telling you to sit tight literally, but it may be a couple of minutes, okay? Um, okay. What, did you need to go to the washroom? No, I just, I don't like being by myself right now. I'm going to leave the door open a little bit, okay? Okay. Is that, does that work for you? Okay. And remember, right through that glass, you can actually, I don't know, see her, but that's where oh. she's sitting. So she, you're mm -hmm. actually, you're, you're just, in, she's just in another room, but she's a part of this room. Okay. Okay. Okay, so everything. 
Okay. All right. Do you, do, do you need a bathroom break? Yes, please. Okay. Let me just clear the hallway, and then I'll escort you out, okay? stand around here? Do you want to just wait out here or do you want to just wait inside? But you can just stand up. It's up to you. I'm just, uh... Okay, we'll just wait by the door then. That's fine. You could... Can... Or not. Sorry, I'm just a little rattled. Okay, yeah. You're doing fine. I'm just trying my best. You're doing good. You're doing good. hungry? No. No? The uh, choices I've made have haven't been the best, but yeah. it's just... You know what? It's just part of life. I mean, it's, it's you know, I mean, we have to, we learn, and, you know, I mean, making mistakes or making mistakes, and... Be honest, it's just that. Some of those things. Uh, mm -hmm. Instead of just saying some of those things, like my parents don't know yet, so it's just. You know what? Can't worry about that. Yes. 
Close the door too much, okay? I'm just going over everything in quick pieces and hmm? I'm just I'm just going it through everything and I just it's just like pieces here and pieces there and I don't I don't wanna say something wrong or like just because I think I'm overthinking everything and it's just like yeah. Well I don't think you can I mean, the truth is the truth, right? It's not, you know, and it's not going to be wrong. No. Okay, it's, it, it is, it is what it is, and, um... No, it doesn't, like, with the details and everything, like, it's just... I want to get it right so, like, everything could be... Everything could be right. Okay. But it's just, like, it's pieces and... Yeah, but, I mean, the, you know, you know all the pieces are going to... They're, they're all going to come together, and you're... It's, all gonna fit, right? Because what you're gonna be, what you're saying is the truth. I'm just trying to, like, every time I think of those things, it just it gets me all worked up. But I have to think about it. But I don't, I don't want to. As in, like, it just it brings back all everything. Okay. And that's gonna happen for a little bit, though, too. You realize that, right? I that know. That's gonna happen. It's just, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, I did it. I don't want to do it again. Yeah. I mean, even when you least expect it, even, you know, it's it's going to happen. And now it's just like, he's asking me these questions like I should have. I should have. I don't know, it's like maybe I should have been more, like, attentive. Like, it just happened so fast. Mm -hmm. And it's like, he's asking me, like, shoes and everything and yeah I, I can't give them the answer because I don't know well, like, and, 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 that, and that's right you're right and we don't expect you to you know you don't want to make up something no I'm not because not you know you want I, you, you I wish I was able to answer 
like I want to be able to answer it so it'd be not easier but it's it help yeah but if you don't know you don't know really that's that's the bottom line if you don't know you don't know I don't I mean, know. Who are we to say, because we weren't there, you, you're the one that's going through this. We're not there. So, you know, and like Randy was saying, what you remember back then, you know, you've had a couple of days, and, you know, things start to come back in your mind. It does, you know, it's, it happens. So don't be too hung up on, oh, well, I didn't remember, oh, I should have remembered, oh, why couldn't I remember? Don't. So it makes me feel like I should have. No. Honestly, I'm still like beating myself up like I should have. No, don't do that. You don't like, you know, you, there's no apologies needed. There's no, there's none of that. There's none of that, Jen. You don't need to, to be beating yourself up. Okay. This is some heavy duty stuff. I mean, this is, uh, you've been through, you've been through something that, you know, is very traumatic. Do you get a hold of Julia? No, I haven't, still haven't heard yet. Haven't heard. I kind of want to be here if you need me right on the uh, right on the go. So, but you know, what, once once I'm able to to touch base with her again, I'll do I'll do that. And, and I know that she'll get in touch with you. I'm trying to use there anything else, like... Is there anything else you can? You know what you've no, I, I'm. Just, it's just like going over again. And it's like okay. It'll be, just wait till Randy comes back, and you know what? If he has some other questions for you, he'll he'll ask them.
Is that your breast plate? <laughs> Is that your chest that you're doing that against? It's a thing you um, do. It's embarrassing. <laughs> uh, when I when I lose control, I the only thing I feel I can control is what I feel. Okay. No, oh, I just so I just I heard the sound. That's oh. what it was. Like a, a, it was a sound that drew my attention. So.
Everything we said here today was confidential here, right? Sorry? Everything I said here today was just confidential to here, right? Just confidential to I here? Don't know, I don't... Everybody knows that everyone perceives... I don't want to disappoint my mother. Like, I don't want to... Like I said, I haven't told her. Like, they don't know about that university stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't want <coughs> people who saw my mother as a good person to think wrongly of her. Okay, well, what you're saying in here is not going to go anywhere. Because everyone says she's such a good mom. Yeah. I don't want that to change okay. because of my decisions and my actions. What you're saying in here is is within the confines of this police station and, and our investigation. So it's not, you know, that's not something that we would release out to the public. Okay. Did you hear from the coroner's office? I didn't, no, no. If there's another officer that did, another detective that um, did, I can, I haven't spoken to him yet. Have they been able to find out anything? And that, I don't know. Ten, I don't, I don't know. Um, when Randy comes back in here, you can ask him all, and ask him those questions, and as well, he's not the lead investigator on this. He, we, there is a different individual that's the lead investigator. So, if you've got some questions, I'll certainly try to answer them, and and then we can take it from there. But I don't want to give you information that is not correct. So I just want you know, if there's something specific that you want to know. No, like, do they have any, like, leads or suspects, or did anyone say where the car went yeah. after? Or? And that, that I don't know, so that would be something that, you know what, I'd have to find out for you. Because, like, is there any, anything? That yeah, I know, I know, you have a lot of it, a lot of questions, you have a lot of questions, and, and I can't, I don't know the answers for you. It just feels like I'm answering questions but you're not giving a lot you're not getting a lot of answers right now yeah The waiting. Yes, <laughs> I can understand. I don't like it either. Like if he's here, he can ask me. I can give him anything I can think of. But mm -hmm. I know.
Are you? Do you want something to eat? I'm starving. I don't know about you. I don't know how you can go without. I can get you something to eat. Even if it's a bagel. Okay. But you're feeling a little lightheaded. Do you want some chips or something like that? Do you need some junk food? You sure? <sighs> what can I get you? If you could eat something right now, what would it be? I'm not hungry. <laughs> yeah, but you're lightheaded. Maybe you should sit down a little bit too, okay? You've been doing a lot of pacing. Maybe you need to just sit down for a bit. If you need something with some sugar in it just to give you some energy. Okay. I heard your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it, but it's just... No, it's your stomach saying you're hungry. Do you want a candy bar? No, I'm okay. Sorry? More water? I'm okay.
Hi, Jennifer. Hey. Here. Take some Kleenex. Take some Kleenex. Tell me what you're feeling right now. What's going on? You might as well get used to this. You've got to get it out. So tell me what you're feeling right now. I'm just got to think. If it makes me feel like I should have... It's a thing called survivor's guilt, okay, that you're going to go through. You're gonna, you're gonna, need, and this is like the, the, the stuff about the therapy and, and getting to speak to someone because there's stages of grieving that you're gonna go through, okay? And this is the only way you're gonna go through this is with properly is with help. I think victim services is engaged, right? They're, they're trying to help you, so just stick with that. Okay, it's a long road, but it's, it can be a very successful road, okay? And, and uh, what you're feeling, I hate to say, is normal, but it is. It's something that a lot of people who are in the same circumstance will feel. Okay, but I, what I want to do is I want to finish off on this so that we can let you go and get and, and get, get out of the police station. Okay, because I appreciate your time and I appreciate your help. So, what is in the safe? Um, the last time. I opened it, my mom took out our passports. And I, I, she's the, she has the combination, I don't have the combination. You don't have the combination for the safe? No. Just your mom? Just my mom. Okay, and so there was passports, no large quantities of cash in there? Mm. Not that I, not that I know of, because okay. uh, she asked me to help pay for our two trips. Okay. <laughs> and what did you get? The, what did you have the two thousand dollars for? What did you? Where did you make that money? I had. I was saving up to get a new cell phone. Do you have a BlackBerry? I gave it to Daniel. Okay. My the, brother gave it to me from his friend. But you have so the BlackBerry is it in your name that you've given no. to Daniel? So is Dan? It was yours, and you've given it to my, Daniel. My brother's friend didn't. It was an old BlackBerry, and my brother's friend gave it to him, and I gave it. I gave it to Daniel. When did you give it to Daniel? Um, I gave it to a friend to give to Daniel. How long ago? A couple, maybe a week. A week ago. A week, uh, maybe a week and a bit. What's the pin? command for that you know do you have a personal identification number for security reasons have you ever been given that by by blackberry no no there's there's no lock that i know of. okay so um daniel is was and likely still remains to be a drug dealer self-admitted uh, when he was in the air the other day now, so stepping back from that is, I had asked you is prior to the incident, when's the last time you spoke to Daniel? What I should have said to you is, when is the last time from today for, back that you spoke to Daniel? When is the last time you met with him and spoke with him? I saw him here yesterday when I was leaving. Did you talk to him? Just briefly. You didn't see him or talk to him any other times other than right here in the police station? And if I told you that Daniel says that you spoke to him, you did have a conversation with him somewhere else? He would be lying? The last time I spoke to him was when he asked for the Blackberry. And that was a week ago? Yes, because my grandfather had just, he was in the hospital and I snuck over and dropped it off for a friend at his paintball place. And who is the friend that you gave it to? I only know his first name, uh, Hessen. Hessen? 
And where's the paintball place? Uh, Victoria Park and McNichol. Right at Victoria Park and McNichol? Uh, between McNichol and Steeles on Victoria Park. When there's a lot of people, remember I told you about the media? They're bad. They can be very bad when they start to sniff around and they, they sense something. And I can tell you that the media is portraying that this was supposed to be some sort of drug-related, that you guys weren't a random target, that you were a targeted house because of drug activity. What would you say to that? I don't deal the drugs. Okay. Tell me more about that. You don't deal the drugs. Are you involved in the transportation and distri no. distribution? No. Have you ever been with Danny? This is something that's very important. Have you ever been with Danny when Danny's doing that? He normally leaves me with a friend and says he's going out with his friend. And, like, normally. When is that normally? How that long? was three, four years ago. Three or four years ago. Was he dealing with big quantities? That you, were you aware of it? Honestly, I I wanted nothing to do with it, so I refused to know what he was doing. Okay, and the times that you snuck out and spoke to him, how many times a month up until the last time you handed the, the BlackBerry? Once a week. You'd see him once a week? Well, prior to this, I'd only see him once a month because I went away to, uh, twice with my family. Yeah. So I wasn't able to... Uh, go anywhere I was out with them so this month I've only seen him twice this month I mean October I saw him twice in October and you but you text you said you text message him every day once you, you, at least once more a day. or less um, you know and that could be a string of, of text messages right it's not just hey how are you doing fine and that's the end of the text message you'd be a string of communication how you were texting him. it was you'd just be where are you at are you at work how are you and miss you or what are you doing today and the so w when you go out and see him for once during the time once once a week i i tell my parents that i was going to class yes and before class or after class i'd go buy him lunch and bring it by his work and sometimes i would see him and sometimes i'd just give it to a co-worker to give to him and how long when you see him how long would you see him for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, because he was working. Uh, when you weren't, when he wasn't working and you were able to get out and see him, how that long? That hasn't happened in a long time. And how long's a long time? The last time I saw him outside of that was when Gary picked me up and I got caught by my parents. And that was, I'd say, a year, if not a year and a half almost. And why, why did he want your BlackBerry? He said that he had sold his BlackBerry, so he needed a phone. And that BlackBerry, what, like, I'm, I'm kind of confused. Is Was that an active phone? No. Because now we're talking Which? about three phones now. We're or we got a SIM card, we got the phone that your parents know you have, and you got a BlackBerry up until a week ago. Yes. So The BlackBerry is what I was using with my own Roger SIM card. The phone I'm using now was an old phone that I no longer used. Okay, so because the reception was no good. The BlackBerry was your normal phone that yes. you were using on a regular basis. Yes. And um, and you would switch SIM cards. If so, if you were going to communicate with him with the other SIM card, you'd put the SIM card in that BlackBerry and talk to him through that. I had an iPhone. That you had I an kept, iPhone. I kept in my room that my parents didn't know about, because um, my brother, I had one that Daniel gave me earlier, but it broke. Yeah. So my brother, he, what he did was he fix the part so he can have one that he used himself but uh, the one I had wasn't fully functioning it was just able uh, it had no internet access on it so I just kept it for phone calls and I kept it hidden and where is that phone now it should be still on my in my room yes where uh, I believe it was on my laptop table or something or on my counter and it doesn't have a sim card in it right now no, I don't keep the SIM card in it just in case my parents asked. Okay. So there's an iPhone on by your desk, on your desk, somewhere yes. in that in your room. Yes. And um, 
the Rogers, the, I mean, the blackberry that you had had up until a week, and it went to Daniel, and, and for what reason it went to Daniel? He had a black, another, a newer blackberry, but he said someone wanted to buy it, like a friend of his wanted to buy it, and that he needed a phone temporarily. So, so I, he took your phone. So I, I had another phone as well, so I said, okay, I'll lend you this one. So um, it sounds as if you couldn't let Danny go. Like you're, you're still there. You're still hoping. The hope isn't much, but. But it, you're still hoping. I still can. You're not. You're not walking away from him, right? You haven't walked away from him, even with the comments that you've received. These comments from. I had, and then. But. I had for a while. I disappeared from him for a while, but I needed. It was just he. He's that calm that he can he can make me calm, so I reached back out to him. So is the is it you instigating all the communication, or does he reach back? Does he start? He reached back as well. Okay. Now you have to figure. As I said, the media can be horrific in some cases, and I I had told you not to read or pay attention to the news. No. And I know for a fact that in one of the newspapers. But the angle that's being portrayed right now is that this was a drug, that you guys were um, uh, not a random but a targeted residence because of drug-related activity. You and your family were engaged in drug-related activity. Now, is it possible that Danny, that you are being mistaken somehow as being involved in his life and that angle of things. Well, I haven't been around his life for a while, like going out with him. But I wouldn't say it's completely out of the question, but I haven't, I don't, I don't go around with him when he's doing that kind of stuff. I, I don't like it and I refuse to be a part of that. And now what do you say about Chris, the, the comment about Christine and the running are I kind of took a blind eye to that, I guess. But it, are, are you, is, it, is it your understanding that she may be not only part of it, but linking him to the people involved in this activity? And because, like I told you, he gives me that answer, and I kind of take a blind eye. But if I were to tell you what I thought of what was that, I would think that she, she also has her own thing going her own business. Does because, she work for a living? Uh, what I know of her is that uh, I think he mentioned that she worked at No Frills but it wasn't like she didn't work often. Like I think he, he mentioned that she doesn't have a job once but I know she worked for No Frills. I don't know if she still does. Um, Which No Frills do you know? Unfortunately I'm, I'm not sure. Do you know what area of, of town or where she lives? She lives at Mid Midland and Steeles. At Midland and Steels? Yes. On the Markham or Scarborough side? On on, on the Mar uh, Scarborough side. On the Scarborough side. And Christine, you don't know her last name? Felipe. Felipe? What's um, that? What nationality is she? Filipino. Filipino. Um, and how old is Christine? I, I only know she's older than me. I'm not sure if she's his age or older. I'm not sure. Did he ever say where he met her? We all, we all went to the same high school. And they also... Uh, yeah, they all, we all went to the same high school. What school was that? Mary Ward. Mary Ward? Yes. Now, how would you feel if, you know, like, Daniel is the one who's, through, through whatever activity that he's engaged in and you've been around but not necessarily having an understanding because you're seen with him, that he's brought this back to you? I don't know if that's in fact happened. I'm trying to find a rhyme or reason for why your house was targeted. I'm still trying to figure out how they got in your house. Like you didn't hear, you didn't hear a doorbell. You didn't hear a door knock. You didn't hear a door kicked in. You didn't. I was. I said I was watching no, TV on the phone. I. I don't know how. Yeah, I, I. I know we went over that back and back and forth. We don't know how. 
So somehow they got into your house by getting through your mom down on the lower level, right? Because she's the only one who's down she's there. She's the only one down there. So it's very confusing. Um, we do have surveillance cameras from the area, right, that explain that will hopefully, but it's, that's, you know, that's still a work in progress. Um, but generally, random events are not, in most cases, random. There's a rhyme or reason why they've come to your house. But from what you've told me inside the house, the only thing that you hear them saying to you is they're looking for money. They're not looking for a specific quantity of money? No. Do you ever hear number one telling number three about the quantity of money that he's recovered? No. I don't hear that. All the comment you hear from number one really is, is, is it's time to go. It's, we've been here too long. We've been here too long. Yes. And number three was the one that says, was, was my father and all I could, what I heard from him was basically, where's more? You're lying. So you're telling me that you, you had no involvement in what happened meaning not saying how the outcome came, but you you had no involvement in, in any type of illegal activity that would have drawn you or the attention of you to have bad people come to your house looking for large sums of money. You're not involved in this any which way. Because the question obviously stands, Jennifer, is you're upstairs and they're downstairs. No. Right? So it's a natural concern when, why would they leave you alone? Why would they not do the same to you? You can't answer that question? The only thing I can say is he said I cooperated. The but I asked him to take me. The number one guy? Mom. The number one guy said you cooperated. Okay. There's no, you had no threats. And again, we're back to the fact that you admittedly lied. Okay, not to me, right? No. Not to me. No. You admittedly lied. You've lied to your parents, right? About going to school. You've lied to, to Danny about being, Daniel about being raped and about receiving a bullet. Who's to say this whole thing isn't a lie? that what you're telling me is a lie. Because if you are lying, it's the most cold-blooded thing that I have ever oh my faced God. in my life. <laughs> there is nothing that you've said to me today is a lie. And I, I want to... They want to just put a little preamble. Not, nothing in here that you might have mistaken because of order of events. I'm saying to you right now, is there anything throughout the course of your statement today where you've lied to me? From your interaction with Danny, Daniel, from your... I'm not involved in drugs and I don't have anything to do with them and we don't have large sums of money. What about life insurance policies? Do your parents have life insurance policies? I I think I I don't know. You don't I know, know they had a they had a I I have one of myself. Yes. And uh my mom uh, they used to have one for me when I was younger. But uh, half of that went to education, half went to uh, life insurance. And when they found out I, I, uh, I didn't go to university, they, they asked for the money back. So hang on a second here. You told, to me that, you told me that they never knew you didn't go to university. When did they find out that you didn't go to university? I told them that I graduated, but I never went to university. 
that I went for two years, but I never finished. Okay. And they wanted the money back as a result of that? Yes. So you did actually tell your parents somewhat of the truth that you never went to university, or, but it's, it's half-truths. Yes. So back to this line is um, where we're talking about the fact that uh, of the line, right, is that it's... I don't deal the drugs. I don't associate with that. Okay. I honestly, I don't. Now, back to another very difficult question. But if I don't ask it, I'm going to be, you, it's an obvious one. The resentment that you had, that you may have had towards your parents for the interference in your relationship and your life and essentially locking you down in your house. At the end of the day, I love my parents and I chose to be with them. And if I wanted to I could have just left but I didn't I wanted to stay with them and take care of them so this wasn't some evil plot that you thought up to oh my god no no interaction no belief no you didn't have anything to do with this thing at all whatsoever no. you don't engage in illegal activity no because you know that it'll be very easy it, it will be a very easy thing to discredit you on right we're, we're in the process of trying to add credibility to what you tell us, and that's through the process of asking people and doing whatever. Through that same process, it will be very easy to find the flaws in what you've said, which again then turns the focus back to you. Okay? I don't it's a natural progress. It's a natural thing that investigators do. We eliminate people or we draw our attention to them. It's a natural uh, thing. It's, a, it's not brain surgery. Okay? What did you talk to Michelle about? Did you talk to Michelle last night or the day before that you were coming about talking to the police? I just asked her how she was feeling because she was nervous. And what did you tell her? Just tell the truth, tell you what you know. And the threats that you, you say that you've received, the threats that you've talked about are the same threats that you're mentioning from the text messaging. They're not really... You, did you receive any life-threatening, or are they basically to stay away from... Just the email saying, the, the messages saying, stay away. From Danny? Yes. Okay, I heard a knock on the door. Get, bear with me.
anyone come in?
Okay, we're, we're, we're done, essentially. <sighs> How are you feeling? Sorry, you really scared me. Did I? What did I scare you about? Sit down. Sit down and, and t take a load off. Tell me how. Tell me how you're feeling, and how I scared you. I don't want you walking away from here thinking I'm evil. I want you to walking around from here thinking that this guy is helping investigate my mom's murder, and he's going to turn over every stone possible to make sure that we catch the people who do that. That's what I want you feeling. So I don't want you walking away from here thinking that I'm a, I'm, I scared you, or I'm, I'm a bad man. Sometimes we have to ask very, very difficult questions, but it's my job, okay? And you would expect that from me. And it's not you're not the only person that we're asking this stuff of, right? But you're the most obvious person that we have to ask this stuff to. And there's, it's just, it's just the way we operate. It's the way we have to operate. It's a tough job to to, the, to deal with someone's murder. And there's some very bad people, and there's some very tough questions that need to be asked. So you have to, I hope you understand that. I understand that. It's just. It's hard to take. Have you lied to me? No. No? You haven't lied to me about anything? I said whatever I could to help. Okay. So. If you've always told the truth, the truth will never hurt you. It may get you into a bit of trouble, right? The truth can get you into trouble if you've done some things wrong. But generally, in most cases, if you tell the truth, you'll always be fine. So that's that's the avenue. That, that That's the avenue you have to think about. And, and what you, I can always, I never do anything wrong if I tell the truth. And if I've made, if I've said some things that are lies or... I've held something back because I think it might hurt me. Those are the things that will cause people to look at you more intently. Because the question is, is why would that person do that to me? They've got something to hide, right? So, you know, the fact that you've lied to your parents over a long period of time, the fact that you've lied about to Daniel about those other two events, you know, those are disturbing. But I don't live in your shoes, and I would never judge you on that fact. But from an outsider looking in, to have to live under those conditions, to have to lie continually, you're going to ask the question, why? And if that's the way that you have to live, that's the way you have to live. But people will judge you on your lie. Right. So, is there anything else that you think that you can think of that might help help us? This one person who added me on Facebook. And I found it weird that he had added me out of nowhere. And I had looked in common friends and saw that he was friends with this girl, that girl, Christine. When I spoke to Daniel about it, I don't know if he told her or not. But I asked him, like, is she just casual friends with him, or is she good friends with him? And the day after I asked him this, they were no longer friends on Facebook. Who is this guy? What did he look like? Casey Law. I've never met him. Apparently went to high school as, as well, but I don't recall ever meeting him. And he kept asking me questions that, I don't know if it's just his personality, but he asked me questions that I thought were too abrupt to ask someone you just met. Like what? Give me an example. He asked if I had a boyfriend and if I 
was looking for a boyfriend and if I engaged in sex and things like that. So that's the kind of question he was, you know, provoking you. Casey Law, and did you recognize the name from school? Recognizable, but again, I don't remember ever even having a conversation with him. And uh, so he said he went to your school? Yes, but he was older than me. He's older than you. And um, what what does he look like? Chinese guy. Yeah. When I, when I talked to him, he said that he was uh, working like security. Okay. So that's that's on, on on things that strange things that have happened to you recently. That's that's it that you can think of is that that one and plus obviously the 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 stuff that was going on with Christine and the the ghost messages that you were receiving, right? From from these were numbers that didn't exist or they didn't have any. No, it was blocked. Blocked numbers. And when I called Rogers, they said that's not possible. For a text message to come in with a blocked number? Yes. Okay. So, um, you know that whatever you, everything you've told us has been under oath? Yes. You know that part of the, our job is, is to go back and look at what you've told us to try and match up to the reality of what we have, of evidence that we have, right? And you said you're, where you you said essentially nothing. You you didn't really change much from your first statement to your second statement, right? You've you've uh, you've explained more. We've we've covered off more. But is there anything in this course of these uh, that you think you want to change? Made me like now. I feel like I've said something wrong. You have not. I, I don't know if you said you have to me. You've no, said, no, I've said everything that I know that so, is true. Yeah, and I'm asking you is if from reflecting on what you've told me today, which is fairly consistent with the first statement, it's just there's more detail now. Is there anything in there from what you've been going down and what you think? Be, it should be right on the tip of your tongue. If you want to change something, it would be like. You know what? I, I said this, and I, I I really meant this. It's not something you've missed. It's something that you knowingly have said that you want to change, that you know was wrong, or could be taken wrong. Okay. Well, well, first thing, the school thing. Yes. I didn't go to university, but I told my parents that I went for a few years. Right. How long Just ago did you tell? How long did you tell them that? How long ago did they find out? I told them everything when I was going, I was seeing Daniel, and that. I only I told him I only went partial school. Okay. And I told him all. And all when months. was that? What year was that? When? How long ago? A year and a half ago. So is this when the ultimatum come down? Is after? The, is that at that point in time? The ultimatum came about a. Uh, there, there's always been ultimatums, like they always gave me a second. But the one that you made the choice where you were at, because you say that was about a year and a half ago too, is that part of when you came clean, to a certain extent. You say you came clean. Coming clean would be mom and dad. No, I didn't, I didn't I never come clean, to. but I came like when I when I said when I said what they know. And that was a year and a half ago. Yes. Okay. So there's one that you've we've clarified. Is there anything else that you can think of? Is there anything that? Like I, everything I said is what I said. That's like, all. I, that's all I know. Yeah, you but can't. But you're just making me feel like you're I'm. You're looking at me to for me to try and tell you what I think you've said was wrong. I don't know. I, I, I'm telling you that I'm. Um, I I've heard everything that you've had to say. I don't have this uh, uh, miraculous uh, TV ability that says I can pull out a chunk of this and say to you that portion's wrong. I can tell you from what you've told us, we're going to compare it with all the evidence we have and see how consistent it is. There's no way you're expected to be 100%. It's impossible. Okay? Eyewitnesses for every event we know are have, don't have the ability to recall everything. 
So that's why we ask you do to the best of your ability. My concern lies in the fact of your lying. Okay? You've come clean. You've never lied to me before. Right? I've never met you to be a liar. But the fact is, is that you've lied about stuff to Daniel. You've lied to your parents. So, could you be lying to me? I can't. Why couldn't you be lying to me? Because you're scaring me. Doesn't mean that I, you couldn't be lying to me, right? I don't know you. I've known you now for probably five hours intermittent. I hope you're not lying to me, right? That's all I can hope for. But the fact of the matter is, is that those three things are sitting there saying, you know, like, you have the ability to trick your parents for a long period of time. They just weren't in tune with what I was doing. Yeah. Very explainable. And I also weren't, li I wasn't living where you are. Right? And I'm, so I'm not going to prejudge you because I, people do what they need to do to survive. So it could very easily be justified as a survival mechanism. This is the best avenue that you saw it and you were stuck in it. Okay? But the fact is, is that my job is, is trying to get the root of a, of a very serious crime. And I have to explore every avenue that we possibly can. So I'm going to do everything in my power to either prove us as, as our police agency prove or disprove what you've told us the more we prove or can cooperate the more credibility you you have as as a witness okay that's going to happen we may even ask you to come back again again it will be not for you will not be explaining what happened in a grand scheme of things because you've done that up and down and backwards it may be for points of clarification okay because again we're speaking to we're going to be going and likely speaking to some of your friends and your relatives and it's just points of clarification it may not happen it, it may you know I'm only saying that it may I told you I didn't want to do the five and six and seven interviews with you well after today that's not going to happen but we may be contacting you to help us for some other points that we come across. Okay? Again, it goes back to your credibility. But I don't no one's gonna sit you down and crank you through um, the events unless you were involved in it. Right? And then I can't then all, all promises are all everything comes off. If you had some involvement in this then then I'm just saying all the all the rules. If you didn't have anything to do with this and you're telling me the truth, then we may be calling you to add, is this true what this person's saying that this way? And we may be asking you points like that. Okay? You, you're our only link. You're it. Until your dad regains his back and being able to be, be, be spoken to, right now you're our only link to this case. So we're, we may rely on you heavily on, until we can speak to your father. Okay? So don't be afraid. If you've told the truth, the last thing you should be afraid of is, is anything. If you've told the truth and you've been truthful through this whole process, then you're helping. You're doing your part. Okay? And don't be afraid of me. I'm just afraid because, you know, like, I know everything is just all pointing negatively right now and I, I don't understand why it's not all pointing negative and you know what you're, you're so you're misunderstanding things that you're thinking it's all negatively pointing anywhere it's not pointing anywhere right now we are still gathering and gathering and gathering there is no direction that we're there's nothing you are not a suspect in this in this investigation okay you're a witness and a victim of a crime I know but I'm just I'm just I feel that like the way you're you're speaking to me, it's kind of like, I know you said that you had to say those things, but it's yeah. it's here, and I've already said it to the special victims yesterday. But there's like ideas in my head, yeah, and I'm afraid to say it out loud. But ideas about speculation of what happened, or how it happened, ideas of why why wasn't I there. It, it, it's you, you, that, 
psychologically is an issue that you need to straighten out with counseling, okay? For you to speculate into the investigation as to why you weren't there, unless unless it's standing out, you, I believe you said in your opinion was is that they said I cooperated. You cooperated, right? And in uh, in a in a case that makes no sense, that could be the only sense that we get out of the investigation is that strange things happen, right? Strange things happen. So, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, at times, some of us have to point the finger, seem like we're pointing the finger, and it really is just to provoke you to see what you're going to do, how you're going to respond. Okay? So, it's only a question, and it ha it's been answered. And if you've been truthful, okay, you have nothing to fear. Absolutely nothing. Okay? <laughs> what do you want to say? that I got a phone call once and like I, I said earlier I don't know if you it, it was like zoned in but they contacted they said that they can make everything disappear and that's what I'm afraid of because you're asking me all these questions and I'm answering them truthfully but I'm afraid that well I, I can't answer them for you well there's some you know not your the technology exists you know um, there is some technology out there I'm sure that can make things disappear and I know that not everything is captured so you know we go back to interviewing someone else who may say yeah well she told me about this and uh, or I had similar things so there's other ways around it it's not this case isn't going to hinge on small inconsistencies Right? It's not going to hinge on someone. It's not the inconsistency. It's I'm afraid of what is out there. Because you, you shine a light that it could have been because of what he's involved in. Is, and it, if, is it not a possibility? I know. Like, you have given me that. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'm just like, I'm scared because it could be anybody out there. Right now, it could be anyone. And that's the reality of it. Right, we don't. We're the theories. We're, we're we're at the same position as you is speculating as to theories and and reasons why, and um, you can't be confined in your theories because you know if you're sitting here looking like this, you know at a small with the blinders on that this is, it's it's like this. We got to think at every possible way that it could th that this crime could have been happening, and you know saying that it could have been Daniel. Yeah, it could have been Daniel. Could have been in a random act. Yeah, it could have been a random. Could they have been targeted because of something did? Yeah, it could have been. We've got to explore them all. And then try and figure out which one, through motive and opportunity and means, was likely to have occurred. And hopefully we start to focus down on suspects. But right now, there's no fingers being directed at anyone. It's just I feel... That's what you're meant to feel. Okay. That's what you're meant to feel. But there's nothing right now other than what you told me about the changing uh, where you fixed it at the end about your I just wanted name. to clarify that. Yeah. Okay. So is there anything else? Not off the top of my head. So we're back to this last question that... Uh, comes back to is, is there anything else I should note uh, to understand your statement fully? And that's, again, is that this is where you'll drop in that I took five hits of acid before I, you're not on drugs, you're not uh, taking liquor, you're not taking any medication, you're, you, you voluntarily gave this statement and you did it having a full understanding of what you've told me? Yes? Yes. Okay, so the recorders are being shut off as we speak. The time...
All right, you can just have a seat over here. Come on in. Let's have a seat over here. Yep. Kind of odd in here. You have some stuff in the house over there. All right. So just to let you know right away, Jennifer, everything in this room is being videotaped and audio taped. Okay. okay. That's actually for your protection and mine. If anybody ever asks us what we talked about, it, there's a record of it, okay? Mm -hmm. So just for the record, it is the uh, 22nd of November, 2010. We're at the uh, five district station in the town of Markham. Uh, my computer right now says 2.39 in the afternoon, okay? Uh, just for the record, my name is Detective William Gates. You can just call me Bill here today. And what do you like to be called? Jen, Jennifer. Jen? Yeah. What do you prefer, Jen or Jennifer? Either. Either. Okay. So Jen, um, you're aware that the um, audio tape and everything's on. Um, it's the same as last time. Okay. You've been here on two other occasions, I understand, on the uh, 9th of November and I believe again on the 11th of November. Is that correct? Okay. And do you know why we're here today? Yeah, regarding what? Yeah. Oh, what happened at my home? Okay. And that happened, uh, there was a home invasion, for the record, there was a home invasion at your residence on the 8th of November 2010, is that correct? And uh, your residence is located at 238 Helen Avenue in the town of Markham, that's mm -hmm. correct? Okay. And as a result of that home invasion, um, your father uh, and Pam was actually shot and your mother, uh, Bika Pan, was actually killed. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, you'll have to speak up a little bit just so I can hear you. Sorry, yes. Okay. Uh, so that's what we're going to discuss here today. On previous occasions, um, a commissioner of OS has come in and you've sworn the uh, video statement, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And on those sworn video statements, you promise to tell the truth. Okay. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to have to get you to speak up or, or okay, pick it up. Yeah. And what was the, what was your understanding that if you did not tell the truth, what would happen? Unless there would be jail consequences? There could be. Okay. There are specific charges uh, for fabricating evidence uh, for public uh, mischief or obstructing police in a police investigation. You understand that, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so the same thing applies here today, okay? Um, that uh, if you were um, to make a false statement, um, if you were to lie to the police or mislead the police in an investigation, uh, you could be charged with those offenses of public mischief, uh, fabricating evidence, or obstruct police. Do you understand that? Okay. Then, of course, um, if you had anything to do with the actual homicide itself, uh, of course you could be charged with murder. you understand that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, do you understand what your rights are here today? Do you understand what your rights are here today? Everybody has rights. Do you know what your rights are? As a citizen, do you know what your rights are? That you don't have to speak to the police? They, they went through some things with you before. You don't have to give a statement if you don't want to. Do you understand that? No, I do. Okay. And it's your choice whether you give a statement or not? Do you understand that? That was on that form that they read out to you, and it said you, you, that it's your choice. Do you understand that, though? I do not. Okay, all right. Um, and what I tell everybody that I speak to is that all of our rights are guaranteed, and they're guaranteed under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which states that when a person's been arrested or detained, well, they must be advised their rights to counsel or rights to a lawyer. So first of all, you're not under arrest here, okay? You're not being detained. That door there, that's not locked. It's just closed to ensure our privacy. Okay? So if at any time you want to leave, please feel free to do so. Okay? 
If any time you want me to stop these proceedings, just say so and I will. If at any time you did want to speak to a lawyer, you just have to tell me and you can speak to a lawyer in private. We can phone a lawyer and you can speak to them privately on the phone. Do you understand that? Okay. Now, have you ever heard of legal aid? Well, okay. I've like the term. Yeah, you've heard the term before. Do you know what it means? Okay, so legal aid lawyers are lawyers available to give people free legal advice. Okay, and they're available 24 hours a day uh, for people uh, at a police station, and they're available to everyone. And these lawyers give people free legal advice. Okay, so that's another option available to you here today. Do you understand that? Yeah. And do you understand these rights? Yeah. Okay. And do you wish to speak to a lawyer? I'm well, I, I just advise people what the rights are, but I can't tell you that you should or you shouldn't. Okay, so that's fine. If you change your mind, let me know. Okay? Now, um, as discussed before, okay, in relation to this case, um, you don't have to say anything to the police in relation uh, to this murder, okay? Um, but whatever you do say may be given as evidence in court, okay? And if it had anything to do with you, that evidence could be used against you. Do you understand that? You just have to say yes or no. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, now, we've never met before, right? No. I just brought you from the front to the back here, yes. and we didn't discuss the case. No. no. Okay, so when, when I meet somebody for the first time, um, I have to let them know that I don't want what you've said to any other police officer in this case to influence you or make you feel like you even have to talk to me here today. Okay? And whatever you've said to date uh, to anyone about this case, you don't have to repeat that, nor do you have to say anything further. Okay? But whatever you do say, that may be given as evidence. Do you understand that? Okay. okay. Just tell me your understanding of what I've been telling you. Just tell me what you understand me to say in your own words. Take your time. That I don't have to say anything, but, but if I want a lawyer, I can have one. Yep. Yeah. 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 And I don't want anything anybody else has said to you to make you feel like you have to even talk to me. I don't want them influencing anything that may have said previously. Do you know what I mean? Okay. okay, I don't want you to feel forced into talking to me. Okay? All right. Um, do you have any other questions? Do you understand? Okay. Now, what? Um, since you and I have never met, um, of course I know a lot about you because I've been following the investigation. Okay, but I don't know everything about you. And I hate talking to people when I haven't formally met them, okay? So if I were to ask one of your friends about you or um, you wanted to tell me yourself, what would, how would you describe Jennifer Pan? Just maybe a bit about your history, where you grew up and where you went to school. I grew up here. I was born and grew up in Toronto. Okay. And I like to play the piano. Yeah. I hear you're pretty good at it, too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And uh, what else do you like to do? I like to figure skate. Yep. Yeah. Okay, you're pretty good at that too. I haven't done it for a while. Yeah, but at one point it was a passion of yours. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What else? I'm going back to school. Okay. And when's that? Well, starts in January. Okay. And what are you going to be taking? Biotech engineering. Okay. And what's your future aspirations then? Okay. Just hold on a second.
Okay, we're, we're having technical difficulties here. <laughs> okay, so that's why they interrupted me. What we're going to do is, if you don't mind holding tight there, I'm just going to move my equipment to the other room. Okay, and then I'll come over and we'll move over there next door. Okay? I'm just not comfortable doing on my own. Okay, I'm going to be right here though. Okay? Yeah, if you have a problem, just knock on the door and I'll come right over. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to be three seconds. I just have to take the uh, stuff here, move it over there, and then I'll come and get you. Okay? Test of the video equipment by district, 22nd of November. Alright, so we're going to switch rooms. Uh, the equipment's not working over there. We had a technical problem here, but I have had air, it has been audio tape. We just lost the video and audio from the video machine itself. Okay, so if you don't mind, just come across the hall. We'll walk in across the other room. Sit in the chair at the bottom there. Sit down here if you don't mind. Yep. Okay. So, just for the record, this room is being videotaped and audio taped just like the other one, okay? And I'm just going to grab my chair from across the way, okay? Right now, we're in uh, the Sanford video room across the hall from the first one. By my computer now, it's 2.52. Um, the officer advised me, the detective cook, that we're having a problem with the other room. The video and audio went down. Uh, but everything that we talked about has been um, audio taped uh, on our portable audio. Okay? All right. Now, um, just for a recap, um, we reviewed uh, why uh, that you're here today to discuss um, the home invasion that occurred at your residence at 238 Helen Avenue on the uh, 8th of November, okay, and that um, in that incident um, your mother was killed and your father uh, was um, shot uh, but survived, right? And we reviewed um, what your rights are here today, that you didn't have to speak to the police, um, that anything that you do say to the police here today could be evidence, is that correct? Yeah, you just have to speak a little louder. Yeah. Okay. And um, that if you had any involvement, um, uh, well, first of all, if you provided a false statement um, or lied to the police, 
uh, a person could be charged or you could be charged for um, obstruct police, uh, public mischief, or fabricating evidence. You understand that? Yes. And that if you had any involvement um, uh, in that home invasion, then you could be facing charges of murder and attempted murder. Okay, do you understand that? Okay. And um, anything that you do say to us in regards to that home invasion uh, is being recorded here, and that could be used as evidence in court. Okay? You understood that? And that you don't have to say anything to us in, in relation to this case, but whatever you do say may be given as evidence. Right? You understood that? Yes. Okay, and lastly, that... Um, we've never met before so I don't want anything any other officer has said to you to influence you or make you feel like you have to say anything to me here today and whatever you've said previously you don't have to repeat that nor do you have to say anything further but whatever you do say that may be given as evidence is that correct yeah. yes okay all right so we were just starting to talk about yourself and um, you were telling me that you do or have had a passion for the piano and uh, you do like figure skating. Okay, what are some of your other likes? What are the things you like to do? Yep, yeah. okay. And who are your specific TV buddies? Adrian. Okay, and his last name? Okay. And anyone else? Now, do you have a particular best friend right now? Who would you say is your best friend? Best friend that know me the best. No, who that you get along with, that you have a special relationship with, like a best friend. Who's the friend that you like the most or that you get along with the best? Daniel. Daniel? Okay. And what's his last name? Daniel. Okay. And uh, why do you say that you're best friends? And how does he do that? We've been friends for a long time. And I don't know, it's just, we used to date, and part of me still like, kept calm and everything. Sure yeah, okay. So you have history. Yeah. Okay. And I know you've said some of these things to the police before, but I just want to go over it for my own understanding. So when did you first date Daniel? And how did you actually meet? We went to school together. Okay. And what school did you go to? Marywood. And uh, is that a Catholic school? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And when did you start going to Marywood? In 2000. Okay. Yeah. And so you started grade 9 there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And in elementary school, where did you go? St. Barnabas. What's that? St. Barnabas. Oh, Barnabas, okay. Um, and do you practice... Um, Catholicism, or do you practice a different? Are you, are you Catholic? Uh, I do practice Catholicism, but uh, I do believe in some good schools. Yeah, okay, well, that's good. Okay, so you have uh, um, Christian beliefs uh, that are both Catholic and Buddhist uh, yeah. religions. Okay. Um, and how long uh, were you baptized when you were born? Yeah. Or, okay. And were your parents Catholics then? My father. Okay, your father. Okay. And what about your mom? Okay, so that's where you get the, the combination. Okay. And, um, yep. Growing up, did you guys go to church every Sunday, or how did that go? Not every Sunday, but we went uh, for holidays and special occasions. Okay. And you also had religion in school, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And um, did they go to uh, church at school or not? 
in elementary school I had a church next to me. Yes. Okay. I had the same thing, so that's why I'm asking. <laughs> okay. And basically, we went every Friday morning uh, to church because uh, we were right beside it, right? So um, they had a special service for us. Okay. Now. What else can you tell me about growing up? Okay. And um, tell me about that schedule. School, state piano, a little swimming, a little karate for a couple of years. So it was a steady, steady schedule. Okay. And how did you get into skating? To be honest, I think my parents just applied. Okay. And, I just took it. and how old were you when you started? Seven or eight. Okay, so young. And how long did you stay in it? Okay, so quite a long time. Okay. And what made you stop going? I tore my ACL a lot. Okay. So injuries. Okay. If you didn't get injured, would you still be doing it? I hope so. Yeah. That's nice. And did you, as far as that, did you do uh, like competition skating or? Yeah. Okay. And how did you do with that? I was at the top of the pack, but I was the middle average. Yeah, so that's good though. But you did actually enjoy it. It was more than just going for uh, competition. You enjoyed actually doing I, it. I, pet, I was petrified of the competition. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and where would be the farthest place you would go for a competition? Like, would you go outside of this area? Yes. Because uh, I actually started, I said uh, Scarborough in Toronto, that's where I trained and grew up. Yep. Uh, it wasn't until later that I moved up to Richmond Hill, uh, just the last year or two. Right. Um, but we went everywhere from um, Orangeville, yep. to Mississauga, just in and around southern Ontario. Yeah. Okay. And tell me about the piano. When did you start with piano? Wow. Okay. And you're still doing it, I understand. Okay. And I hear you actually teach. Yeah, I taught a bit. And yeah. I'm still working towards that final qualification. Okay. And what do you, what do you have to do to uh, get that final qualification? I have, uh, I believe, another three exams. Okay. And are the exams practical, or are they practical and... Practical, uh, like, practical and written. Written, okay. And, like an exam, how long would that take to write? Writing exams take about two to three hours. Okay. And are you in that process right now, or...? I was, yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. And so, when do you hope to complete that? I was hoping in June. June, by June, June you would... 7 11. Yeah. Okay. And um, so you went from uh, a student and now to a teacher, is what, uh, okay? And um, although you don't have your highest papers, you were still able to teach students? Yes. Yeah, okay. What does the actual full papers give you? What will you be able to do with that? It's just a formality. Uh, an achievement? Yes. Okay. Credentials. Uh, can you charge more? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you've been uh, teaching, um, what would you charge for lessons? Mainly they were just family friends, so it was just $10 half an hour. Yeah. Okay. And how many students would have you been teaching? For the years, just three. Okay. Over what time period? Three, four years. Okay. All right. Um, and do you have any students right now? Or? No. Okay. And why not? Uh, the students I were teaching, they went to high school and lost interest. Oh, okay. Yeah. Too big for panel. <laughs> yeah, I took it in grade school too, but uh, I, I think I got I went to grade seven in it. I think like mm -hmm. in when I was in grade seven, I stopped taking it, but. Uh, I still remember swans on the lake. I didn't know how to play that, that's about it. <laughs> um, now, I understand, what kind of jobs have you had? Um, serving jobs. 
serving jobs. Okay. And when was your last one? Okay. And when's the last time you worked there? Two years ago, I think. Two and a half. Okay. And was that your last uh, serving job? Okay. And previous to that? Okay. And what time period did you work there? spent three or four years there, okay. Why did you switch from um, East Side to Boston Pizza? Um, when I went over to Boston, I did, I did both for a little bit. Okay, yeah. And I found that Boston Pizza was uh, easier and better. Okay, <laughs> better tips? Or? Yeah, it was <laughs> okay. easier because uh, less unlimited stuff to run and okay. more appreciative guests. Okay, the experience was better for you. Yeah. Okay. And... Um, but you haven't done that in about two years, okay? And any particular reason? Um, just try to concentrate on piano. And okay. All right, on your studies? Pardon me? On your studies? My piano studies? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And what is it that you're hoping, you're going back to school, what is your ultimate goal uh, for school? I want to finish this three-year biotech course yep. and see how the field is after for three years because I know it's booming now but I'm not sure how it's going to be in three years. Okay. And what would the number, what job would you like to get from it? Like what are some of the jobs that you would get with a degree in that? I haven't really looked much into it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, now, if you could pick any job yourself, not talking about anybody else, but if you could pick for yourself, what would it be? I'm going to be a piano teacher on my, when I come home. But in the daytime, I'd like to have a, a simple, maybe like a lab technician job, just work eight, like eight hours a day and come home and teach piano. Okay. And so why don't you do that? Uh, I actually did try to apply for a uh, pharmacy technician, but I wasn't eligible to enter. Okay. And any particular reason? Or? I probably just didn't have the course, the, the needed credits for it. Okay. And uh, high school credits, you mean? Or? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and have this other course you're on, you've been accepted? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And from that, I guess you could be a technician, though? Uh, I, believe, I believe that if I get through the first year okay, I, would, I will be eligible to transfer to the technician courses. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Um, now, I understand that um, you mentioned a schedule, okay? Um, whose decision to have you on a schedule? Who's well, it was more along the lines of uh, where I was at my skating level yep. and what times were needed to be at certain places. Yeah, okay. So, but basically you didn't have time for much uh, other than school, skating, yeah. piano. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Now, um, eventually you were discussing Daniel. What happened with that relationship? I hid it from my parents at first. They didn't agree with me having a boyfriend. Okay. And uh, once they found out, they didn't like the fact that he was of mixed race. Okay. And uh, they told me to stop seeing him. Okay. And how did that make you feel? That uh, he was the person who just build an empty void for me, so it felt that a part of me was missing. Um, and when did you feel the part was missing? 
you when you broke up, you felt the heart was missing. Is that what you're saying? When, when they first told me to stop seeing him, stop talking to him, I just I felt like a part of me was missing, and I fell into a little bit of depression. Okay. And how old were you when this happened? Um, I'm okay, so you're 24 uh, now, mm -hmm. right? When you're 21, they told you to stop seeing him, or 2021. Mm -hmm. And how old were you when you first started dating? Uh, 17. Okay. And from 17 to 2021, 20, they didn't know about the relationship? No. Okay. How did they find out? Um, one day when my mother came to pick me up, uh, she saw me with him. He had dropped me off. Okay. He dropped you off? Uh, at Pacific Mall. And my mother was coming to pick me up. At okay. And somehow they saw each other, I guess? Oh, my mother saw me. Uh, husband took me to that. Okay, that gave it away. <laughs> okay. And then when she asked about it, what did you tell her? I told her that, you know, we've been dating a little bit, but mainly it was just when we were in school, we saw each other. Okay. All right. And so was that the whole truth or not? It was at that point in time. Okay. What happened next then? I tried to bring him home. Uh, my mother at first was like, you know, bring him home, let us meet him. When I brought him home, um, they didn't, they automatically didn't like him for some reason. Okay. And that's when they told me to stop him. Okay. And what is it, you, you mentioned already that he was mixed race. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is what? Filipino and Chinese. Okay. And your parents themselves, what uh, races are they? Vietnamese and Chinese. Okay. What was the problem with um, Chinese and uh, Filipino? They didn't see him as a Chinese person. Okay. They thought him as a Filipino person. Okay. And they associated Filipino people with Pacific people. Okay. So that was their personal belief or personal outlook on Filipino I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, okay, so you were told to uh, stop seeing him, so what happened then? At first I stopped for a while, um, but like I said, I just felt really empty and I felt just the depression and uh, okay. I started talking to him again. Okay. And how would you get a chance to see him? Um, seeing him was really difficult. Um, okay. I would try to see him before a class here and there. Um, not much time, but uh, sometimes I'd ask a friend of mine, Gary, who's a mutual friend of ours. Okay. He'd come and tell what time to do, pick me up for dinner, and the three of us would go out to dinner together. Okay. So he'd pick you up at the house, yes. Gary? Yes. And what race is he? He's white. He's a white guy? Yes. Okay. And did they have a problem with white guys, or? No. No. They didn't have a problem with you going to dinner with uh, Gary? No. No. And um, they were just against this guy? Daniel? Yeah. Okay. Now, were they against you going out with friends? A little bit, yeah. Okay, but they let you go with Gary, so... Well, it was, like I said, they didn't say yes often, but okay. when they did. All right, so, and then what would happen? You would then, Gary would take you to Daniel? Uh, we would meet up at like our sushi place. Okay, where was that? Uh, sometimes we'd go to uh, Taste of Japan, and yeah. we tried Sushi on 7 once. Sushi on 7? Okay. okay. And where is that first place located? Uh, Woodbine and John. Woodbine and John? Yeah. And where, what about the other one? Uh, 7 and 10. And um, so you like sushi? My friend Gary likes sushi. Okay. <laughs> and how did you meet Gary? Through Daniel. Through Daniel? Okay. Um, but he's become your friend as well. Yeah. Okay. And when's the last time you would have spoke to him? It's been a while. It's been a while? Been a good three or four months. Three or four months. And um, since you and Daniel broke up, how often would you see Gary? We'll see him when he stopped by my house sometimes because my mom was at work. Okay. And how many times do you think Gary took you to see Daniel? 
three or four times. Three or four times. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when would the last time have been? Sometime in the summer, I believe. Okay. And where does Gary actually live? Uh, he's in Ajax Pickering. Ajax Pickering. Okay. Uh, have you ever been to his place? Yes. Whereabouts does he live? I don't exactly know. He drove in. Okay. What does he drive? The um, the navy blue car with really dark tinted windows. Okay. You know you don't know what kind of car? Uh, I believe it's an Impala. Impala. Okay. Now, how has Daniel taken it when your parents said that uh, you couldn't see him anymore? How did he take it? Yeah. Okay. Um, and how did you feel? Also hurt. Also hurt. Okay. Um, now, after high school, what did you do? First school? I didn't. Okay. Um, but I lied to my parents. Okay. okay. So tell me about that. What happened there? Um, what was their impression, and what were you doing in the meantime? They thought that I was going to school at Ryerson for the first couple of years, and then I said I'd transfer to UT. Okay. Um, but I was actually working in the okay. daytime. Okay. And where were you staying? At the first two, two, three years, I was staying. I was coming back home every day. Um, but my final year, I said that it was difficult. Yeah. And so I would stay at Daniel's place. Okay. So you actually lived together for a year? Well, with his parents' place. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so where would you stay in that house then? We had a spare bedroom. Okay. Um, but when his parents got more comfortable, they let me stay with him. Okay. All right. So you were you slept in the same room for a while? Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, is it fair to say that you had an intimate relationship? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And of course your parents didn't know about that. No. no. Okay. And how long was the relationship intimate, would you say? You've been dating for seven years, I guess. At what point did it become intimate? Uh, I'd say after high school sometimes. Yeah, okay. Um, and his parents were, I guess, more liberal than your parents? Their par his parents, uh, they loved they, they love me. Yeah, okay. And um, they recognized that you loved each other. And so they let you stay in the same... Uh, you moved up to his room, or how did that work? Next door. Okay. There were two rooms in the basement. No, it ended the main floor. On the main floor. Okay. And where were the parents' rooms? Across the way. Okay. All right. Um, I'm guessing that sometimes you sneak into each other's rooms before they let you do it? No. No? You didn't? No. <laughs> okay. I'm just thinking what young people <laughs> would do. Okay. Um, but I'll, how long did you end up staying in the same room before you moved back home? So you lived there for two years then? Like I still came home every weekend and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. But they thought, and they thought you were where, on campus? Uh, at a friend's place. Okay. All right. And if they phoned you, they would just call your I called them every morning. Okay. Every night. You cut it off. Okay. Um, how, what ended up, how did they find out you weren't going to school? They asked for records, and at first I wasn't able to. And then um, after I said I'd finished, um, I didn't feel that I needed. I could. I didn't feel that. I, I told them I didn't want to do the pharmacy, like pharm pharmacist. I want to be a technician. Yeah. I find the responsibility of the uh, pharmacy so much. Yeah. Um, I told them that I wasn't really into it, and. Um, because I hadn't gone to school for it, but I had lied about it. I didn't want to go and pursue like, applying for the job when I didn't have the qualifications. Okay. Um, and they thought you did have the qualifications? Yeah. Okay. And how did you try to prove to them that you did have the qualifications? Or I they... bought online. Um, I got a friend of mine to buy online a fake diploma. Okay. And who, what friend was that? Daniel. Yeah. Daniel. Oh, Daniel? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, what did it cost to buy a fake? Uh, 500 or something. Wow. Okay. And um, what happened when you gave them that then? They stopped haunting me for a bit until okay. they realized I wasn't actually, I, I wasn't pursuing looking for the job hard enough. So they were wondering what was going on. Okay. Then what was the next step? What ended up, uh, how did you end up back home, I guess? Uh, they called up my friend, uh, who I said I was staying with in the middle of the night, and uh, she was groggy and forgot what day it was, and so she was like, isn't she home, and I wasn't home. Okay. She messed up. <laughs> I don't blame her a bit. No. Okay. And what was that friend's name? Topaz. Okay, so she was your cover. Okay, and she uh, basically uh, got caught because they called in the middle of the night. Okay, and so then, what? Did, how did they approach you on that? They called me and they told me to come home immediately. Right now. <laughs> okay, and what happened? Um, that's when I like a bit like you're staying home and you're going out and uh, we're gonna get your life back on track. Okay. And what did you say to that plan? That I, I was still cre uh, doing my piano career, and I didn't feel that, like, I felt that my piano career could take me, and that, um, I didn't, I didn't understand her. Okay. Effort. So you expressed your opinion, uh, but they wanted more. They said that they wanted an education okay. and a degree. Okay. And so ultimately a plan was set up, I guess? Mm -hmm. And what was that plan? To go back to school. Okay. This January? Uh, actually, it was supposed to be for September. Yeah. But uh, they were, it was too late to apply. Okay. So I, I reapplied for January and got Okay. Now, when did this actually happen? That they found out every or that that they brought you home? Uh, about a year and a half ago. Okay. And so, um, what's been happening in the last year and a half? Then? Like okay. you finally got into school now, I understand. Mm -hmm. What's been happening for the last eighteen months? Just a lot of piano, like okay. catching up on my theories and stuff. Okay. I've been slacking a little, and. Uh, Pretty much piano, and then I also did a little summer school to get my high school calc so I could apply it because I know calculus is a big thing in uh, applying for college and universities now. Okay. So I did do that one summer as well. Okay, and how, what's your math skills like? They were pretty good, but they've gotten rusty over the yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you're not 18 or 19 anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you haven't done it in a few years. Okay. Uh, so do you just, uh, is it home studies or is it uh, internet no, I, studies? No, I did it at a summer school. Okay, you did it. Uh, but are you doing any correspondence? Uh, no. No, okay. And so what was the, when they said this is what's going to happen, what were all the rules that got put in place to make sure it happens? That I wouldn't see Daniel or talk to Daniel anymore. Okay. And that I, 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 I my friends would have to come and, over to the house rather than me go out. Okay. Um, uh, or if I went out with a friend, they'd need to like, call and make sure. Okay. And did you have a curfew or anything? Um, they always said before that like, 9 o'clock usually would be home. Okay. And would they ever waiver on that? Uh, just once because it was my friend's wedding okay. uh, reception. Yeah, and how long did you get to stay with that one? Just 11. Okay. And how do you get to and from things when you want to go somewhere? Uh, they drive me. They drive you? Or the odd time if they know it's like a class that I always go to, they'll let me take the car. Okay. You do drive, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so how has that felt, being under those guidelines for the last 18 months? Mm, it was okay, like, uh, it wasn't the best feeling in the world because, you know, I just felt a little trapped. Okay. But uh, it's what I chose to be with my family. Okay. And so you made a choice between what? 
I'm living out on my own with Daniel and getting home with my parents. Okay. My back here. Okay. And did they say you could stay out on your own if you wanted to? Um, at one point it was said, but my dad also said that he'd per, uh, hire a private investigator to follow me around. Okay. You didn't like that option? It's not that. It's just I, I chose to be with my parents. That wasn't even... Okay. Like he said it in argument, but yeah. it, I wasn't leaving. Okay. Did you feel you really had a choice or not? There was no choice because family always comes first. Okay. And where do you get that from? Where do you get that belief? I don't know. Okay. So family's number one? Yes. Okay. Um... Now, you said you were depressed. When were you depressed? What time period did that start? Um, I was depressed in elementary school for a little bit. Okay. Um, the depression started, I'd say, hard, very, about two years ago. Okay. At the time of this, or... Uh, what, what brought on the depression? Um, just, I wasn't happy with any part of my life. Okay, which included what? Um, I regretted not going to school. Okay. Um, my piano wasn't going as fast as I was, I was liking. Um, just, uh, my friends were moving on with their lives and it felt that I was, wasn't going anywhere, I was kind of being left behind. Okay. And uh, that I didn't understand why uh, that at 21 that I had to be home at 9 o'clock. I can see that. Okay. And what, how, what was the worst the depression got? Okay, and when did that happen? I Where did you do, where did you cut? Uh, on my wrist, and once people started noticing, I'd hide it other places, but okay. never twice in the same spot. So how many cuts do you have on you? Now, none. None? Yeah. They've healed? Okay. And did you want to kill yourself? Yes. When's the first time that you actually thought you would try and kill yourself? Nineteen. At nineteen? What was going on at that time that brought it on? Like my friends were in school and I wasn't. Okay. Um, I just came to the realization that, like, my family dynamic is very broad, uh, so I just felt everything was crum crumbling around me and I wasn't able to hold anything up for myself. Okay. And you really weren't able to tell your parents you weren't in school. Mm -hmm. So it was tough living a double life type thing. Yes. But is that fair to say? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, um, did you ever try to actually kill yourself? I tried once. Yeah, what did you do? I tried to overdose on sleep on and tell Okay, and what happened? I wasn't able to do it. Okay, how many did you take? Four or five. Four or five, okay. And where did that happen? In where were bedroom. you? In your bedroom. Okay. Um, I guess you just got tired. Yeah. You woke up the next day. No, like I stopped myself. I oh, okay. You, just, you, you could have taken more, but you didn't. Okay. All right. Um, when you were cutting, um, were you actually trying to kill yourself? No. no. What were you trying to do? Control one part of my life. Okay. And what did that do for you when you actually cut? I was able to feel physical pain, so I didn't have to think of like, other pains in my life. Okay. So it was a distractor. Okay. Did anybody know you were cutting? Not at first. Okay. 
Okay, who was the first to find out? What did he say? He was like, don't be stupid. Okay. Uh, did your parents ever find out? They noticed it, but they never... They don't, I don't think they realized what it said. Yeah, they didn't. Okay. Um, what's the lowest you ever got? What was the lowest moment you ever had? and not gone to school and I was home alone and in the middle of arguments and I feel very alone. So he was kind of a bond while you were at home? Okay. And so you guys got along all right? As far as brother and sister go? Well, we, we, we had our moments. Yeah. But uh, there's just an unsaid, unsaid bond. Yeah, we? which is nice. Okay. Uh, but when you were on your own, it was a lot tougher. You didn't have that ally in the house. Okay. Now, when you said there was fighting, what kind of fighting went on in the house? Bickering. About what were the issues? Housework. Housework, okay. And who was bickering? My parents. And who were they bickering at? Each other. Each other, okay. So there's some tension there. Okay. Um, how would you characterize their relationship over the last couple of years? What do you mean by that? How has it been in the house for them as a couple? Mm, they put on a front. There's not much of a relationship. Okay. And what what do you think the problem is? What's the issue? What happened? My mother took on a lot of responsibility. Okay. Doing everything, paying the bills, paying the house. She was just set up for doing it by herself. Okay. So she was depressed too or not? I couldn't say. Okay. Um, who's the boss of the house then, would you say? Okay. okay. And so, um, what does that mean? In much of the opinion, he's focusing. Okay, so he has the final say on. And how did your mom take that? Um, if you had a real problem, could you ever go to either one of them? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what would you and your mom discuss? Future plans. Okay. And um, did she agree with your father's plans or not? Sometimes. Ultimately, they wanted you to be educated, I guess, was their, was their goal, okay. Um, did you ever feel that they expected too much of you? How so? Comparison to other people. Okay, so who would they compare you to? Classmates, clubmates, cousins. Okay. And so some of them have been successful recently? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what did they say to you? Wish you could have been that person. Okay. So that's pretty hard, right? Hard to take for you? It's what I've heard all my life. So okay. Nothing. Okay. Um, now, was there ever any um, physical abuse in your household? Mm -hmm. 
you had to think about that. What did he? When I was when you're a kid, you know, just a little tap on the bottom. Okay, you got a spanking, but that's it. Okay. You were never um, injured or. No. And um, your mom and dad weren't physical with each other. No. Did you did you ever see them be physical with each other? No. No. Okay. Um, now. Do you feel, um, I get the feeling that, um, they think you could do any job there is. Is that true, or? I don't know. I guess my question for you is, did you ever feel like, I know you're smart, and they believe you're very smart, but did you ever feel you weren't as smart as what they thought that, that you were? Yeah. Okay, I get that feeling. Yeah. That it's pretty tough to live up to their expectations. Okay, like your dad ultimately would like to see you be like a doctor. That type of thing. And maybe uh, you can't do it. Right? And I'm not saying you can't, but I, I get the feeling that um, those were pretty high standards for anybody. Not everybody can be a doctor. Okay? And, but they may have acted like you could have done it no problem. Is that fair? Okay. Like, I don't want to say something that's not accurate, but I just get the feeling that, um, their expectations were so high that few people would be able to reach that expectation. I'm not just talking about you, I'm talking about anybody. Yeah. Um, and it started at a young age. Yeah. It didn't start just when you went to university. No. It's been an expectation yeah. uh, that um, uh, since you were a child that you would be successful. Yeah. Uh, better than everybody else. Yeah. Now, um, in that, um, when did your uh, parents come to Canada? Maybe here. Okay, but you were born here, yeah. and your brother was born here. Okay. And where did they actually meet? You know, how they got back together? Home. They met back home, but they they just knew of each other back home. Okay, which back, back, back home means Vietnam. Vietnam. Okay. And when uh, and did they grow up in the same neighborhood or I, same town or something? I guess the town, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Area. Okay. Okay. So, eventually, um, how did they, um, what else did you do to pretend you were in school? What kind of things would you do to try and make it look like you got your grades or? When they asked for something, I'd try to make a document for them. Okay. So what type of documents did you? Um, student loans. Okay. Okay, and how did you do them? Using the Photoshop. Photoshop, okay. And uh, what did they say when they saw the, the report cards? Did they ever question it? Not at first. No. Okay. Up until, how did they actually figure it out? When I know they figured out you weren't living with your friend, um, do they still, at this point, even know that you don't have any university? Yes, my father Okay. When did you find out? Uh, after I told the police. Okay. So up until this event... They just thought that I didn't go to school this full time. Okay. But they still thought you had some, some credits. Help. Okay. Um, how did it feel having to lie to them all those years? It was really hard. It was really hard that I wanted to tell them, but... They always look down and disappointment. Okay. And I'm sure there were days when you actually planned that this is the day I'm going to tell them, and then yeah. you just couldn't spit it out. Okay. All right. Um, now, well, if your parents had let you, would you still be with Daniel? If they didn't interfere, what would ha what would have happened? Sure, 
Maybe I could do it then. I'm not sure. Okay. You never know. All right. Yeah. So we can't say because we don't know for sure. I can say we could be friends, but I don't know any more than that. Okay. And do you want more than that? I'm not sure I do right now. Okay. All right. Um, since the time you come home, have you wanted to? You still went and saw him, so obviously you were trying to keep something going. Yeah. Okay. Um, at what point did he move on? Maybe February of last year. Okay. Of uh, 09 or February of 2010, of this year? 2010. 2010? Okay. And how, how did he move on? He, one of his old uh, friends, he was Okay. And who is that? Christine. And how does that make you feel? I knew that we weren't together, so. Okay. So it made me feel that I wasn't good enough to be waiting. To wait, you mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what was your kind of plan then? Go back to school and? Get my degree, make something of my life for my parents. Yep. And then once I make my life, then see where we would go. Okay. Um, so it was upsetting that he didn't wait till that played out. Yeah. Okay. Depressing for you. For me. Yeah. Okay. What about him? He still came back and said that, you know, I love you and if cer the circumstances were different, but it's not. Okay. Um, did you ever plan a future together? Mm -hmm. Discussed it, but Okay, like marriage? Some days he'd say yes, some days he'd say no. Okay. So you brought it up? He bring it up sometimes. Okay. So ultimately, because you went out for so long, they could have ended up in marriage. Still could someday, I'm not saying. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Um, on a fairness scale, where would you put the this? Did you feel it was a fair decision? At, at 24, you have to stay at home with a curfew of 9 o'clock. I knew I messed over. up. Okay. I knew I messed up. And okay. that I needed to put my life back in action. Okay. Do you think it had to be that strict, though? Well, considering my past, I, I thought it was a little strict, but I, I understood. Okay. Over the years, what other things have you had to hide from your parents? Well, just besides having boyfriends and um, not going to school. Okay. Did you have a different boyfriend at one point then? Um, well, I dated Adrian for about four months in high school. So okay. That wasn't, they didn't know about it. It wasn't much. It wasn't dating. It, it was, was high just, school. Uh, yeah, it was just, I'll see you in class. And that was okay. It. And what grade were you in at that time? Um, 11. Okay. Um, what have your friends said about all this? Well, they don't know about the whole school thing. They just know I'm going back to school. Okay. Who else knows that you never went to school, though? Topaz. Yeah. She, she... Oh, yeah, she kind of knew. She, she just thought I was staying with uh, Daniel. So. Oh, okay. She, that was the cover, but she thought you were still going to school. Yeah. Okay, so she didn't know the whole story. No. But she knew she was your cover. Yeah. For She just thought it was so that they wouldn't know where you were staying. Yeah. Okay. Um, did anybody else know that you weren't going to school? Who 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 would know that? I didn't tell them. Daniel. Yeah. Anybody else? Um. No. Did his parents know? No. No. Okay, so just you and Daniel. No. Okay. Um. What other things have you, in your depression, had to lie about over the last year? going to see him that I was still talking to Daniel and that I try to find ways to communicate with him. Okay. And how did you end up eventually communicating? Um just talking. Okay. How did that work? I 
text him and he texted me back whenever he could and yep. just deleted them when I got them. Okay. Now, how did your uh, parents monitor this cell phone? When I was around them, they didn't like me on it. Okay, so what would they say? Mm -hmm. Who is that? What is it? Why is it so important? Okay. They ended up taking it for a couple of weeks. When was that? Um, one of my first five, like seven and a half weeks. Okay. Since then, how many times have they taken it away from you? I can't count. More than? Five. More than five? And what were the occasions that resulted in them taking it away from you? On the phone too much, or they thought it was Daniel, or that they thought it was a distraction. Okay, so where would you be trying to make these calls from? Where would you be in the house? In the basement, like if I had to go get something in the basement, or if I was in the washroom. Okay, so they would actually watch you every second almost. Well, not every second, but they knew where about I was all the time. And if they heard you talking. Yeah. Now, did they ever barge into the room and take the phone off you? No. No. Okay. Um, so, a lot of times, I guess you were trying to text, so they wouldn't know? Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, how did they find out you were talking to Daniel then? occasion where you said they checked the phone or? Oh, I told you I deleted the call history and stuff like okay. that. Okay. Uh, and did they ever find it before you got it deleted? No. no. Okay. Now, did they ever take the phone but you had another phone? Yes. Okay, so how did that work? He got me another phone and I just, whenever I wanted to talk to him, I plugged in a SIM card. Um, but I kept the SIM card out of the phone in case they found the phone. Yeah. And that there would be no card in it to use. Okay. So did they know you had more than one phone? No. No. Okay. Now, how many phones did you end up having? Just the two. And which for what? Uh, the bell line that he had that Daniel bought for me. Yep. And then my own Rogers. Okay. So your Rogers line, uh, what's the number on it again? Uh, 647965218. And then the one he gave you? I don't remember it. I didn't give it out, so I don't remember it. I'll remember like 519 was the middle three numbers. Okay. Uh, it's a bell, yeah. bell number, and he gave it. Um, so you can plug that SIM card into any phone and it'll work? Yeah. So you could even put it in your, is it a Samsung phone you had? Yes, yeah, uh, it didn't work in my Samsung. It had to be the iPhone. Okay. And so where did you get the iPhone then? Okay. He got it for me, and my brother, he has one. Okay. Um, he got uh, two of them, and he had to fix around, and the internet didn't work on the one I had. Okay. Um, now, you mentioned you were looking to get a new phone? Yes. What were you trying to get? My contract was ending, so I was thinking of looking into buying uh, another phone. The Fido plans were good, but I didn't like the Fido phone. Okay. So I was planning on, I got the SIM card. I didn't activate it yet because I wanted to wait for my Rogers plan to be over. Um, and then I was going to go to Fido and then go to Pacific Mall and buy a phone that I liked. Okay. How much would a phone be? 800. Yeah. Like the, the new ones. Are what, like what, what kind of phone were you hoping to get? iPhone 4. Oh, okay. Or the new Blackberry. The, the latest, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you actually had a Blackberry at one point, though? And my brother, yeah, he gave me one of his friend's old ones. Okay. But it didn't, again, no internet, no nothing. So. Okay. You need that internet, eh? Well, it wasn't that I needed it, it was just convenient. You'd like it? Yeah. Okay. Now, um, did they ever take an iPhone off of you? Did they ever find it, or did they just always take your Samsung phone? Yeah, I'd always take my Samsung phone. Okay. So right now, you actually have a third chip, then, you're saying? Yeah, I just bought it. Um, but I hadn't activated it yet or anything. Okay. And that was with who? Fido. And what's the number for that one? There is none. I, it's just, I just bought the box. Oh, the box. Yeah. Okay, SIM card only. Yeah. Okay. And what kind of phone can it go into? It, it came with a, like I bought a $50 phone. So when I activated it, it would work. Okay. And, and I don't know the model, it's just a basic, basic phone. Okay. Uh, 
I will kind of pull them in. Mm -hmm. It's just a FIDO form. I don't know. Okay. You don't know the brand mm -hmm. on the home? Okay, so where is that phone now then? Um, it was at home when my brother just brought it for me. So I'm not using it because I... Oh, he, he ended up buying it for no, you? No, he bought, he brought it. It was at my, it was still at my house. And uh, okay. he just recently, yesterday he just brought it home. Okay, so he's been back to the house. Have you been back to the house since? I can't, I can't even go near the house. Okay, all right. And where are you staying now then? At my uncle and aunt's house. Okay, and how's that going? Okay. Okay. Um, now, when's the last time you spoke to your dad? I saw him at the hospital Saturday. Okay. And, and he called me uh, this morning just to see if my brother had made it into school. Okay. okay. And what have you and your father discussed about this case? He just asked me if Daniel was behind it. Okay. And I told him I don't know 100%, but I don't think he did. Okay. Why would he ask that? Because he believes that we still talk and that he would go to anyone else to be with me. Okay. And what do you think about that? I know that he's moved on, so I don't think he would, he would go to the blanks to be with me when he's already moved on. Okay. Um, What else did you discuss about the case? About what happened that night? I, I haven't spoken to him about it. Nothing about what went on? Any details? No, all he said was that was it Daniel. Okay. And you told him you don't think so? I don't think so, but... Is it possible? I don't think he knows anyone, I don't think he did it, but I can't say 100% sure. So you I'm can't say no, you can't say for sure not, is that what you're saying? Okay. Uh, has he told you that he did it? Who? Has Daniel told you that he's done it? No. Or had anything to do with it? No? No. Okay. Now, um, who else have you discussed the case with? the officers and my social worker. I haven't spoken any details to anybody. Okay. What about relatives? I, my, my uncle did ask me if he confronted me about something about having a black friend, but I I didn't know what he was talking about. Okay. Uh, do you have any black friends? No, but when he said that the police officers had a photo of me talking with a friend, uh, it wasn't, he's not really a friend, he was more a friend of mine's roommate. Okay. So I didn't, like, he's not a friend of mine, but, um, yeah, I, I did, I did meet up with him once or twice. Okay. Okay, and who is that? Um, my friend Andrew, one of his old roommates. Okay. I only know him by Rick. Okay. And where did you meet him? Um, the first time he met me near my piano school. Okay. Um, just said, uh, we just met up and my friend Andrew was like, he was, he was on the phone. And he was like, yeah, that's my friend. Um, he, my friend was busy working with his father and they were having some rent problems. So uh, they asked me if I could help them out with their rent. Okay, so what happened? So I met up with him a little later at Agent Court, just chatted a bit, and then uh, I lent him the money. Okay, so how much money did you lend him? Uh, I don't remember, like about 1100 About 100 Okay. And this is, you gave it to this rep guy? Yes. Okay. And he was introduced to you through Andrew? Yes. Okay, what's Andrew's last name? Montmayor. Is that one of the friends you talk to all the time? Mm, I don't talk to him a lot, but okay. occasionally we go through like maybe a week or two of talking a lot and then we drift apart for a couple months. Okay. And How do you spell his last name? Montemayo? Montemayo, I, I forget. Okay. What's his phone number? Um, six, 
647 Six one eight eighty six forty three. Is that the well, Andrew you were talking to the night um, yeah. uh, before you talked to the other gentleman? Before Edward? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so now Rick, um, you met him where at Agent Court yeah. and what? Uh, it was uh, Kennedy and Shepherd. Kennedy and Shepherd, and yeah. what what type of place did you meet him at? Like I met him. We went for coffee. Yeah. Then we walked around, and I went to the library because Andrew wanted to meet me and uh, see see the place because we hadn't seen each other in a while. Okay. See what place? I uh, see my house. Like come visit me. Okay. And so you came back to your house? No. Uh, so I gave Rick the address so that uh, he can go home and give it to Andrew. And I showed him how to commute because he doesn't drive. So I showed him how to commute up to my place. Uh, so you took Rick up to your place? No. no. You just told him where it was? And he was to tell Andrew? Yeah. Who then could come and visit you sometime? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so what, uh, what was the building that you met uh, for coffee at? What was the coffee shop? Not in Horton. Okay. And where was the location? Uh, Kennedy and Shepherd. And when was that? I'm not sure. Spring, summer? I don't remember exactly. Okay. Um, this year? Mm. Okay. And um, second time you met him? That was the second time I met him. Where did you meet him the first time? I told you uh, near my piano school. Okay, sorry. And yeah. where, though, specifically? Um, a shepherd in Lima. And where, at another coffee shop, or what was that? No, it was just, I just finished piano, we introduced each other, and then I had to go home. Okay. And who else was there? Nobody. Okay. And how did he know to come see you there? How we were on the phone with Andrew, okay. and Andrew was like, yeah. And where was Andrew at the time? He was in the South, I believe. Okay. And so, the first time you met him, what did you talk about? No, just hello, I'm Andrew's roommate. How are you? Okay, so he was living with Andrew at the time. Yeah. Are they still living together? I don't think so. Okay, and where were they staying? I'm not sure, somewhere in Mississauga. Okay, and who, um, why didn't Andrew just meet you? He was doing, uh, he was in the process of doing uh, insurance stuff. Okay. Like, I think he was doing classes or seminars or something, yeah. so he wasn't able to come out to Toronto. Okay. And what race is Andrew? Filipino. Filipino. Okay. And um, this Rick guy, him and uh, Andrew lived together for how long? I'm not sure. He just said he was a really good friend, okay. and they lived together. And so what was the time that you met him first then? What was that? Maybe just a week before I met him the second time. Okay. Um, and what did you discuss then? Nothing. It was just uh, who, we, who he was and, yep. and then I had to go. Okay. And so the next time you met him, how come you met him the second time? Because that's after that, Andrew was like, yeah, we're having pro pro problems with rent. And okay. Yeah. And, okay, so they wanted money. They, my aunt friend Andrew wanted to see if I could, he could lend, uh, if I could lend him some money okay. to help with rent. And so you did, and you gave the money to who? Rick. Okay. That day um, at Tim Hortons. Yeah. Okay. And what else did you discuss that day? Just what he liked doing. Like he said, he liked uh, he liked Japanese manga books and Japanese manga books. They're like comic books or okay. something. Okay. Yeah, that's his hobby. Yeah. What else? Like I asked him if he was working, he's like, no, I'm looking for a job, and okay. um, I just like, bought my piano stuff, and that was about it. Okay. What is it that Andrew actually does? He's uh, doing some sort of like, selling life insurance, I believe. I'm, I'm not 100 what, sure. What's the company he's with? Did he try to sell you a policy yet? Or? No. <laughs> Usually they go after their friends first. Right? Yeah, but I told him right off the bat, I'm like, I'm okay. I'm not buying any. Yeah. Okay, so um, he, uh, you gave him $1,100. Where did you get the $1,100? I have a lot saved up from when I was serving. Okay. Uh, cash. 
And so how much do you have saved up? Like now or? Yeah. Well, I had about just a little under a thousand saved up recently. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So right now, how much do you have? A thousand, you're saying? Well, now I don't have any, right? <laughs> okay. You took it all. Okay. So, um, now, before Andrew took the money, how much did you have? And so um, you gave him 1100 Has he paid that back yet? Uh, I talked to him recently. He said he's working on it. He's just working at Home Sense right now. And uh, he just moved back home, so that should decrease his rent. So he says he's working on that. Which Home Sense? I'm not sure. Okay. And where does he actually live? With his parents, I believe. Which is. <laughs> you don't know? No. Um, this Rick fella, what about him? Where is he then? I haven't, I don't know. I haven't spoken to him for a long time. Six months, yeah. Okay. Just more of an acquaintance. Yeah. Okay. So after you gave him the money, did they give you a receipt or anything? No. No. Okay. What was his promise to you about how he would pay you back? Well, Andrew said that he'd pay me back when he could. Okay. You didn't give any timelines? No. No. Okay. Um... Okay, so, and after you talked or saw Rick, have you seen him since that day you gave him the money? Okay, have you talked to him since? Maybe a week after, but no. Okay, and what did you talk a week after? No, just asked him how he was, if the rent was okay, and yeah. what he was doing. He was like just watching some of his friends' kids or something. Okay. And where was their apartment? Somewhere in Mississauga. Um, so, you know, I, I guess they're not, are you saying they're not there anymore? Yeah, I know my Andrews is back home. Okay. Um, okay. Do you know any other black guys? Mm, not that are very, very close with me. Okay. Um, who would be that you aren't very close to? Well, Daniel's best friend is uh, black. Okay. And what's his name? Carlos Finch. Carlos Finch? Mm. Okay. And do um, you ever talk to him? or? Mm -hmm. How come you say they're best friends? They went to elementary school together and they grew up together on the okay. neighbors. They still hang out? Um, I believe so. I okay. believe so. When's the last time you saw Cardinals? Years. Years? Yeah. Okay. Um, does Daniel still hang out with them then? Or? I believe so. When's the last time they would have been, you seen them together? Oh, I've seen them together. I've years. Was Daniel ever talking about them? Sometimes for birthdays and stuff. Okay. So like they went out for my birthday or his birthday or. So Charles would birthday. be there. Yeah. Okay. And so when when your last birthday was, did you go out with Carlos? Was Carlos there? Oh me, no. No. Just no, I meant like his birthday or Carlos's birthday. Oh. Okay. Um, when Daniel's birthday comes around, do you make a point of seeing him? I try, but it doesn't always work out. Um. Okay. Um, how many, uh, so a personal black friend, do you don't have one or you do? No. Um, how about Filipino friends? Mm, well, Edward's Filipino. Okay. He's a good friend of mine. All right. Um, Andrew, like I said, we talk, but we're not really like close. We don't ever see each other. Okay. So I can never get out to see him. Okay. Uh, what about white friends? I have Adrian, think of it, like I said, and Gary. Okay. Are the two... Now, is Tim Kavitz, is that... Ukrainian. Ukrainian? European? Yeah. Okay. Do you know where he's actually from, or...? He's born here. His parents were born here, too. Oh, born here? Yeah. Oh, both? I believe so. Okay. But uh, his grandparents from the Ukraine? I believe so. He's very uh, into the Ukraine. Yeah. Culture? Yeah. Um, now, obviously we've spoken to a lot of people, right? Okay. Uh, one of your relatives said that you had mentioned that um, these guys liked you, that broke into the house. 
Why did you say that? I didn't say that. I said that I asked them why, like when they separated my parents away from me, I asked them why can I be with them. And they're just like, you cooperated, just co keep cooperating. Okay, so you're saying you made that comment to a relative that they liked you, though. Why? I don't. Is that what you meant, or what was? I don't understand. I don't really understand. Okay. Did you feel like they liked you? No, they were. I, if you have a gun to your head, I don't think they, they like you very much. Okay, but they didn't shoot you? No. Okay. Why did they not shoot you? I'm, I don't know. When I when they took my parents away, I asked to go with them, and they are like, shut up. But you must have thought of this. You must be thinking. I, I still do, and I I spoke to the therapist about it. Okay. And why do you, what have you come up with in your mind? Why? The only thing they, they could say was they kept saying that, you know, I cooperated and to shut up and to cooperate, keep cooperating. Did you feel you, like your parents didn't cooperate? I don't know. Okay. Is there something that they didn't cooperate with? They were trying. That's what I mean. Like, so really they did cooperate when you think about it. There was no money to be found. No. They told the truth. Dad said he had sixty dollars, right? Um, so there wasn't anything that he wasn't cooperating with. I don't know. I'm just trying to say you were there. I'm just trying to get a feel for. Did you think he wasn't cooperating? No. I thought that he was. Everyone was cooperating. That's what they kept saying. No one will get hurt if you just cooperate. Okay. I'm trying to figure out where they didn't cooperate. Is there any time that you believe they didn't cooperate? I wasn't with them the entire time. I was only with them for a short period of time. Okay. But during that time that you were there, you were in the house, did you hear them not cooperating, I guess is the question. I didn't hear anything. They just kept asking where everything was, but right. did my your parents, mom couldn't remember. Okay. Did, did, you, did your parents lie to them? I don't know. So you can, from anything you heard, did they tell a lie? I don't know. Like, all I know, I don't know how much my father had. I didn't know how much. Okay. But they ultimately found your dad's wallet? I'm not sure. Okay. And your mom's purse? I, they couldn't find it after the internet and took me away. Okay. Um, but they never said, they never lied to them, I guess is what I'm getting down to, that you remember during any interaction you had. I don't understand it, no. No. Like, do you feel like they cooperated? Okay. Now, do you think there's any reason why they tied you up and didn't tie your parents up? Does that seem odd to you? Why does it seem odd? Because I was away, um, I was separated from them the whole time. And does it make sense that they would leave a witness behind? That they were going to kill somebody? Does that make sense? I guess I no, th Just thinking about it. Would it make sense for somebody that was going to kill somebody to leave a witness behind that could describe them. Does that make common sense for killers? It's not. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Do you think that was a mistake they made then? I don't know. They kept saying that they were running out of time. And it just, it doesn't take a long time to kill someone, though, does it? I know. I, I don't know. No. Okay. Uh, when you say they kept saying, who kept saying? Perpetrators. Okay, which ones though? One of them. He kept telling me that, you know, it's taking too long. Okay. All right. How long did this thing last in your mind? I know you didn't have a watch on, but... Or I guess you did have a watch on, didn't you? No, I didn't. Um, did you look at the time at all? 
Do you look at the time on your cell phone at all? Just estimating how long it went on, how in your mind, because you were there, how long did you think it lasted? I don't know. Okay. All I know is what people told me approximately. Okay, which is about what? They said it's like half an hour and 45, I don't know. Half an hour and 45, okay. All right. Now, I have your statement here, the first one that you gave, so I just want to go over some of the information there just to make sure that I, I understand it, okay? Um, in the morning, um, your mom was going to visit your grandfather, and um, she went outside, and then there was a problem with a gas leak on the street. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. When she first went out, did you go out with her? No? Okay. When she uh, was going, were you going to go with her originally? No. You never were going to go see your grandfather? I have seen him the day before, and she said to concentrate on my studies. Okay. Just that you did go outside, so I was wondering... She, she came back in and told me. She told you to come out. Okay. Uh, because of what? The gas leak. Okay. So she had gone out and then she came back to get you. Mm -hmm. And then you went out together? I it went in to change and then we left. Okay. So what did you change into then? Don't remember. Don't remember? Okay. Um, and then you went back out and they called the gas leak off. And you went back in and your mom went to see your grandfather. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Was anyone else at the house at that time? Yes, no? No. 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 Okay. And um, then you went and on to the internet um, or did some studies and you played some games on Facebook. Yep. Is that correct? Okay. What games do you play on Facebook? Best Dress City, Fonzo, Matthew Awards. What's the last one? Matthew Awards. Okay. And are you playing against somebody or by yourself? On my team, Okay. And who's in that? Any of your friends? Oh, my friend, Mark. Mark what? Fong. Mark Fong? Okay. So that morning, were you playing against him? We don't play against, like, we send each other gifts and you work on your own thing. You each other. Okay. And so you uh, were working on which, all three of those games, or just one of them? I don't know, all of them a little bit, just a little bit of that. Okay. And how do you, when you go on, how do you get a hold of him to know, do you have to phone him ahead of time and say, let's go online, or what do you do? Like, you do your own thing, and then, you know, if you're online, and the other person's online, you just... Mrs. Hey, can you send me this gift for that gift? Okay. And so is that what you did that day? You were in communication with him? I think. I don't remember anymore. Okay. All right. Okay. Then um, you played some piano. How long would you play piano for? Half an hour to an hour. Okay. And what do you actually do? Are you practicing? Or are you going over stuff you already know? Or... Are you playing for pleasure, or are you playing for, do you know what I mean? I practice with my older pieces. Okay. And then I do a little bit of practical for my dad, and then I do a little bit for pleasure. Okay, so it's a combination of everything. Okay. And you do that for about a half an hour. An hour. Okay. Okay, so you go through the day and eventually your mom comes back around 3.30. Did she tell you how your grandfather was doing or did you talk about that? Yeah, I said, you know, he wasn't eating much. Okay. And what's happened with your grandfather since? 
Okay, and when did that happen? It happen. Wow, eh? Sorry to hear that. And were you guys close, or what was your relationship like with him? That's your mother's father? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what about your grandma? Is she still around or? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. And he was in the nursing home, I understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, when did he actually come to Canada? Do you know? With my mom. Okay, so years ago. He brought the family over? Yeah, they all refuge to Canada. Pardon me? They all refuge to Canada. Okay. And does your mom have some brothers and sisters or? Lots. Lots, okay. And did they all come over? Most of them. Okay. And do some of them live on your street or is that your dad's side? No, that's my mom's side. Okay, so how many, and that's who you're staying with now? Your aunt? Your mom's sister? My mom's brother. Brother, okay. And what's your aunt's name that you're staying with? Yuda. Yuda? Yuda. Yuda? Yuda. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, so Adrian came over. Is that right? Okay. And anything, uh, you watch some shows. Did you talk about anything? No. Like when you watch your shows, do you have uh, talk about them after, or how's the, how's the evening going with him? I just watch and then what's next? If there's a joke, we laugh. Okay. And what were you watching that night? All of them were soccer girls, but then there was another show that okay. was in the one. And how many shows did you actually watch? Sure. Three, four, two. Okay. Yeah. And are those shows a half hour or an hour long? Some are an hour, some are half. Okay. And so the whole time he was there, did you watch TV or did you have some conversation or? We made TV conversation. What's that? Just talked about. TV conversation. What else did you talk about though? Like TV. That's it. Ever talked about anything else? Mm -hmm. Okay. When you watch TV, do you eat? I offered him, but uh, no. No, you had already eaten? We ate dinner. I he, ate dinner. He didn't want anything? No. Okay. And from your place, how far away does he actually live? 15, 20. Okay. And where about does he live? Brimley in the uh, Okay. And the address there? Like 15 Leesfoot. 15 Leesfoot? Mm -hmm. Now, when, do you ever do TV night at his place? And obviously, what well, what do your parents think of him? They like him. Why do they like him? Because his mom, is, uh, his mom and and parents are good people. Okay. And um, do the parents know each other? They know of each other. Okay. Like, do they go to the same church or anything like that, or same social events or anything? No. Okay. But they say they know they come from a good family. Okay. Um, now you went up to once he left. What did you do after he left? Went to my room. Okay. And what did you do? Watch TV. I was on the phone with Andrew. Okay. And this is the same Andrew that you lent the money to. Okay. And what did you guys talk about? How is he doing, his girlfriend? Okay. And how is he doing? Like, uh, he said that he's now working at home since he moved back home and put a strain on the relationship, but they work together. The, uh, she works at home since? No, she works at the insurance company that he works for. Okay. So has he got two jobs? I guess. Like, I know the insurance thing is just whenever it is, so the other one's more. Okay. 
And what else did he talk about? Not much else. That's about it. Okay. Um, and did he phone you or did you phone him? Mm -hmm. What would the usual thing be? Sometimes one of us contacts one, sometimes the other one contacts the other. Okay. But you're, you're verbally talking on the phone? Yes. Okay. And how long did that go on for? Not long. I don't remember the call time. About? Maybe 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Um, and then what happened? I hung up and then I called Ed. Okay. So you did call Ed and then what did you guys talk about? Watching TV, how his work day was. Now is this a routine for you to phone out in the evening to people or? Okay. Um, do your parents mind you calling people or? Yes, what? So I wish that. Okay. Um, so it's not just Daniel they don't want you talking to, it's they don't want you on the phone at all or? Yeah, not late night. Not late night, okay. But was that considered late or what? Yes. What's late for them? Nine, ten. Okay. And because your dad actually goes to bed fairly early? I think so. I don't remember when he actually. No, did. in general. Yeah. Okay. Because he works early. And yeah, what time does he get up in the morning usually? Five. Okay. Uh, and your mom, do your mom and dad sleep in the same room or do they sleep apart? Sometimes they sleep together, but lately she's been sleeping in my brother's room. Okay, which is? Across the way. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, so the one across from your room. Okay. How long has she been doing that for? Two years. Okay, so it's more than lately then? Okay, so for two years she's been sleeping across the hall. Any particular reason or? Okay. Now, what's her normal turn-in time? It depends. Um, normally like midnight. Okay, so she stays up later than everybody. Or maybe you stay up late too. I don't know. What What's your usual turn-in time? Like turn in around nine. Okay. Turn in. You go to your room, but yeah. how long do you usually stay up watching TV and trying to talk on the phone? Okay, so it can get obsessive. <laughs> okay. Um, so is your dad a sound sleeper then? Sometimes, yeah. Because he's upstairs during those times, but your mom's... Um, does she... Before, when she stays up to midnight, what does she do? Okay. And, and where does she do that from? Living room. How does it make you feel that they don't get along very well? What does that do to you? I have to feel mediated. Okay. And when you mediate, what do you got to do? Find a common ground. Okay. And what's kind of the common ground that you usually go to? Get my life back in So you try to be, if you can be good for them, it'll help them? Is that your position? Yes. Okay. Um, now, what's your typical fight about? My dad being loud and noisy and inconsiderate. My mom being naggy. My dad not doing enough housework. And Carrying up about the house, as opposed to other people's houses. Okay. What do you mean other people's houses? Just like uh, he has all these ideas for other people's houses that he doesn't think and do our house, like decorating and upgrading them. Okay. But when he talks about his friends' houses, he has a lot of ideas. Okay. But he doesn't apply them to. Okay. And how does that make your mom feel then? That he doesn't care about this house. Okay. How does that make you feel? I know that that's just my dad. Okay. How long has this been going on, the tension? I don't know if I can remember. It's always been there. Did your brother ever have to mediate? Okay. That year when I moved out, 
Well, not moved up, but the year I stayed away from home. Yeah. He, he took a lot of it. And he was at home at the time? It was his last year of high school. Okay. All right. And then when he left, you were on your own again? Okay. What do you and your brother discuss about that? How, does, how do you feel about it? We divide and conquer. Like I try to go and comfort my mom, help my mom off with stuff, and he goes to my dad calming him down and talking to him about some of his interests. Okay. So separate them, sense. Okay. Um, the arguments, How? what do they do during the arguments? Yell bigger. Okay. And when you hear the yelling, what does that do to you? It tells me I need to go to where they are to help them calm down. Okay. All right. Um, and how often do they actually get in one of these loud fights? Every day. Almost every day. Okay. Um, and what was the last fight that they had? My father came home late that day. Okay. And they had an argument about that? And how did that go? My mom just left for dance. Okay. My um, dad left first and then, sorry. He left after he came home from work and then he called and my uncle left and then by the time my dad got home and ate dinner, my mom had to leave. Okay. Um, so they didn't have the time to, but originally there was a fight that night? Yeah. Okay. And what did your mom say to your dad? She said, where did you go until that time? And she didn't believe that, just forgot to lock his something at work. Okay. Did it sound unreasonable to you or? I don't know. If you forgot something at work, then you forgot something at work. But usually, why she was yelling, because he doesn't turn on his phone or he doesn't let us know. So we okay. Just... She didn't think it was considerate, I guess, is what the argument really is about. Not so much that you were late, but you didn't call about it. Is that more? Yeah. <laughs> if I'm wrong, tell me, but I'm just... I think so, yeah. Okay. And, um, but he was, what, a half an hour late compared to usual? 20 minutes, yeah. 20 minutes, okay. What did she think he was doing in those 40 minutes? She never said. Did she believe that his story or not? She didn't really say. Okay. Now, was she more upset that he was late or that he just didn't call? He has a phone and he never uses it. Okay. Um, the supper, is it usually made for a certain time every night? Which is what time? Oh, five, five, three. So he'd have been home in time for that, though? Yeah. Okay. Right. Now, um, when you went up to your room to get ready for bed, what does that entail? Brush my teeth, go to my room. Okay. And um, what do you wear to bed? Do you wear pajamas? Sometimes, not all the time. Okay, what what would make you wear them or what would make you not wear them? Laundry or how lazy I am or how comfortable my regular clothes are. Okay. Did you actually change your clothes that night? Uh, I put on a sweater because it was cold. Okay. Which was what? A skating sweater, I believe. Okay. Um, and what did you have for bottoms? So did you actually change in out of them, or had how long had you had those on? I don't remember. I don't remember. When would have you put them on that day? Maybe in the morning, I guess. When my mom asked me to go with them. Okay. I think um, um, Underneath the skating shirt, what did you have on? So you had to take something off 
That's why I'm just getting to, if you put that on, did you take anything off? My bra. Okay. And maybe Because you obviously weren't walking around with just your bra all day. Is that fair? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I just don't remember yeah, just, the details. Yeah, take your time. I just don't remember, probably okay. it was a t-shirt or something. Yeah, okay. Um, and what you put on the, you remember that, okay. And then what happened? Somewhere. You were essentially then um, on the phone. Just watching this, watching TV and talking to Ed on the phone. Okay. How did the conversation end with Ed? I heard my father, my mother calling for my father. Okay. And then what? I have to go through this again. Okay. At, um, when you went to bed, was your mom home yet? She had just gotten home and I went down. I told Ed I'd be right back and I I went down, I said hi to her and, and I went back up to my room. Okay. So what time would have that been, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. Nine fifteen. Okay. So she got home, you went down, how long did you When she came home she changed. Yeah. And then did you that's see? when I know she came home when she went to change. And then she went back downstairs and I went down to say hi, grab a glass of water, I believe, and went back up to my room. Okay. And then you were back on the phone with Ed? Okay. When you heard what? I'm not calling up my dad. Okay. So, when you went down to see your mom, what did you talk about? Nothing. I just said hi. She was watching her tiny shows. I just left her alone. Okay. And what else did you do while you were downstairs? I went to go get a glass of water and then went back up to the stairs. Okay. And where did you get the glass of water from? Okay. Um, now, while you're downstairs, at any time do you make sure that the house is secure? That's usually the person who goes to bed last. Okay. Uh, just in our house, any time anybody's going to bed, they usually, each one of us, <laughs> end up doing it in case somebody else forgets. So did you uh, check the front door at all? No. 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 No? Back door, side doors? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you were the one to go to bed last, what doors would you check? Back door and front door. Okay. And what would you do? Make sure that they're locked. Okay. And if they weren't locked? Lock them. Lock them. Okay. Um, and the back door, how do you guys secure that? Lock and then pull and close. Okay, but is that a slider? Yep. Do you guys put a piece of wood in there at all? No. no. So you just make sure it's locked. Yep. Okay. Um, and so who would be the person that mostly does that then? My mother. Okay. Um, is it typical that if she's coming in late that she would lock it? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If it's already dark outside, would she lock the door as soon as she comes in? You know, as opposed to being in the middle of the day and you just... I think I'm pretty sure I don't... I'm not 100% sure. Like, let's just say you came in and it was already dark outside. Mm -hmm. What would you do? Well, I'd lock the door behind me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you don't intend on going out again. It's just common. Common practice. Okay. All right. Were you injured at all during the whole process? Not really. Okay. Not really anything? No. Okay. When they tied your hands, what kind of uh, style did they tie them? I'm not sure. I'm like that. Okay. And when they tied you to the banister, how did they do that? How did uh, how did they tie? I don't know. They maybe kept looking down. Okay. Let me look. Yeah. But well, what could you feel? 
so a tight and then like another tight. Where did it feel tight? In the second arm. Okay. So what was around your upper arm? Black face. Okay. And what was around, how else were you tied? On the arm Okay. And were your wrists tied to the banister? No. How do you know? Because they tied my wrists first and then they tied my arms again. Okay. Now, um, you mentioned um, on the tape that you were getting loose. What did you mean by that? The, the upper, my upper arm was falling. It's just, the string was falling. Okay, where did it fall to? It's short distance, I think. Okay, and how did you get it to do that? I don't remember. I was just wiggling and trying to get um, and where did that string end up when the police got there? They cut it up. Okay. What's that? I'll go through it. Okay. Well, these details are important because it, it shows us what uh, what they did, right? And we need, we need to get that. Um, the one thing I do want to go over is the description of the gentleman that you said, you called him number one. Can you tell me that again? The first person that uh, you dealt with or that... Can you help me with that? You're going to have to speak up, I can't hear you. Slightly shorter than, sorry? Just slightly shorter than you. Yep. Which is what? Maybe five six. Yep. What kind of build? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what type of face? Round face. Okay. And... Age? Okay. And then there was a another gentleman that you called number two previously. Yeah. What would you, how would you describe him? Okay. Was his face covered the whole time? With what? Okay. Cloth. Okay. And. Okay, I appreciate that. And the third person. I did see some very well. Okay, well, you did see some of them. Yeah, it's taller. And what color? It's all dark, so. Okay. But he had a Caribbean accent. Okay. And how do you know it was Caribbean? It's probably like somewhere here on TV and people are not. Okay. What about um, voices for the other two? Number one. Neither of them had an accent, or? I like to speak very much, so I'm not sure. When he did speak? Well, it wasn't so good. Okay, and what were those syllables? Okay. Okay? Yeah. And what else did you hear from him? I don't remember. Okay. All right. Um, do you need anything to drink at all? Okay. You realize that it's important, though? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, obviously, 
everything is so important that night that it's probably the most important night of your life. And I know it's tough to keep going over, but it's important, okay? Uh, I'm just gonna step out for a second, okay? Did you need anything? No? Okay, hold tight. I won't be long. Sorry about that. All right. Um, the money that you um, they took from you, how much was that again? Two thousand in mine, and I don't see that. I believe I heard my mom give it to me eleven hundred, but I don't know. Okay. So, frogs of your own, two thousand. And what kind of denominations was that? It was a 50, um, 20. Okay. And if you had it in a stack, how big would that stack be? Okay. And where did you keep that? Um, in my night table underneath the TV. Okay. And how long had you kept it there? Before that six months? It was in uh, my other bedside table. Okay, which is where? My bedside table. Why did you switch it up? Because 
that one got full. Okay. <laughs> so you moved it over. Did you have any other money in your room in any other places? Two twenties in my wallet. Okay. Did they get that? I believe they did. Okay. Did you give it to them? Uh, I they pointed it at one of my purse. Okay. And what did they do with that? Okay. You saw him take it or not? Okay. And you haven't been back to check since? Okay. Okay, gotcha. Now, um, and where did that money come from? Some of it I just recently withdrew, and others from money I can get from certain. Okay. How much did you withdraw? Twice, but uh, it was to pay back my mom for uh, yeah. Okay. So how much did you owe? Five hundred. Okay. And when did you take that five hundred out? Recently, the day before. Okay. And the the other five hundred? Uh, early on in the week. Okay. Maybe like two weeks. And where did you get that from? I'm sorry. Where did that come from? In my bank. And where's your bank? Uh, when I, was, I don't remember the other withdrawal, but my one withdrawal was at, my most recent withdrawal was at Warden and Warden, and I don't remember where I withdrew the other one. Okay. Um, but you went through a teller, or did you go through a cash machine? Machine. Okay, for both, or just one? Uh, I'm pretty sure for both. Okay. And how much did you take out each time? Is that your maximum that you can take out on the machine? Okay. How much do you have in your account? Over a thousand. Okay. And where did that come from? My mom. Your mom? And when did she give it to you? She gives me these checks. Okay. She works and she puts down the money. She works where? Mm. I don't know if that's right because it's packaging company. Okay. And that's on the side or? Yes. Okay. And she puts it in your name and you have to give her the money back then? Yes. Okay. She keeps the tab and okay. at the time I withdraw and I give it to her. Okay. And how come you hadn't withdrawn or how come you hadn't given it to her yet? She hadn't asked for it yet. She's like, just give it a few days and then but she knew you withdrew it? Uh, no, she's like, I will be withdrawing from it. Okay. Yeah, she didn't know you already took it. Yeah. So why would you not just give it to her then? Why would you withdraw it and not give it to her? Um, just, I'd, I'd only give it to her because I should forget it's right in her book. Okay. All right. So how often does she give you the, she has a check made out to you. Do you put the deposit in or? Yeah. Okay. How often does she make a deposit in your account? Uh, once a week. Okay. For 500 or no, what's the amount? Random, random amount. For 200, 300. Okay. And they come from a packaging company? Yes. And where's that? We're in the 14th area. And does she report there every day or? No, just whenever they need her, they'll call in. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Now, the reason why I'm here today, okay, is that I'm an expert, okay, in what we call truth verification. Okay, I'm not a homicide detective, okay, although I work on a lot of homicides, okay. So my job in any case, and anybody that's a witness in this case, I have to speak to, okay, after they've been interviewed originally by anybody else. Okay, and so what it's about is truth verification, okay? So basically all my studies come into interviewing and uh, detecting deception, uh, determine if somebody's telling the police the truth, okay? Because every investigation that we run that's a homicide, we run a parallel investigation, okay? And when I talk about a parallel investigation, what I mean by that is obviously the detectives that are assigned to the case, okay, are trying to determine who's responsible for the home invasion, who's responsible uh, for what happened there, okay? 
That's their job. Okay, my job is to determine whether everything somebody has told us as a witness or as a reporting party is actually the truth. Okay? Now, in my experience as a police officer, no matter what the case is, okay, um, for some reason or another, people make mistakes in that they don't always tell the truth. Okay? Um, they may tell some of the truth, but they don't always tell all of the truth. Do you know what I mean? Okay? And I know in your life you've already had occasions where you, you're well aware of what half-truths mean, right? What do they mean? You don't tell the truth. Yeah. So when we're talking about truth, we're not just talking about a person saying something uh, that's not true, right? That's one way of not telling the truth, simply by making something up, right? Do you agree? Okay. But also withholding information is not telling the truth, okay? It's purposeful deception, really, right, okay? They're leaving stuff out that may assist the investigation, okay? That may lead uh, to the people that are responsible for being caught, right? Um, and that's where uh, we talked earlier about, um, so some people obstruct the investigation, okay? Because they, they provide facts that are totally not true, okay? Other things they tell about the case obviously did happen. So what we talk about is a combination of people telling things that are totally not true, leaving information out would be two ways that people uh, haven't been truthful. Okay. So how do I make my conclusions? Okay. So some of the ways is obviously I count on my experience, right? I talk to thousands of people, okay? And I basically know when somebody's not being straightforward with me, okay? I can tell by the language they use, how they answer the questions, their body language, how they treat the question, that something's wrong here, okay? This doesn't make sense, okay? The other thing is something, an understanding of what common sense is, okay? Could this have happened that way? By what the person is telling me, could have it even happened like that, okay? Is it realistic? Is it plausible? Okay? So, basically we're trained in statement analysis, okay? So, what I did with your statement is, I wrote it all out. Every word that you said, okay? Just like everybody else that gave a statement. Every noun, pronoun, verb, everything, okay? And people are trained to speak in a certain language, okay? And when they are not being truthful, that shows up in their language. They don't even know they're doing it, okay? But when we analyze the statement itself, we know whether they're being truthful or not truthful, okay? And these days, we even have software that assists us in that, okay? We're in the modern ages, right? Okay, so we have uh, computer programs. And one of the ones that we utilize in these cases is an analysis program called event probability analysis, okay? And what we do is we feed everything into the computer. Basically, the computer, I type it out, and we feed it in, and it takes, you scan it in, actually, and it takes a copy of everything that's been said. And it analyzes um, what a person has said, okay? And based on what they say, it will tell us where the areas of deception are, okay? When something's missing uh, that they're not telling us, okay, areas of concern and uh, areas that are flat out not truthful, okay, and areas that they you come back with a result that says not plausible, okay, because what it is is this software analyzes, it's being entered by all police forces, okay, so it has data from thousands of cases, right, so if it gets information that's totally never happened before in any other case, right, that tells you something, right? Because human beings, there's only so many ways to do something, okay? And people follow patterns, okay? And when things go outside of a normal pattern, that's a red flag, right? Do you agree? When, th when, th when things don't add up. So that, that's another um, thing that we look into. Of course, I have to go over all the forensics of a case, okay, because that's evidence, okay, 
And you're already aware of how many days the police were at your house, right? About What's that? About six. Yeah. Days on, on days on days. And when they were there, okay, they're not just there uh, taking a couple pictures or anything, okay? They're going over that house with a fine tooth comb, okay? They're going over every hair fiber, every skin cell, every bit of blood, because essentially, you know what DNA is, right? Okay? Basically, a person cannot go in or out of a, anywhere without leaving a part of themselves behind, right? You understand that? Do you watch CSI at all? A little bit. A little bit. But you're, it tells you that it would be like if you and I walked out of this room right now, right? And we brought in our uh, forensics experts, right? And what they would do is they would collect any hair, any fibers, uh, any skin cells, any DNA that was in this room, okay? And what they could do with that is simply say, at the end of the day, they would say, you know what? Jennifer Pan was in that room and Bill Gates was in that room, okay? It's conclusive that um, we can't go in and out without leaving parts of ourselves behind. You understand that, right? Okay. So obviously the forensic in this case uh, will tell us a lot of information, okay? Who was in what room? Who wasn't in what room, okay? What you have to remember is what is there and what is not there are just as important, okay? So if somebody was said to be in a certain room and our experts went through there and there were no fibers from that person, what would that tell you? Yeah, they weren't there, okay? Um, so in my work, I'm looking for what's there, but also what's not there is just as important. And you know what? A lot of times it's even more important, okay? Because it goes to verifying what the person, what the witnesses have told them, okay? Or what they haven't told them, oh, right? Okay, so that's, that, that's another thing that, uh, of course, that's uh, done at every scene, okay? The other thing that we do is obviously we talk to a lot of people, and you already know we've done that because we've talked to a lot of your friends and people that you know, right? So you're well aware that we don't leave any rock unturned, okay? And so go, we go out and do that. Uh, you already know um, that we've contacted these people because that's part of what we do in every investigation, okay? Every interview is important. Every person that may have any knowledge at all is important. Right. We also talk to people that have talked to the witnesses, okay? So if we've interviewed you, for instance, and then we go and interview that person that's talked to you, they will tell us what you said, okay? And if there's odd things in what you've told them or they don't make sense, of course, we find that out because they tell us, right? And so that's another way we can determine if somebody's being truthful. They tell someone else something different than what they told uh, us ourselves or something that's in conflict with that, right? Uh, so that's another thing that we do. Um, the other thing we do is we have to reach out to what we call modern technology, okay? So there's some of the things that we utilize as satellite, okay? Now, are you, do you know what satellite can do? Okay, do you watch any of these uh, when uh, these war programs on TV where they do bombings and stuff. Have you ever seen any of that? Or when uh, the Iraq war was on? Do you ever see any of the news clips where you can see the satellite honing in on buildings? Okay. So we can go back and obtain satellite information. Okay. And essentially the satellite's a 24-hour video that's going on, uh, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? It's recording information, okay? And that's how the military uses it in, you know, for precision bombing and everything else because they're able to find out where bombs are inside buildings and hone in on that through satellites and heat-seeking uh, uh, apparatuses that tell you what's going on inside, right? Okay? So we're able to go back uh, and review that, okay? And so we would have to obtain... Uh, that data for a specific address, uh, get it for the dates and time that we're concerned with, okay? And basically, if people are moving around in a house, 
um, it's like an x-ray, okay? And basically we're able to tell, you know, are those movements, are those actions, that number of people consistent with the story that we've been told? Um, are the people in the positions that the witnesses are telling us they were in? Uh, or are they different? Okay, and if they're different, why are they different is what, what our question becomes, right? So that's, a, that's another uh, thing that we do. Obviously, just to go back to forensics for a minute, what we're doing is stuff like, um, in this case, that doorknob is very important, that door lock, okay? And so we're looking for who was the last one that actually uh, touched that doorknob, our door lock, right? Okay. Um, did somebody lock it last or did somebody uh, unlock it? Okay, so we would see, uh, you would get like fingerprints of one person locking and then overlap by the person that unlocked it, that type of thing. Um, and um, again, it would just be information that would go to determine what happened on in that house, right? And uh, from there. The other thing, of course, um, in any case, you know about Crime Stoppers, right? Have you heard of Crime Stoppers before? Yeah, you call them. Yeah, okay. When you get a case like this, okay, people want to help, okay? It's in the papers, it's everywhere, okay? So people actually end up coming to us to help us out with the case, okay? Now, in a case like this, we're actually very fortunate because the more people that are involved in a crime, the more information we always get, okay? If a person goes out and commits a crime themselves, who knows about it? Just themselves, for sure, and maybe anybody they tell, right? In a case where they actually is uh, multiple people involved, so in this case, three people inside the house and a number of other people involved on the peripheral, right? Um, each of them knows. Okay, so now we're getting into a higher number of people knowing what happened. And you know what? Somebody always tells somebody else. Okay? And so that doubles the number of people that know. Okay? And then over drinks and everything else, that person tells another person. And before we know it, a ton of people actually know what happened that night. Okay? And suddenly we get people calling in because what? You know why? They want to help. Okay? There's other people that just want the money. They know what happened, they've heard about it, they've heard it through a friend, okay? In all the years that I've been policing, you don't know how many people actually called in on their own friends. It happens all the time, okay? Because they want that money, okay? They get greedy. So we get calls all the time from people uh, that are involved. We also get people that are actually involved in the crime telling about other people that were involved in the crime. And they're actually going to collect money on a case that they were involved in. Does that make, you hear what I'm saying? Okay. And, and so at the end of the day, okay, there's so many resources available to me um, that at the end of the day, I'm going to know if a person's telling me the truth or not, okay? Whether they, and it may not be to me because I'm analyzing also every statement they made to the police, okay? And the other things that we do is obviously we get uh, forensic sciences and profiling people involved to determine the events of these things, okay? Now, I can tell you that nothing surprises me in this job, okay? I am well aware that anybody on this earth is capable of making a mistake, okay? I don't care who they are. I don't care um, if they're a priest. I don't care if they're a school teacher. I don't care what the situation is. Given a certain set of circumstances, Everyone has the capability, Jennifer, of making a mistake, doing the wrong thing, okay? Um, the key, though, when I talk to people is when they made a mistake, okay, that's one thing, right? The key is to not keep making the same mistake, okay? 
and to get that information out and get it off your chest. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? Okay? So, at the end of the day, from this case, and I can tell you I've spent literally a week on this case, going over information after information, accessing all these sources, speaking to every other expert on the case. Okay? And at this point, Jennifer, I know that you've not been truthful with the police. Okay? You've not told us everything that you know purposely. Okay? And that you've left information out. Okay? There's a number of inconsistencies in what you've told the police. Okay? One of the things you have to remember is that your dad was there. Okay? And your dad had a front row seat to all of this. Okay? And your dad's a very smart man. Okay? And he has a very clear perception of what's going on. And he tells a very truthful story because I've gone through this whole process with him. Okay? I've had to do the same thing. And I know he's being truthful. Okay? The problem is that your story what you're telling is not truthful, okay? And we have to clear this up, okay? Your rendition of what happened, one, a lot of events you say that happened never did, okay? A lot of things that you told the police happened never happened, okay? They never happened in the sequence that you've told, okay? You've got to remember that your dad was there, Okay? That's just one part of it. There's lots of other things that tell me that you've not been truthful. All this analysis that I've been doing. But on top of it, that yours doesn't match at all, except for very few factors that you, you've told truth, but you haven't told all the truth. We're getting into where, you know, you've spent a considerable amount of time in the last seven years telling half truths. Okay? And I can understand why, okay? You've had a tough life, okay? What's happened to you, to me, equates to abuse, okay? And all the stresses that you've had and forced to lie, I can understand why you did it, okay? But you're in another situation here where you're under another tremendous amount of stress, okay? And that stress is brought on by those same factors that brought on stress before. Okay, the number one thing that brings on stress to you is when you're not truthful, right? That hurts you, right? Okay, and it doesn't feel good inside, does it? It breaks down the person that you are. Because at the end of the day, you're a good person, I know that. You've got a good heart, okay? In this case, though, you've made mistakes, okay? And you're involved in this, I know that. Okay, there's no question about it, okay? The only question right now is, are you going to keep making mistakes? Are you going to go on the route that you've gone on over the years and try to pretend that things happen that never happened? Okay, are you going to not face reality here? Okay, you were not truthful to the police in this case. We know that you're involved. We've done our homework, okay? We have to resolve that now, here today, okay? I need to know from you what really happened, okay? And I mean, who else is involved in this, okay? Because there's no doubt, Jennifer, that you are, okay? We know that. We're past that, okay? There's no question about it at all, okay? And I know why this has happened, okay? You have spent your whole life trying to live up to expectations that you can't meet, okay, and that stress the hell out of you. You're a 24-year-old woman being treated like a 15-year-old, okay? What, you've never done anything that terrible in your life, but you're being treated like you have. You're not being treated like the adult that you are. Yes, you made some mistakes, big deal. You're not the first person that has gone out and not told their parents that they're dating a guy because... In your culture, they don't accept it. I understand that. I've talked to people in here that have kept that secret for their whole life. 
from their parents. Okay, so that's not abnormal, but that puts a lot of stress on you, right? That's not easy for you, is it? No. Now, what we need to get down to here today, Jen, is what really happened. You need to tell me what went on. Because you know who was in that house that night. You, you do, Jen. There's no question about that, okay? There's no question about it, okay? You have actually given an improper description of the person you were dealing with upstairs. Number one, you falsified the whole description of that person. We know that, okay? We know that, okay? He, yes, you did, Jen, okay? You did. You've made a, a mistake here, and we've got to get to the bottom of that. That person did not exist in that house that night. I know that. Okay, we've done our homework. Okay, you heard on the news that there was video, right? Okay. It wasn't three black guys that left that house. You know that, and I know that. Okay. So we need to get down to why you have purposely told us a false description of number one. Okay. No, Jen. It's totally wrong, and it was done on purpose, okay, to mislead us, okay, because you're involved in this, okay? You cannot deny that, okay? You cannot deny that. We know now, okay? So let's just get it out on the table. You've made a mistake. I know that, okay? But you can't live with this any longer than this. Your, your, your buddy nervous wreck over this thing. This thing... If you could take it back, I know that you would. If you could go back to that day and play this all over again, it would be different. Okay? But you need to right now know that we know that you're involved. There's no question about that. None whatsoever. Okay? But what we also know is that you're a good person. Okay? That's made a mistake here, right? You've, you've made some bad decisions, okay? And it's, you know, how you made the bad decisions that not talking, telling your parents what's up. You don't want to do that with us. Okay, you don't want to do that with the police, do you? Yeah, but... You don't want to mislead me, do you? No. Okay, so let's not do that. You made a mistake that night. You got involved with the wrong people, okay? You got involved in the wrong set of circumstances, okay? But that's over with now. We're past that. Okay, we know that that happened. Okay, but you know what? In all my years of policing, it doesn't matter what goes wrong with people. It's never too late to do the right thing. You know that, and I know that. Okay, and what you can do here today is actually do the right thing. Okay, you have to do the right thing. Okay, you can't go around continuing this. Okay. Remember when you said what it did to you when you went through those years of depression? That was brought on by not being truthful. Living a lie. You don't want to keep living this lie. Okay? Everybody knows. Okay? You know, and you're getting the feeling from everybody around you that they know. Okay? Nobody is surprised. Okay? There's nobody surprised here. Okay? After what you've been through... I'm surprised this didn't happen a lot earlier, truthfully. Okay, you're 24 years old, and you were a prisoner in your own house. You had lost your own identity. There was no Jennifer anymore, okay? You were living for what somebody else wanted. You weren't you. You were what somebody else wanted. You were living someone else's expectations, okay? And yes, family is important, but when family takes over you as a human being, when they take your identity, there is no more Jen. So no matter how good their intentions are, no matter how much they love you, they're taking away Jen, okay? And you have gone through this for years in the middle of tension, tension that got to the point that it makes you sick. Your stomach churns over it. You don't wake up a day that there's not some issue on the table not some stress in your household, okay? 
essentially you've been told to live up to expectations you yourself years ago knew that you could not do okay they're taking away Jen there is no Jen they took Jen away the Jen that just wants to be a piano teacher why isn't that good enough why was that not good enough that was great expectations why not just be a lab technician why the doctor why does it always have to be something bigger? Why can't it just be what you want? And all that has resulted in what's happened on, a, on November 8th. The tension built up to a point that, you know what? It's like an animal that gets cornered. It's, at some point, the nicest dog, when it's cornered, bites back. Okay? It's called self-preservation. Okay? And in your case, all that's happened here is self-preservation. Eighteen months ago, Jen, you chose your family over Daniel. Okay? But you gave up Jen in the process. You gave up yourself to this whole thing. There was no Jen anymore. The Jen that just wanted to, to teach piano, that wasn't good enough. The Jen that just wants a normal nine-to-five job, that's not good enough. And Jen was in a state of depression, backed into a corner. And what it came down to is one thing, self-preservation. Self-preservation overrules anything in life, okay? At the end of the day, it's like your life is being choked out of you. That's what's been happening for the last seven years. And basically, the grip on your throat, on your life, has shrunk and tightened up to a point where either you do something about it or it's the end of Jen. And you've diminished to a point where the only thing you could do is fight back for once. And that's what's happened here again. We know that. We know that. And I, again, I'm surprised it took this long. A 24-year-old young woman being treated as a prisoner in her own home. I can't imagine. Like the rules that they have are for 12-year-olds, not for somebody twice that age. Yes, their intentions might have been good, but they're not realistic. They're not, Dan, were they? Jen? Mm -hmm. Their expectations weren't realistic, were they? Mm -hmm. You couldn't live up to them, could you? You tried to, right? Am I right? Yep. And finally you had to bite back, right? You had no other choice. You felt like you had no other options. You thought of everything else, including killing yourself to make this change, right? Right? I'm right, aren't I, Jen? Right? It's okay. We understand. Let's talk about it. Let's get it out in the open, Jen. That's all this is about understanding. We know that you were involved. We know what you did. But you can't live like this. you got to get it off your chest. You've been so stressed out from the moment this happened. You knew that it was going to happen that night. Before it happened. And why you froze on your bed there is because reality had set in. The plan was in motion. There was no turning back. And I know right now you wish you could turn it back, right? You wish you could go back before that night and stop this, right? Right, Jen? Right? What happened?
what happened. Okay, it happened, yes. The guys came in. Okay, but you were involved. That's what the difference is here. Okay? Right? A lot of what you said happened, but a lot of it that you said didn't happen. Okay? Okay, but it's what you're not saying that's important here. You were part of setting this plan in motion. Right? You were behind this. Right? You have to get it off your chest, Jen. It's killing you. Get it off your chest, and we're going to talk it out here. We're going to understand, and we're going to get this pressure off you, because that's what you need right now. Do the right thing now, Jen. We already know. You're not going to surprise me here. Okay, I already know what the answer is. I can't let. I can't stand to see you go through this any longer. You've been a physical wreck because you know that you haven't been truthful with us. A lot of things that you said are true, but there's so many more that aren't, and you're leaving so much information out. We know that. You have to sit there and ask yourself, yes, he knows. Bill knows. Everyone knows. But what you have to do now is get the strength in you to tell us why it happened. I have some pretty good reasons there why it happened. Like I, to me, it was a form of abuse here because you can't do that to a person. You can't. This is Canada. We're in the 21st century here. You cannot take everything out of a person. You can have expectations for your kids, but you can't expect them to do everything the way you want it. Okay. It's just like your dad said about it, fixing everybody else's home but not fixing his own. Okay, it's the same with you. Okay? He was trying to make a future for you bigger than it should have been. And in the process of his love for you, he made the mistake of actually pushing you away. Right? All his good intentions... What happened? All his good intentions went the other way because he made too high of expectations on a young woman. We know that, Jen. You know that. And now's the time to get it out in the open here. Right? You know the importance of telling the truth when it really counts. And you know what it does to you as a, as a person when you have to deny things that you know are true. Right? It doesn't feel good, does it? Jen? It doesn't feel good to have secrets, does it? No. You have to let me know what happened here. Okay? Okay. But you were involved. Right? That's the part we need. Okay? We need to hear that from you because we know you were. We're going to talk this out and figure out what happened. I'm going to make it easy on you, Jen. All you have to do is tell me that you were involved, right? I'm right, aren't I? You know it. We know it. It's plain as day. I'm 100% correct here. I wouldn't be sitting here saying this if it wasn't, Jen. Okay. But we have to get through this. You have to get through it. Yes, people came into your house that night. Yes, that part's true. The descriptions you've given, you've held back. You haven't been straightforward. Okay, I know that. Okay. <laughs> No, you haven't. Okay, we know that. Okay, let's get it out on the table here, Jen. Okay? It's not true. Okay? You were involved in this, right? You knew before that night that this was going to happen. I'm going to make that easy on you. That's a true statement, right? You knew before that night that they were coming. 
right? That's all I need, Jim. Let's get the truth out here now. You knew before they came that they were coming, right? Right? Be honest with me, Jim. Give me that. Right? You knew before they got there that they were coming. Right? Now, the good thing is here that you didn't actually shoot anybody. That's a positive in this situation. Because you couldn't do that. You're not that type of person. Right? And a lot of people do do that. A lot of kids make the mistake of going out and doing it themselves, okay? You couldn't do that, I know that. I know that, and that's a good thing. But you did make a mistake because you got involved in it. Jennifer, you don't need to live with this pain anymore. Let it in. Look at me, Jim. Let's be honest with each other. I've been nothing but honest with you here today, and I hope you can do the same with me. I'm here to listen. Jen? It's not worth it anymore. It's hurting you. I need to know the details, I can't even say. But I can tell you one thing, is that we already know, so you can't change that. I, to I know you did. But it got too far ahead of you, right? You didn't see, you didn't think this far ahead, did you? But once they started, once they came in, you couldn't stop it, could you? Could you? Jen? Hmm? I wanted it to stop. I know. Why didn't they stop for you? Hmm? I didn't know who they were. But you were part of the planning, right? You have to tell me that part, and then we're going to work through it together. Do you know what I'm saying? You didn't want this, to, you wanted to stop it. You have to prove that to me now. Because at the end of the day, we have to stop this from happening to someone else. Right? What's happening to me? Jen, we're gonna have to deal with it one step at a time, okay? I'm gonna be honest with you. I need to know what you did. And then you and I are going to work through this together. Because the most important part is, of this whole thing is that we do the right thing for your mom. Right? I am her voice right now. I'm working for your mom. That's my job. And I have to get to the bottom of this for your mom. But I need you with me on it. Okay? I want you... To step back for a minute and think what would your mom want you to do right now and I know she's a good woman and she's taught you all your life that Jennifer no matter how bad it gets no matter what you've done wrong you can come to me and tell me and I'll understand right And you need to talk to me. Okay, but let's get back to how they got there, why they got there, okay? Because we know that you helped get this thing in order, right? That's what we need to start with. Then we're going to work through the case, okay? But we got to start... What happened to me? Well, I don't know at this point, okay? 
Okay, because I don't know what you're going to tell me other than that you were involved, but I need to hear it. Okay? But I can tell you one thing. I'm going to sit here as long as it takes for you to get this off your chest, okay? Do you know what I mean? Do it. What's that? Okay, you need to tell me how you got involved in this. We know that, Jen. We need to talk about that. Okay? You wanted it to stop, then you have to stop this right now. Okay? Because this needs to stop. You can't go around like this anymore. Hiding secrets from your own family. They know, Jen. They know. They're not going to be surprised. What they're looking for you to do right now is to do the right thing. That's what I'm looking for. That's what you're looking for. Right? You know what? What I tell people is just tell the truth. Okay? And we're going to sit down here and we're going to get to the bottom of it. Okay? Together. Okay? Jen? What happened? How did it start? And I'm talking before that day. How did it start before that day? How did this thing get in motion? There was a plan ahead of time, and I want to know about the plan. You can do that. Okay? Be strong, Jen. Jen? Be strong here. What you have to remember is that we're not offside here. Okay, we know already that it happened. There's absolutely no doubt that you were involved in this, or we wouldn't be sitting here right now. You've been waiting and wondering when the police were going to ask you or tell you this. You thought it was going to happen the last time you were here. Right? Stay with me again. Let's get through this. You're sorry out now, are you not? Are you sorry for what happened? Pardon? You wish you could take it back? Jen? Okay, that's good to hear. That's so positive. You wish it didn't happen, right? That night you wish you'd never got this plan in motion, right? Right? You wish you never told anybody to do this, right? Again? You gotta get it off your chest. And I'm looking for the Jennifer that knows the right from wrong. Are you there? Yes, okay, sit up and let's talk. Okay, I know this has been hell for you. You have gone through hell for years. All you were looking for is a break, a chance to be on your own, to make your own decisions, to be Jen. Right? That's all you were looking for. Right? Right? You felt cornered. You felt like you didn't have any other options. Right? Jen? You didn't have another option, did you? At the time, you felt like this was the only thing you could do. 
but once it started that night, you wish you could have stopped it so much, right? Jen? You wish you could have stopped it. How did it start, Ken? Okay. Look at me. How did it start? What was your plan? Let's just go through the plan that you had, okay? Let's start there. We know that you weren't the one that pulled the trigger. We know that. And we know that you would have, you could have stopped this whole thing. We know that. But we also know that you were involved from the start. Okay? And what this all was, was a latch this effort to live your own life. To be your own person. To make your own decisions. Right? It would happen to anybody in the same circumstances. Now I do a lot of reading. And over 300 kids in North America every year are involved in the parents' deaths. Okay? And when we look into those cases, there's always a common factor. That those kids have had to live up to expectations that weren't reasonable. That they weren't being treated the way a human being should be treated. The house rules were just so out of whack and you know that because look at all your friends. Look at all the people around you. Does anyone else have a curfew for 9 o'clock at 24 years of age? Jen? Do you know anybody else with those expectations? Yes or no? Hmm? Yes or no? Do you know anyone that has to be under the pressure that you're under? No. I myself don't know of anybody, and I investigate these all the time. I've never seen someone under 24 years of age that has to have gone through what you've gone through. The taking of the love of her life out of her life. The decision to make her own decisions. You had no choice here, Jen, I know that. And anybody else in your situation would have done the exact same thing. The only thing different is I would say that they'd have done it a lot earlier. They would have looked for a way out. You've tried everything. You've told them, but no one listened. They didn't listen, Jen. Now, I want you to ask, I want you to answer a simple question for me, okay? Can you do that? Look at me for a sec here. Look at me for a sec. I have a simple question for you. I just want to hear yes. Okay? You knew this was going to happen, right? Ken? Jennifer? Let's work through this together, okay? It's okay. You made a mistake. You made a mistake that you can't change. 
when you can change the fact that you're not going to keep making these mistakes. Right? You don't want to keep making these mistakes, do you? Ken? You want to be a part of the solution, not the problem? You want to be a part of the solution here? Ken? Okay. When did you first start planning this? When did you first plan this? Just give me a date. Ken? When did you first start planning this? When was the final straw? What was the final straw? Because that's what this is all about. Hmm? What was the final thing that did it? Hmm? Jen, do you want to be a good person here? Okay. And you know when a good person makes a mistake, they have to face that mistake, right? Right? What do you think should happen? I don't know. What would you like to see happen in this case? What's that? Justice for your mom. Okay. So, to get that justice, we have to nail the whole story. Right? Well, one thing is that you're going to be Jen again. Right? That, I can promise you, you're going to be a person making decisions for Jen. You're going to prove to people that you know what the right thing to do is. That's what is going to happen. You're going to have the chance to explain to me why this got out of hand. You know what I mean? But that's where we have to start. I can't make any promises to you. Okay? You know that. But I can promise I'm going to sit here and listen, and we're going to get justice for your mom. That's what I can promise you. We're going to get justice for your mom. I want to work together with you to get it, though. That's the only way. Right? You can understand that. We have to work together now, Jen. We can't be on opposite sides here. If there's going to be justice for your, for your mom. It has to be a partnership. You and I have to work together. And we'll get that. Okay? So how did this start? Jen? Do it for your mom. That's all this is about. I've watched you and all these statements. Okay? And, you know, I know what the truth is, and I know that you loved your mother, and I've told everybody that. I said, the worst thing about this whole thing is that poor girl loved her mom, but she got involved over her head. And every word you heard from your mom, it affected you. I know this is the whole worst thing about this whole thing. And you'd give anything just to talk to her one more time. Right? But she needs to understand what happened, what went wrong here. 
okay? So I want you to pretend that I am your mom. And get it off your chest. I want you to think of you telling your mom what went wrong. Okay? And then we're going to get justice for mom. And we're going to do it together. Okay? Jen, can we work together? Can you and I work together on this? Okay, let's... This is a plan that went wrong, okay? You had a plan. You have to tell me about that plan. Then we're going to work through the rest of it, okay? So we have to start with you, okay? Because you got those people there, okay? You set this in motion, okay? We have to know how that happened. Then we're going to figure out it together, okay? All right? That's what your mom wants right now. She's watching us here. She's wondering, is Jen going to make the right decision here? Is Jen, after all of this, going to come out on top doing the right thing? Is she going to be truthful now? Because then, really, all these other things that you've done in your life, you know what? Everybody's lied to their parents. Okay? That's just life. Okay? I have a daughter, too, and she's lied to me. And it hurts as a parent. But at the end of the day, what do we want our kids to do? We don't mind so much if they make a mistake, but we don't want them to keep making the mistakes, right? Ken, that's what it's all about. That's Someday you're going to be a parent, and you're going to want the same thing for your kids, right? And you want to be able to say to a kid honestly that no matter what, you can tell me. And right now, if your mom was sitting with me here, that's all she would expect is that you tell Bill what went wrong here so that there can be justice. Okay? It goes beyond just yourself here. Okay? We have to think of your mom. Okay? She's the most important. There's really nothing else for me that's more important. I'm her voice here today. That's who I work for. Okay? Do you know what I'm saying? As a police officer, I have to work for the people that don't have a voice anymore. I have to sit and figure out what went wrong in every case in order that justice can get done. And that's what you want, right? Because we both want the same thing, Ken. Right? Okay. Where did this start? Take your time. I want to talk about what happened before that night they even came. That's what we need to talk about, okay? What happened before that night? I'm with you to hear to hear. We're going to figure it out together, okay? What happened? Be strong. Be strong for mom. I'm here for you, Jen. I'm here for your mom. Well, you have to tell, it's one of those situations, you know what, we know that what you did, okay? But you have to be able to explain to me what happened, okay? I can't tell you what's exactly going to happen to you, okay? It's like telling you something without knowing the facts, right? Okay? At this point, I know 100% that you were involved. 
and this was planned out ahead of time, okay? But you need to tell me where things went with this, okay? It's the truth that's going to tell me what's going to, I can give you a better answer, but if you don't give me that, do you know what I mean? I don't want to lie to you here. Do you know what I'm saying? Can you see what I'm saying, Jen? I'm not going to lie to you. But I, I prefer to deal with this at one step at a time. You need to get it out first, and then we're going to sit down and we're going to discuss this so that justice for your mom gets done. That's your priority, isn't it? But I told you. Okay. Okay. Okay, but that's not everything, okay? You didn't, you weren't straightforward with that, okay? You know that and I know that, right? You didn't give us everything. You misdescribed no, that, yes. Everything. Jen, Jen, we're past that, okay? But what That's I not said is what I remember okay. about them, right? Okay, but... How I remembered them. Okay, but it's impossible because we have another witness. Your dad was right there, okay? And there's no way that you could get those descriptions mixed up, okay? We know that, okay? So let's not go there. Let's go with what we can deal with. Okay. What I need to deal with, though, is, okay, you did not pull the trigger, right? Let's deal with what you didn't do, okay? Right? You weren't a part of that, right? That's positive to know. Okay, but we need to know what you were involved in and what you weren't involved in. Now, we know that you didn't shoot anybody. That's a positive, right? You could never do that, could you? No. But before that night ever happened, you knew it was going to happen, right? Let's start there. That's what we need to talk facts here. Okay, that's... I don't want to get into an argument about what happened that night because it happened. Okay? Right? And you wish you could have stopped it. Is that true or not? Or are you just saying that to me? Well, if I could stop it, I would have stopped it. Okay. Did you try to stop it that night? Yes. How? I wanted to go be with my parents. I wanted to go be with them. Okay, I understand that. Okay. But this all started off with the decisions that you made. Okay, those guys didn't show up there to take your money. Okay, we all know that. They came there to do what they did, to shoot your parents. Okay, we know that. Okay, and they didn't get there randomly. Okay, they just didn't decide that we're going to show up here tonight and pick this house randomly. Okay, this was set in motion before that night. Okay. And I'm asking you to be responsible here in your answers, Jen. You couldn't stop it once it started. I appreciate that. Okay? Right? But what I'm going to say to you is that before it even happened is where you made your bad decision, right? You got those people to come to your house the plan that you put in motion okay so that's what we have to deal with here okay now do you want justice or not for mom okay look at me then because i'm going to get it for you and we have to do it together okay tell me how this started Because that's what you haven't told us, Jen. You left that part out. Okay? That's the part I want to hear. That's the part that's going to get us justice here. Okay? Then we can work through the rest of it. You can help us with the rest of it after that. You want to help us? Jen? Okay. I'm glad to hear you say that. Okay, so you need to tell me 
how you made this plan. Okay? That's all that's missing here. The rest, we know what happened. I'm, I don't need you to tell me what happened in that house. I already know. Okay? I'm not going to go through that again. Okay? What happened that night was unfortunate. Okay? That, but what's happened after that to you, it's destroyed you, this whole thing. Right? What are you going to do now, Jim? To make this right? That's what you're faced with. And you can help us. You just have to be brave here. You have to be brave. You have to actually really want justice for your mom. Okay, then you're going to have to show me. You can't just say the words, you got to mean it. Okay? Now, how did this get started, Jen? What did you do that you wish you didn't do now? Tell me that. What things did you do that you wish you didn't do?
Thank you. Okay, we're supposed to take in. Why? Okay. So we're supposed to take the whole family out? No, just me. What went wrong? Tell me how that happened then. Okay. It was supposed to be you. Is that right? Okay. How was it supposed to happen then? Hmm? Okay, Jen. What happened? Why did it change? What do you know? How come it was supposed to be you? Because I didn't want to be here anymore. Why not? Because it was a disappointment. Okay, you made some mistakes, but nothing that couldn't be corrected. Mm. Right? Hmm? Okay, so how did this play out then? Hmm? How did it start? What was the plan then? Hmm? Jen? You have to help me here. We need that justice for Mom now, right? It wasn't supposed to be Mom, you think. Is that, is that what you're telling me? Yeah. Okay. What about your dad? Okay, why was it supposed to be you? Because everyone could be free from me. Okay. So, why did it happen this way then? I don't know. Okay, how did they get there? I don't know. You knew they were coming though, right? Because you said it was supposed to be you, right? So what had you done ahead of time to make them come there? What was... What did you tell them to do? Again? Let's work this out, okay? Let's work it out for a moment. Why was it supposed to be you? Everyone could be free from me. I was disappointed in everything. Okay, but why did it have to happen this way? Yeah. Because when I tried suicide, I failed. When? A couple of months ago. What did you do? I oh, couldn't do it. It's not Okay. So then, how did we get to this point? You told these guys to come and kill you? Jen? So who did you tell? What did you tell them? What did you want done? <laughs> How? Did it matter? <laughs> okay. So who did you get to do this then? You have to tell me, Jen. I don't know who he is. I just got his number. Okay. And what's his number? I don't memorize it. Where can we find it? On the sofa. And it's on the other sofa, on the bell sofa. On the bell cell phone? Yes. 
Where's that phone now? I don't know what the SIM card is. Okay. And how did you get a hold of this person? Called up. And what did you say to him? Okay, I appreciate that. How did it happen? How did they get there? I don't know how they got there. What was your request? Come in. Take me up. How would they know who you were? And what did you discuss with this person? Did I have money? And that to come take me out and then take it. Leave it. And how much was he going to charge for it though? And that's what you gave him. Okay. Now the guy you spoke to on the phone is the guy that showed up and you gave the money to. I don't know if it's that was the same guy. I've never met him before. Okay. What was? Did he say his name was? I just call him homeboy. Okay. Homeboy. How did you get his number to make this call in the first place? Tell Rick you need it. I wanted to be shot or killed. Okay. It didn't matter. What did he say? Okay. So when did you make that call? to tell him what you wanted though. I told him that I wanted to be killed. And did he think that was something crazy? He said, are you sure that's what you want? And I said, yes. Because I don't think many people get that request. Do you? No, but that's what I wanted. And he asked me over and over to make sure I was sure. And I said, I was sure. Okay, so what did you ask him to do then? Come take me out and then leave. Okay. Why did they do it when you were, um, when your parents were there then? Never alone in the nighttime. Okay. So that meeting you had with Rick, you told him what you wanted? No, I just said that I wanted if he knew anybody who could take care of something that I needed, just that I wanted to be killed. And he said what? Just the number. Did he have the number with him that day? Yes. Okay. And that was the first meeting? Second meeting. Okay. What happened with the first meeting? Nothing. I just got to know each other. Okay. 
when you had the first meeting with them, why did you have the first meeting? Like I said, he was a roommate of a friend of mine, and that they were having problems with rent. Okay, so you phone them up and have another meeting. Is that the meeting that someone saw you at? And who was it that saw you there? I don't know. My uncle told me that another person that saw me there was a black person. Okay, and was that black person Rick? I guess. Well, were you with any other black guy there? No. So you know him as Rick? Yep. Okay. And you told him what that day then? If he knew anybody who could help me take care of the job, that I wanted to be killed. Okay, and he said what? Call this number. Okay, did he write it down? Yes. Where is that number now? I put, I, I put it into my phone and then I threw the paper out. Okay. What was the number you put in your phone? I don't memorize the number, it was just on my phone. Well that, uh, what can you remember about that number though? It had an eight and a five in it. What did it start with? Four, six, or six, four, seven. I don't remember. I just remember the middle numbers had an eight in it. And what about the five? It was like eight, five, six. I just remember the eight because no one else I have had an eight. Okay. And what phone is that number in then? On the bell line. The same line. Okay. You put it in your phone though. Which phone did you put it in? It was on the SIM card. Okay, but did you still have to put it in like a friend's or a calendar or I gave it, I just kept it and then when he texted me I just kept that SIM card. Okay, so what's the text that you have? What's up? He sent what's up and what did you send back? And that's my friend when he up. Okay, then what? He said he called me once or twice, just basically just wanted me to know, and that was it. Okay, so when did you first talk to the guy? I don't remember anymore. Where did you meet him? I never met him. And what's his name? What did he go by? Homie, homeboy. Did he have an accent? What did he say he would do? He just like told me to serve it. Let me do me. So your specific request to him was what? To come in and make sure he killed me. And what did he say? He said, okay, let me do me. Let me do me? What does that mean? Let me do it my way? Okay. Isn't it odd that somebody would give a request like that? Mm -hmm. To kill themselves? He asked me. And he's still going to charge you to do that? Okay, so then what happened? You said you talked a few other times. What were the other talks? He was just like, when? I was just asking him when, and that was it. Okay, so when then? whenever I have time, whenever I can get people. Okay, well, you're not going to show up at your house randomly. You're going to have to know exactly when he's coming. So how did that play out? He texted me, game on. Pardon? He texted me, game on. When did you get that text? Remember the time? Sometime in the evening. What day? That day. Okay, so before they came in, you had a text that said game on? Yes. Okay, and where did that come from? What do you mean? Pardon me? What do you mean? 
Where did he send it from? Number he had texted me. Which was what? That number I can't remember. Okay. And what time did you get that game on call? I don't know what time. How many minutes before they came in? Oh. Okay, let's get it in. We're working through it. How many minutes before? I don't know. I didn't even realize they were in it. Okay, but they did come in, right? How much before you heard anything? Maybe an hour, two hours. So you were just waiting there for two hours? I was watching TV. Okay. So what time did you get the game on? Where were you when you saw that message first? I was watching TV with Adrian. Okay, so he was there. Did you tell him? No. Who else knows about this? Jen? Yes. Who else knows about this? Me and the people who did it. Okay. And who are they? I don't know who they are. He just said, let me do me, and then that was it. Okay. So he does come into the house, and you're the obvious only young girl there, right? Yes. Okay. When he came to your, her, your room, yes. What discussions did you have with the guy that came to your room? The real discussions you had, not what you told us. Where was the money? And I showed him where the money was. Okay. But he obviously said, I'm here to do what you asked. He never said anything like that. What did he say? He just laid hands behind your back. So the money you gave him was payment for killing you? that he wanted 2000 Yes. When did he give you that figure of 2000 In one of our phone conversations. Okay, what's that? In one of our phone conversations. Okay, so in all the phone conversations you had, when was the first one that you had? What month? Well, Jen, this doesn't happen every day that you ask somebody to kill you, so... I honestly, I don't remember, but... Okay. I say you do remember. You're going to have to remember. When's the first time? I really, really don't remember. Okay. Maybe when September? I think from the first time you mentioned this to Rick, when was that? Back in June, right? Yeah. Is that right? Something like that. Fall, I mean, spring, summer sometime. Yeah. How come it took so long? Because I didn't know. You didn't know well, what? I'm sure. So when did you confirm 100% you wanted it done? When they accused me of doing something that I didn't do. Who? Okay. Which was what? They accused me of seeing Daniel when I didn't. Okay, so when was that? Um, in August maybe. Okay, so you got in, in contact with Homeboy and said what? I'd like you to come and take out the 24 year old girl. And he said? Okay, I'll call you. Then what? And then. Call me back and he's like, Are you sure? And he says, Yes. Okay. And then he's like, Okay, then you just let me do me then. He said, Let me do me? Yes. Which means what? Let, it, let him do it his way. Okay. Did he discuss ways with you how he would do it? No. Did you request any way for him to do it? To make sure no one else was around. Okay. And. Did you tell him who lived in the house? Yes. What did you tell him? 
Where's parents? Okay. Okay, and did you tell them where they are in the house? No. What rooms they're in? No. Where they would be? No. So when, why didn't they do it the way you wanted? I don't know. I asked them. I asked them to take me with my mom when they took them away. I realize that, but it doesn't seem to make sense. I know. It doesn't make sense to me. But that's how it was supposed to be. Sit up for a minute, Jen. Okay, look at me. Look at me. Okay. We have... Remember everything I told you about what I do for a living? Okay. I'm an expert in determining truth and half-truths. Okay. What you've just told me is half the truth. Okay? Now, what I do believe is that you went to somebody. And I do believe that night you paid them the $2,000. Okay? That's the true part. Okay? Right? But what's not true is it was never for you. Okay, Jen, no. Okay, you went to this person and you asked them to do a job. And the job was for your parents. Okay, that's what we got to get to here. Okay, I know that's what really happened, Jen. Okay, that's what really happened. Okay, so you've done good here. You're telling me half the truth. I'm going to get the other half out here. Okay, that's the part that you need to get to now. Okay, maybe you were supposed to be part of it, but you definitely wanted your parents out of the picture. Okay, that was uh, for sure. Okay, so s sit up and listen to me for a minute because this is important, okay? Now listen. Because of how you've been treated for the last seven, eight years of your life, you no longer know how to tell the whole story, the truth from the start, okay? You've been conditioned just to tell little bits of the truth and little bits about lies, right? That's what you've done for eight years now. That's how you've lived. It's an instinct now, okay? And that's part of your self-preservation that I talked about earlier, okay? And right now, that's where we're at, okay? That's where we're at. You did ask someone to come to the house, Jen, but it wasn't for you, okay? Pardon? It was supposed to be you asked them to do this job on your parents, Jen. Okay? Let's be truthful. Okay? Nobody's going to come there and get the wrong people. Okay? They're not going to tie you up and just kill your parents. Okay? That's not going to happen. That's not realistic. Okay? That never happened. Okay? They were there because you planned this. They were there because you gave the order, okay? And I understand why you gave the order, because you couldn't do it yourself, okay? That's good, okay, Jen? Okay, but they were supposed to take your parents, Jen, and they did that part, okay? Nobody needs, if you wanted to kill yourself, Jen, you're not going to pay somebody $2,000 to do it. I couldn't do it myself. Okay, but there's other ways, okay? And if that was going to happen, they could have taken you outside and done it anywhere. It wouldn't matter, would it? Okay, there's no need to involve other people in this. If you really wanted to die, all they would have had to do is pull up beside you in a car and shoot you, Right? If he told me just to let him do it. Okay, him. but th you're not going to accept that, okay? You're not going to accept that he's just going to randomly do it someday, okay? There's other things that happen on, in this case, Jen, okay? 
You let them in the house. You let them in. We know that. You went downstairs and you opened that door for them. We know that. Jen, you did leave the door open for them, didn't you? Pardon? Yes. Yes. And that's why you went downstairs earlier in the night, right? After your mom got home, what did you do? Went down and said hello. Pretended to check the door. And was it locked? No. You made sure it was unlocked? Yes. Okay, then what? I asked her if it was in the bed for me. She said, I don't know. Okay, so again, we have some truth here. That's good, Jen. We know all along that you let them in, okay? We knew that. I knew why you went downstairs, okay? That was done on purpose, right? You had to let them in, right? Jen? Yes. Okay, now did they tell you to do that? Yes. So what else did they tell you to do? That was it, just to make sure that they had access. Okay, so what was the agreement then? What do you mean? Well, I told you two thousand dollars, and they were supposed to kill me, and then they called me and made sure that they they had access. Okay, so how did they do that though? What was the question on the phone? Was it a text or a phone message? A text, VIP access. What does that mean? I didn't know, and then they just made sure they, they can get in. Okay, so you saw a message that said VIP access meaning they could get in, okay. And so what did you text back? I didn't text them back, I called them. Okay, and what did you say? I'm like, what does that mean? Okay, and what did they say? Make sure that there was a way in. Okay, and what did you say would be the best way? I didn't say, I was just like, front door, and he was like, yes. Okay, all right, so. That's good, Jen. I appreciate that because, again, I already knew that's what happened, okay? Your family is going to lock those doors at night, right? That's the routine. So you went down and checked the door and made sure it was unlocked, right? She was going to check it before she went to bed anyway. Okay, but she didn't go to bed till midnight, right? That's why I asked her. Okay, did you say, I've checked the door? No. You didn't tell her? No. Okay. And so when you went back upstairs, did you actually talk to Andrew? Yes. Or did you just say that? No, I really did talk to him. And the other guy? Ed. Was on the phone with him. Okay. In between those calls, did they call you? Yes. Or, so how did that play out? Where between those calls did those calls come? This one. Tell me how that happened. That, that's when they got the text. That, that's when I got the text, VIP access. Okay, so you were talking to Andrew, yes. and it had finished, mm -hmm. and then what? He texted me, like VIP access, that's when I hung up and I asked, I called and asked them. Okay, so you hung up from Andrew or yes. from? from Andrew. Okay. And you phoned them? Yes. And said, what do you mean? Yes. And they said? I'm sure there's a way in. Okay. And you said? Front doors. Okay. And then? I went down to the front doors. Okay. And what did you do? I'm sure if they were locked yet when they weren't. Okay. So how could you tell? Okay. So you checked the... What did you check? The lock. Okay. And did you kind of turn it and turn it back or how? I don't remember. When you left that door, you were satisfied that it was open? Yes. Okay. Then, what happened? Then everything else I said happened. I went back to my room. I called Ed. I didn't even know when they came in. Okay. But you, they came up to your room. Or somebody came up to you. Well, like I said, I heard my mom call from my dad, and that's when I went out. Yeah. And what happened? And then he was there, standing there. 
Okay, give me one sec, okay? Sorry about that. Okay. So we get to the point where um, you get the text message. Uh, you go down. You do the door. You go back upstairs. And what do you do? Call Okay. Why do you call him? What I usually do. Okay. What were you expecting to happen next? I honestly, I don't know. Because he didn't call me, he just let me do anything. I didn't know how he was going to do anything. Okay, what else did he say on the phone? Like, how, like, he must have told you we're around the corner or something. No. Did he tell you how long? No. Okay, but it was on for that night. He had game on on the text. Yes. Okay. What did you do with those text messages? Okay, and the phone that you were using, were you using two phones that night? Yeah. Okay, you have to sit up because I can't hear you here. You were using two phones, okay. Yeah. So the phone you were talking to with Andrew on was what phone? Mm -hmm. And the one you were talking to them on was what? The iPhone. The iPhone, okay. And then, uh, did you ever talk to them on the Samsung? Mm -hmm. Now, um, what next? Everything else that happened next to me since then. Okay. Now, look at me, John. You're almost there. Okay? Most of what happened in the house happened. Okay? We know that. Okay? You gave a description of a black guy with dreads. There was no black guy with dreads in there. Okay, we know that. Okay? We know that. Because your dad's not going to miss that. Okay? He gave a good description of the guy that you were with. And he's not even black. So tell me about that. Honestly, like... Honestly, Jen, that's exactly... you got to be up front here. Okay? Honestly, that's because obviously you didn't want to tell us everything because there was a plan. You didn't tell us that that night either. Okay? So now, else that, happened okay, after that, is. that guy with dreadlocks was never there. Okay, so why did you say that? But that's what I remember. Okay, you can't mix that guy up with the description your dad gave. He's not even the same color. Right? But that's... Tell me why you said guy with dreadlocks. Because that's who I Because saw. there was no guy with dreadlocks there, Jen. That's the problem here. Okay? That's the problem. Okay, now, the issue here is this, and you have to look at me. Okay, your dad wasn't supposed to be a witness. Okay, that's where this whole thing went wrong. Okay, your dad wasn't supposed to live. Okay, and when he did live, he was able to tell us what really happened that night. Okay, 
which was in conflict with what you told us, okay? Seriously in conflict, okay? You had all these things about number two going upstairs and everything else. Number two was down there with a gun on your mom. Number three was down, he didn't, okay? We know that never happened, okay? I don't want to argue about it, okay? I'm not going to argue about it. But I've already gone this okay? far. I've You've gone this far, you. but that doesn't mean, okay, what? Now, let's get it all straightened out, because you, this is a total half and half. We're, we're there again, just like the school, just like everything else. This is how you deal with pressure, okay? You give half, and you hold half. You give half, and you don't give the rest of the true facts, okay? That's your stress mechanism, okay? That's what you've been trained to do since you were 15 years old, okay? Because your parents could never accept the truth. That's why this whole thing happened, okay? No matter how honest you try to be with them, okay? They didn't, they always wanted more. It was never good enough. It was never good enough that you were a good kid, okay? And that you loved figure skating and piano. And if that's all you ever did, that's good enough. But it wasn't good enough for them, right? Jen? So what happened here? I'll tell you what happened. You made a specific request, and the job was for your mom and dad, okay? Nobody's going to come in there and do the wrong job, okay? Nobody's going to do that. They came, you paid, and they did what they were supposed to do, okay? If it was supposed to be for you, you would have said that to them, okay? You never did. Okay, this was always for two people, okay? This was for both mom and dad, because they had taken things too far in your life, Jen, okay? That's what it's all about, and you and I have to get that out right now, okay? So sit up for a minute. Let's get this final piece out, okay? So that's the only mistake you made in this whole thing. You got fed up. And you went out and did something about it. Okay? This was all about self-preservation. You had no choices. This is the only choice you felt you had left. Jen, I know that's why you feel so bad about this. Okay? And because because, it was the okay. Thing. No, Jen. You have to be honest with me here. I am being Jen, honest with you Jen, here. okay. It's all going to come out, okay? And the last thing that you want to happen later, okay, is for people to say that she didn't tell the whole truth. Okay, this is your but one chance. That is what I do remember. Okay, okay, but you made a request, Jen, and this was a planned request, okay, and the plan was for your parents. Me. Okay, Jen, you have to be honest about it. This is the only thing that's in contention here, okay? You made the mistake, okay? Everybody understands. Everybody in this police department feels sorry for you. I can tell you that right now, okay? Because they've seen what you're going through. It's so obvious, okay? That all this tension you put out, it, basically this is like a volcano, all right? And at one point it was just too much and you erupted, okay? And you made a bad decision, okay? And once you hired this guy, there was no turning back. There was, it was supposed to be yourself, Jen, no, it, it would not happen that way, okay? It would not happen that way. Now, in the original story, you said that you hid your cell phone, okay? If it was for you, you wouldn't have hid your cell phone. That would have never happened. So it's, it's in conflict. It's not hidden. it's just... I, I put it there naturally, okay. it's what I naturally do. Okay. But you said on tape that you hid it there and that they didn't know about it. That's your language, not mine, Jen. Which tells me that you intended to use it sometime to get out of there as a rescue mechanism, okay? So, I already know that you planned this, Jen, and it wasn't for yourself. We know that, Jen. You know that. I know you don't feel good about it, and I know you've thought many times that it, you would not like to be here, okay? But who caused that? Why did you feel like that? 
okay? I'll tell you why. It's because of the way you've been treated all these years. You didn't bring that on yourself. They brought it on you. The depression. You were cutting yourself and they didn't even pick up on it. All they wanted was so much success out of you, they were not even looking at you as a person. They were looking for a success story. Instead of just saying, whatever Jen wants is what's good for us. Whatever she's happy with. As long as she's happy in her life, I'm happy with it. If she wants to work at Eastside Mario's for the rest of her life, that's fine. If she wants to be a piano teacher, that's great. If she wants to continue figure skating, that's wonderful. Do you know what I'm saying, Jen? I know what you're saying, but okay. this is what I know. Okay. And I've okay, so the only thing that you haven't told me is that you put the plan in motion for your parents, okay? And now, you would wish you never did, and that's good, okay? It's good that you feel sorry about it, because you do. If you could go back, you wouldn't have gave that plan to them, would you? But Jen? I knew what they were going to do. I okay, Chen, look at me. You knew what they were going to do, okay? Listen, let's be rational here for a minute, okay? Nobody makes a plan to have themselves killed in that fashion, okay? Nobody shows up at your house for no reason and kills the wrong people, okay? That's where we're at here, okay? That's what you're afraid. You're afraid to say that you made that mistake. Don't be afraid, Jen. Just tell the truth, okay? Because we're getting into what's happened to you all your life, okay? I know exactly when and when you're not telling me exactly what happened, okay? you got to give us some credit here. This is all that I do, okay? And you're halfway to telling the whole truth, okay? This is another case of making something up in hopes that somebody will listen and accept it, okay? I can't accept it, okay? You know that and I know that. Right? I can't accept that when I know it's not true. And I don't like to see you doing this to yourself. You're just beating yourself up some more here. Okay? Jen? Because I'm telling it to you, but you say that it's contradicting, and I don't okay. understand why. Well, it doesn't make sense, okay, that someone, if, they, if you wanted yourself killed, okay, they wouldn't do it in your house. Okay? There's no reason to hide anything. Okay? Someone can just walk up to you and shoot you somewhere where you're by yourself and nobody knows about it and they walk away. But I'm never by myself. Okay, at any time you can go out. You were by yourself all day. But they said that they can't do it in the daytime. Okay. So you could walk out the front door and they could have shot you there and ran away. Like, they didn't have to involve other people, and that's why it doesn't make sense. You could have walked out on the front porch, and that would have been the end but of I'm it. But I'm not supposed to leave the house. Okay, but you've done it before, right? Right? Something started watching me Okay, better. but that night you could have walked out that front door, and no one would have known the difference for two seconds. My mother would know she was right, out, right there. Okay, but they could have came and done it. Okay? But they didn't tell me how they were going to do it. Okay. Why would somebody shoot someone they didn't have to shoot? I don't know. I can't figure that out. And actually not shoot the person they're supposed to shoot? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure it out. Okay, why didn't you tell us this that night then? Because I was scared. Scared of what? Telling the truth? Yes. That I wanted to die. But okay, instead, but listen, <laughs> if you wanted to die, you would tell us everything because it wouldn't matter. Jen, if you really wanted to die, you would tell us everything because it doesn't really matter. 
right? It does matter because the wrong person got hurt. And my dad is suffering. I appreciate that's what happened in the end, but that's what was supposed to happen, okay? The good thing about this is your dad did live, okay? He did live. And that went against the plan, okay? He wasn't supposed to make it through, and he did. So that's a good thing, right? That's a positive in this situation, right? Jen? My dad's hurt. How can that be a positive? Okay, but he's not dead, is he? No. Okay. And this thing started out with him supposed to be dead. No. Okay. Jen, there's just no doubt about that. Okay? There's no doubt about that. Okay? And you got to remember, we're all over this case, okay? And when you say something that's going to contradict what other people tell us, okay? that the order was for mom and dad, that's not going to look good, is it? When it comes from someone else. Right? Because we're going to solve this thing. Okay? We already know what happened. So I'm not in here guessing with you. I already know what the order was from. From you. Okay? And I have to sit here with you and let you get that off your chest. Okay? I know it's not easy. And that's what you're I worrying about. the order was from me. Okay. It was for you. Yeah. No, it was for your parents, Jen. Okay, and that's hard to say. I know that. I know that's hard to say. Okay, because that's not... If you could make this decision over, you would change it. Okay? You would change it. Right? Of course. If okay. I knew who was going to get hurt, of course okay. I wouldn't. Jen, you knew who was going to get hurt. That's the whole issue here. Okay, that's the whole issue here. That's all we're dealing with here. Okay? From the start, I've told you that I know you were involved. Okay? And it's beyond asking someone to kill you. Okay? The order was for mom and dad. Okay? The only mistake they made is they didn't get your dad. Okay, yes, they hurt him, okay? Yes, he's injured, but he's alive, and that's a good thing. And as I told you earlier, this happens to 300 families a year. 300. And it's always because of the same thing, Jen. The people reach the end of their rope. It's the last straw, and they make a mistake. And I agree, once you put those wheels in motion, you know, it's hard to stop it. It's very hard to stop it. So let's get down to the bottom of this, Jim. you got to help me through the rest of this. Okay? Now, the only thing that's an issue here today is that you gave a request to these people for your parents and they carried it out, okay? You didn't do it. That's a good thing, okay? You didn't shoot them. You didn't hurt them. Your mistake was making a request, right? That's where you and I are at right now. Okay, that's the only issue we need to talk about. Okay? I'm not going to get into everything else because it's not even important. Okay? But we need to see justice done here. And we need to do that together again. Okay? And there's only one face to justice, okay? That's the face of truth. Right now, we only have half that face. Okay? I need to see the rest of it. Okay? We're only halfway there. Okay? You made the mistake of asking them to do it. Okay? You asked them to do your parents. That's, it's as simple as that, Jen. Okay? And they did. Or they tried to. Okay? 
but you're sorry that this happened, right? Of course. Okay, that's what the whole key is here. Everyone wants to know, is, is she sorry? Because everyone knows that you did it, okay? But they want to know, is given a chance and turning back the clock to that day, would you do it again? No, right? This was a one-time mistake, right? Jen? Okay. You gave them the plan for your parents, right? That's all I need to hear. No. Jen, you did. No, and this is not going to go anywhere because I wanted them to kill me. Okay, maybe you wanted that to happen as well, okay? And maybe things got so bad that that's how you feel, okay? But your parents were brought into this, okay, on your request. Yes, Jen, this was your request, okay? And that's what we have to deal with, okay? And that's what you're afraid of here today. That's what you're afraid of. No one's thinking bad of you here. Everybody understands what you went through, okay, and what you are going through, okay? But what people are looking for from this young woman today, you know what they're looking for? Jen? To know that you actually are sorry, okay? That you're sorry that you made the request for your parents, okay? It wasn't for you. We're past that, okay? I don't want to talk about that, okay? The request was for your parents and your parents only. That's it, okay? That's what you put in motion. That's what happened, okay? We know that, okay? At the end of the day, you have to look at yourself and say, when Bill came to me, with the answer, did I deal with it? Okay, because that's where people are going to be looking at you now from. They're going to be saying, what did she do when the police knew and confronted her with the truth? Did she face reality and admit the truth? Or did she run from it? Does she even care what happened? Of course okay. What okay, so you have to prove that now, Jen, because the only way you can prove it that you really care is that you admit that you made a mistake. I did make okay? a mistake, okay. but... We have to get that on the table, though, and it's not about you, okay? It's about them. It's that simple, okay? It's not complicated, okay? Is that what you want me to say, but that's not yes. how what happened, tell me though. what happened. You want me to tell... I want you to tell me that you made the plan for your parents, okay? But that's We're not going to get to the rest of it anyways, okay? We already... Like, I'm in here, okay? There's 20 other investigators on this case. I'm only dealing with the truth as it regards to you, okay? There's a lot more things that you don't even know that I know. That's why you're not going to be able to tell me things, okay, that I don't know already, okay? So I will know when you're telling me the full truth. I already know you made the plan, so I can't just say, okay, yeah, don't worry, buddy, you made the plan for yourself, when I know that's not true, okay? you got to know that I already have the answers, okay, or we wouldn't be sitting here, okay? So I do need you to tell me that you made the plan for your parents, okay? Because that's what really happened, Jen, okay? I'm not asking you to lie to me. I'm just I'm asking you to lie. tell me that you made the plan for your parents. That's where we're sitting here right now trying to deal with, okay? That's a big hurt for you, okay? Because I know that you still have love. It's like a love-hate thing, and that's what happens in people's lives. Okay? You love them to death, but you can't live with them. You can't live with the situation anymore. Okay? That can happen in life. It happens all the time, okay? And essentially, you got forced into a corner here. Okay? You didn't have any other choices. 24 years old, Jen, and you're not allowed to make your own decisions. A prisoner in your own house. Nine o'clock curfew. Again, I'm just surprised it never happened before this. Everybody's going to understand that, Jen. But why they're going to understand it? You know why they're going to understand it? Because that's the truth. What people don't understand is when people tell half-truths. They recognize it right away. They recognize that that's not what really happened. Okay, that's not what really happened. Okay? You've spent a lifetime trying to get around people, and all it has ever done is hurt you more, Jen. 
you missed out on an education because you tried to fake it, okay? You missed out on things that made you want to kill yourself. And you realize that. And it reached a low point to the point where if you don't care about yourself, you can't care about other people. You know what I mean? You can't care for other people if you can't love yourself. And that's where this got to, Jen. And I don't blame you. But we need to understand this together, right? We need to have a resolution here. Okay? Stuck. Okay. Can we understand each other, Jen? Okay, you've told so much of the truth, you're just not telling the final portion. This isn't even half truth anymore, this is three quarters, okay? The only thing missing is a quarter of the truth, okay? The rest is true, okay? We know that, okay? We know you got the text. We know that you gave the go-ahead, okay? But the go-ahead wasn't for yourself. That's what's that issue here, Jen. We're going to sit down here and work through this together. Okay, and we're going to work this out. We're going to get the full truth because you know what? The full truth is only 100%. Not 75%, not 90, not 99. 100% everything that really happened that night. Okay, Jen? All right? Let's do it together. Okay, you did. I don't understand okay. why it doesn't add okay. up. Why it doesn't add up is because that's not what happened. Okay? The truth will add up. Half-truths don't add up. That's all they ever are is half-truths. Now, we have to understand each other, Jen. All I need to know... Well, you've already told me that you made the plan, okay? It, the only issue we have here is that you made it for your parents, and we know that. And I need you to tell me that. Okay? Okay? Tell me what happened. I told you what happened. Okay. All of it. You it did. Okay. All you have to do is here is tell me right now that Bill, yes, I made a mistake. Bill, yes, I made a mistake. This plan was for my parents. That's all we're all that's the only issue here. Not about everything that happened that night. We know what happened that night, okay? But we also know that you made this plan for them. Not yourself. Okay? Or it's not going to go to that. Okay? Give me a second.
Okay. I need you to listen close to me, okay, Jen? At this point in the investigation, okay, I'm going to be arresting you for murder, okay? Also attempted murder and conspiracy to commit murder. Do you understand that? Just have to tell me if you understand those charges. Just say yes or no. Yes. Okay. It is my duty to inform you that you have the right to retain and instruct counsel without delay. Do you understand that? And what does that mean to you? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. You also have the right to telephone any lawyer you wish. Do you understand that? Yes. You also have the right to free advice from a legal aid lawyer. Do you understand that? 1-800-265-0451 is a toll-free number. You have to listen here. So can you take your hands off your ears? I need you to listen. There's a toll-free number that will put you in contact with a legal aid lawyer for free legal advice. Do you understand that? So you can speak to a legal aid lawyer right now or a, a lawyer of your choice if you like. Do you understand that? Do you wish to call a lawyer now? Yes? Okay, do you have a lawyer that you know of to speak to? Okay. What I'm gonna do is read you some other things and then we're going to deal with your lawyer, okay? We'll, we'll deal with how we're going to get that. So, you may be charged with murder attempted murder and conspiracy to commit murder in relation to your mother and father. Those are where those charges stem from. Do you understand that? Yes, yes or no? Yes, okay. Do you wish to say anything in answer to those charges? You're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so, but whatever you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand that? Yes? You just have to speak a little louder. Yeah. Okay. Again, I've already given this to you, but I'm going to read it. If you have spoken to any other police officer or anyone with authority, or if any such person has spoken to you in connection with this place, I want it clearly understood that I do not want it to influence you in making any statement. Do you understand? Jen? You just have to speak a little louder. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is, do you have your own lawyer? No. No? Okay. Do you have a lawyer you would like to speak to that you know of? No. Okay. Would you like to speak to duty counsel? I just want to talk to someone who can help me and understand. Okay, so who would that be? I don't know. So do you have a lawyer? You said that you were on my side. And I okay, was... I am on your side, Jen. Okay? I know what happened here. Okay? I'm on the side of truth. Okay? I want that to come out here. But at this point, you need to deal with the lawyer you said. Okay? I have to honor that request. So what we need to do now before we discuss anything else. Okay? is deal with that issue, okay? So we have options, okay? You can, do you know anyone you can, to a lawyer yourself? No. no. Um, I can bring a phone book in here with numerous lawyers and you can look at that if you like and pick a lawyer or we can call duty counsel, they will call back We'll put you in a private room and you can speak to them in private. Okay, but the decision is yours. What would you like to do? I don't have, I don't have any idea what to do. Okay. You do want to speak to a lawyer though, you said. That's your decision. So I have to accommodate that now. 
Okay, so that's what I want to do for you. I want to accommodate that if that's what you want to do. Okay. Do you want me to call duty council for you? Okay. Okay. Or is there any other lawyer that you would like? So at this point, you wish to speak to duty council then? Sure. Okay. So what I'm going to have to get you to do is actually empty all your pockets on the table here. Okay? Uh, can you? Uh, I have to tell people who are expecting me to leave. Who's that? My uncle. Okay. We'll speak to them. Uh, can you stand up and just empty your pockets? Just put it on the table here. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Just pull out those pockets. Okay. Nothing else? Okay. So just have a seat for a minute. I'm just going to check your coat. Okay. Okay. So just sit down. Okay, so in your pockets you had a couple pads, you had one in your jean pocket or with you and you had $200 in cash, is that correct? Did you have any more money? No. Okay, and then you have this change here, is that correct? Yeah. Anything else? No. Okay. No. And your cell phone, which I have here, okay. So in change you have 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75. 85, 95, $1.07. So $100, $101.07, okay? We'll put that in a bag for you, okay? You need 200 in? Sorry, 200, you're right. So $201.07, two $100 bills, right? Okay, that will be kept with some property for you when I come back in, okay? I'm going to make sure that they are making a call to duty council and we'll line that up and you can speak to the duty council in private, okay? All right, do you have any uh, jewelry around your neck at all? Okay, all right, hold tight while we do that, okay?
uh, me to call the duty council and we're just waiting for them to call back, okay? Need a drink of water or anything? What's that? Uh, I do have to uh, go ahead and speak to these officers, but I'll come back and speak to you, okay? But well, we got to get, we got to take care of the lawyers, okay? That's the priority right now, okay?